Do you know how scary it is when a zombie starts to discipline itself? His name is Jung C. Age unknown, he doesn't know when he became a zombie. He only remembers the first day of the zombie outbreak. Too late to escape, he became one of them. After that, he followed his own kind around. Until one day, humans appear with guys that glow blue. From then on the zombie army was routed. Some of the zombies were enslaved by humans and turned into perpetual motion machines. Jung Si doesn't understand why the zombies have to eat people. And I don't understand why humans have to kill all the zombies. But he knew. If you want to live, you have to get stronger. And from that day onwards, Jiang Si began his life of self-discipline, swimming around the earth every day, lifting weights several million times a day continuously. Even the protein powder is eaten as food, even exercising with the TV at night. That's it. Jiang Si became bald and strong at the same time. But despite this, he still wants to be friends with humans. To be able to realize this dream, he has rescued human cubs from fires. He even avoided a major disaster by catching a plane with his bare hands. In the face of a fast-moving train, he also needed just one punch to solve the problem. To get along better with humans, he gathered all the zombies into an abandoned city and asked them to feed on eggs every day. However, on this day, Jiang Si was buying eggs in the supermarket when he found out that his little brother had become a wanted man again. Meanwhile, two journalists are taking pictures. It turns out that they didn't believe that Jiang Si was capable of lifting a plane with his bare hands. But the next second, they were stunned by the scene before them. They saw Jiang Si lifting trucks weighing tens of tons. Then it was a jump in place. And in an instant, the truck broke through the atmosphere. After having traveled halfway around the world, Jiang Si finally arrived in his own territory. The crowd of zombies was thrilled to see the scene. But the two zombie cubs next to him asked, Why don't you bring the truck over, my lord? Uh, that I don't actually have a driving license. Jiang Si answers the question awkwardly and then goes to the gathering place of the minions. And by now the various zombie elites inside were already waiting a bit impatiently. But as soon as Jiang Si opened the door, the boys still rushed to stand in two rows. At this point, Jiang Si slapped the wanted notice on Dog and said, Dog, what's going on? Why are you wanted by humans again? Dog was in a cold sweat at his words. Then he explained fearfully, I can't control myself when it comes to humans. At this point Blackie, who was next to me, also said, Although our zombie territory is still expanding indefinitely, but we've changed capital several times to avoid the humans. Saw even suggested the idea of a war with humans. It's been so long, my chainsaw is getting rusty. But just as Jiang Si was about to give them a lecture on the horrors of the human race, there was a sudden boom in the sky. It turned out that human fighters had come over them at some point, and the commander inside at that moment was a wonderfully handsome woman. The president of the fighter plane was looking at the data on the screen and pondering. At this moment, two subordinates reported, everything is ready for action. The girl asked with a slight sideways glance, where's the goods? It turned out that the warplane had a heavyweight nuclear bomb on board. Come on, I'm going to level this place in 20 minutes. And at this point, the zombies below have sensed the crisis. The light in Saw's eyes shone brightly. He shouted that he was going to fight them. But then Jiang Si stopped him, no, you'll lose control when you get close to humans. It is better to evacuate the area with the citizens first. As for the humans, leave it to me. It didn't take long. Several armed trucks also slowly drove into the area. Their task was to search for survivors on the ground. And that's when, the hatch of the fighter jet in the air suddenly opened. And there was a young man with white hair in full armor standing in the middle. He wasn't afraid of the hordes of zombies below. Instead, he threatened to kill all the zombies here. Meanwhile, in another place, a man in a white coat is staring at the screen in front of him. Ming, that seems to be someone from the Academy for Abnormal Human Beings. The man heard this and said with a slight tilt of his mouth, then let's play with them. And with that he pressed a red button. In the next second, an iron cage full of humans falls from the sky. It finally landed slowly in the middle of the zombie horde. At the same time, the search and rescue team also received a message from the human rescue team. They then slowly pressed on with firepower. But then a red-haired woman suddenly shouted. Why can't that zombie be killed? Looking in the direction she's pointing. And there were two zombie cubs cuddled together, shivering. And the one in front of them was John C. Suddenly, a yellow man raised his bazooka and took aim. With a swoosh, the rocket was fired towards John C. at a very high speed. Just for a moment. And he was surrounded by a violent explosion and fire. However, at that moment someone reminded Yellow Hair that, we seem to have bombed the wrong person. The man in the zombie mask seems to be an unnatural human being who has just recently come to prominence. 
The yellow hair who saw the scene was confused. I can't believe I blew up the wrong person. But as the white smoke slowly cleared, but Jiang Si was standing there intact. He rubbed his head in confusion. At this point, the president on the fighter suddenly spotted the zombie boss. So she instructed Xiao Wu to go to B to block it. As she gave the order, Xiao Wu then immediately leapt from the 100 meter high fighter plane. Do you know how scary it is for a zombie to discipline itself? Not only can they catch a falling plane with their bare hands, he can also hammer a speeding train with one punch. He was even unharmed when he faced a rocket fired by a human. But when he was confronted by a girl, he was in a cold sweat. Just a few minutes ago, as rescue teams began to evacuate survivors, the white-robed man in some room was about to start getting ready to make things happen again. Ming, I didn't think they'd pull the civilians out. It seems you can't underestimate them. Hearing this, the man smiled with a slight sideways glance. Well, let's give them something interesting. The green-haired man immediately understood. Then, under his control, one of the zombies in the herd suddenly underwent a horrific mutation. Just a little while later, he had already turned into a licking monster who had lost his mind. This change also attracted the attention of the zombies in the distance. But just at that moment, the yellow hair of the search and rescue team suddenly sprinted. While Jiang Si was still confused, he picked him up and ran towards his caravan. And as he ran, he chanted, I saved your life. After he threw Jiang Si into the car, he hurriedly urged the driver to run. That's it. The boss of the zombie was successfully rescued. On the road, the girl asked him why he was wearing a zombie mask all the time. John C. feels embarrassed. I don't know how to answer. And at this point, the other side of the search and rescue team started to run into trouble. Only to see the mutated zombie lifting a bus. And then threw it violently towards them. But then Xiao Wu appeared in time. He cut the bus in half with just one slash. The crowd cheered at the sight of this scene. Great. It's Xiao Wu from the Academy Knife Club. Now we're saved. Xiao Wu told them to take the civilians away first. He'll take care of the rest. At this point, the zombies suddenly burst out with a tearing roar. Xiao Wu seemed to feel as if he was in pain. Then the moment the zombies pounced on him, Xiao Wu pulled the knife out of his hand. It's just a simple draw and chop. And the zombie's body was cracked. And then it shattered into countless pieces with a bang. And yet, just when he thought he could call it a day early, Suddenly a sound of footsteps interrupted his thoughts. Xiao Wu looked in the direction of the sound. It turned out that Jiang Si had come to the side of the zombie at some point. I'm sorry, I'm late after all. Hearing this, Xiao Wu immediately put him in the zombie category. And then he brought up his knife and slashed at Jiang Si. But the next second he was naked and hanging from a telephone pole. Meanwhile, the short-haired girl on the plane also noticed the anomaly. Oh no, Xiao Wu's vitals are dropping. The president who heard this was also stunned. Xiao Wu was defeated. Damn, the civilians haven't all been evacuated yet. There's no way to strike with a nuclear bomb. Then she was seen to move slightly. The next second she was already flashing down from the fighter plane. This man was stripped naked and hung on a telephone pole the first time he went into battle to round up walkers. Jiang Si was looking puzzled when there was another figure in the air that came in a hurry. It was their commander who came. She quickly drew her sword from her waist. And then she hit Jiang Si with a white blade slash. But the next second, the indestructible sword shattered. The president who saw the scene was in disbelief. And on the other hand, Jiang Si was just dumbfounded at the moment. At this point the girl's eyes were slightly stunned. What the hell is this thing? Then he hurriedly jumped back and pulled away from him by several meters. Jiang Si looked at the girl who came out of nowhere. He was a little embarrassed. Then he rushed to explain. I, I already apologized earlier. The girl was shocked to hear the zombie speak. But a zombie is a zombie after all. The girl then immediately pulled out a second knife. Come on, let's see what you're capable of. At this moment, Jiang Si is also very depressed. Can't you humans just listen to what I have to say? As his words fell. The girl was already dashing towards him with a knife. But the blow didn't hit him. She didn't expect to miss with the speed she was so proud of. Immediately after another 360 degree rotation, she used her strongest move, the red blade slash. Just for a moment. Those swept by the red light were cut in two. Not even the buildings on either side were spared. But with such a killing blow, Jiang Si dodged it with a simple bend. Damn, how dare you provoke me like that. I'm going to kill you today. At the same time, 
The survivors around us are almost done evacuating. Even Xiao Wu, who had been knocked out by Jiang Si, got on the bus. Then the assistant on the fighter plane hastily called the president. Hurry back and evacuate. But she was in the middle of a fight with Jiang Si, and she didn't have time to think about that. And Jiang Si is also helpless at this moment. Why is this woman so troublesome? It turns out that the girl was going crazy because she couldn't touch Jiang Si's clothes all the time. Just a few moments. They've crossed half the city. Seeing that he couldn't catch up with Jiang Si, the girl immediately activated her second form. A large amount of white gas suddenly emerged from her lower legs. And when the charge was complete, she ejected like a sword. In an instant, she was behind Jiang Si, and then she used her best move. In just a few moments they both landed at the same time. So guess what? Jiang Si will be hurt by her move? Just now. This girl thought she'd taken care of the zombies. While in contact with the fighter plane, the mysterious forces on the other side are going to start doing things again. They have a spy on the girl's side. And just when everyone was cheering that they had been successfully saved, the spy on the fighter suddenly turned on the nuclear launcher. And then he pressed it without hesitation. As the click sounded, the next second the heavyweight nuclear bomb fell from the plane. At this time, the spy in the cabin has been controlled by the other two. But when they reported the news out, everyone had a look of fear, looking at the nuclear bomb that was plummeting. And the girl started to panic. She then hurriedly opened the ejection mechanism and tried to jump back into the fighter. But the next second she was frozen in place. She had just used up all her energy fighting with Jiang Si. Just when the girl didn't know what to do. At this point, Jiang Si suddenly came in front of her with a flash. Before she could react, Jiang Si grabbed her and spun her around on the ground. The next second the girl was thrown into the sky. And finally landed precisely on top of her fighter. It took her a while to get over it. Suddenly, she was horrified to think that the zombie was still alive. By this time, the nuclear bomb was less than 1,000 meters above the ground. However, Jiang Si was not going to escape. He lifted his foot and stomped hard. The next second, the ground began to crumble with him as the center. And Jiang Si flew into the air like a cannonball. For the sake of his own people, he rushed to the nuclear bomb with determination. And just as he was about to touch the bomb, Jiang Si reached out his hand and held it tight. With a bang, he hammered the warhead of a nuclear bomb. The people who saw the scene had an incredulous look on their faces. But the next second, a loud boom instantly followed the world. As a huge mushroom cloud rose up, Jiang Si was completely lost in the flames. I don't know how long has passed after the flames slowly died out in the ruins. The girl on the fighter, however, suddenly showed a look of horror. Just because they saw a figure falling from the sky, Jiang Si raised his hand and scratched his head and thought, Damn, it's time to spend money on clothes again. This day he was working out at home. The door was kicked open with a snap. The next thing you know, she's telling him to go to some non-human academy without a word. So it started a few days ago, when Jiang Si was worried about having no clothes to wear. The commander on the warplane, however, became depressed. What's wrong with the president? How did you become so decadent? You'd better stop. The president has been fighting zombies all his life. But now she was saved by a zombie. No one can be happy in this mood, right? However, at that moment, another subordinate suddenly shouted, President, you seem to have made a mistake. Just see her take the zombie information and go up and explain. This guy is not a zombie. He's the latest unnatural human who likes to wear a zombie mask. Hearing this, the girl's face was suddenly as gloomy as if she wanted to eat someone. The next day, a figure in tattered clothes came to the human city. Jiang Si hurriedly teleported to the phone booth. After he learned that the minions had been safely evacuated, that was a relief. But he didn't know. All his movements in the city were recorded by the cameras. Just as he was returning naked to his rented room, the girl on the other side then spotted him through the surveillance. At this point, it seems that Jiang Si also felt that he was being watched. And looking at the naked Jiang Si, the girl at the moment was also full of black lines. This day Jiang Si was working out as usual. But when I think of the little brothers who are still displaced, Jiang Si couldn't help but think, I don't know if they've settled in yet. And yet, just at that moment, his door was suddenly kicked open. It was the girl he had saved. And as soon as she entered, she ordered her men to start moving things around. And while Jiang Si was still confused, 
The girl suddenly took out a letter of admission and put it in front of him. We're from the Academy for Abnormal Humans. I now inform you that you have been accepted. From now on you are a member of our faculty. After she said that, she fingered Jiang Si. Several men in suits got the order and instantly came forward. But then Jiang Si hurriedly protested to, What are you doing here? Can a zombie also go to school? And yet the girl insisted that he was just a human wearing a zombie mask. Thus, poor Jiang Si was forcibly enrolled in the Academy for Abnormal Humans. At this point, the red-haired girl said, President, it's not good for us to recruit people privately like this, right? And the college dormitory is full now, too. Hearing that, the president thought for a moment and then said, Then let him live with me first. What kind of sparks will come out of a zombie living with a human? Looking at the girl in front of me, at this moment, Jiang Si was in a daze. He saw that the woman didn't say anything for half a day. Jiang Si asked tentatively, that, am I going to live here from now on? And where will I sleep? What? Is there a problem? Or do you want to sleep with me? Hearing this, Jiang Si hastily waved his hand to show that he didn't mean that. But in fact his heart is still more or less fantasy. But then the girl turned to him and said, You can stay in the guest room next door from now on. Hearing this, Jiang Si said with some loss at once, You may have made a mistake. I'm not actually human. The girl didn't answer when she heard the words. Instead, she pounded her calves. Just when Jiang Si was looking puzzled, the girl actually removed her calf and then began to explain unhurriedly. I cut these legs off myself. It turns out that when the girl was small, because of the zombie wave that broke out in the village, not only did the girl's parents turn into zombies, but they also bit her on the calf. The girl was trying to survive. She had to choose to cut off her own legs. And she killed her parents who had turned into zombies with her own hands. And from that moment on, the girl swore, whenever she met a zombie, then she would kill every one of them. Hearing this, Jiang Si hurriedly held back the truth that he was a zombie. At this point the girl looked at Jiang Si and asked, What did you just want to say? That, you must have misheard me. I didn't say anything. To ease the embarrassment, Jiang Si hurriedly changed the subject again and asked, What is this institute for abnormal humans that you're talking about? The girl smiled and did not continue to pursue the topic just now. Instead, she began to talk about the history of the college for Jiang Si. It turns out that it's been over 1,000 years since the zombie outbreak. For the betterment of humanity, the government created the Institute for Abnormal Humans. And this academy was designed to train people to deal with zombies. Hearing this, Jiang Si couldn't help but remember what he looked like when he became a zombie. He didn't realize that he was now 1,000 years old. At this point, the girl spoke again and said, Tomorrow is the time to register for the academy. If you dare to escape, I'll make sure I even find out what color your underwear is. And my name is Zeeling. Tomorrow, the Xiao Xiao that you know will show you the way. Hearing this, John Si was baffled. Xiao Xiao? Do I know this human? At this point, Jiang Si was confused, so much so that he didn't even hear the girl next to him greeting him. Now Xiao Xiao is anxious. She then turned to Jiang Si and began to criticize. Then after dropping the phrase, we'll have to do the test later. And she walked into the academy in a huff. Seeing this, Jiang Si hurriedly ran all the way to catch up and asked, that, do you have to take a test to get into this school? So this academy is full of students with special abilities. And if the test is not up to par, the college will not admit you. Soon they arrived at the place where the new students were tested. At that moment, hundreds of people were already gathered in the square. And these new students taking the test are all different from each other. Because there were so many new students in the square, Xiao Xiao had to ride on Jiang Si's head to observe. At this point Jiang Si asked curiously, I've lifted planes in front of humans before. Does that mean I don't have to take the test? And yet Xiao Xiao told him, the ability to lift planes and such is only very common here. And the teachers at the college don't even read the news. Suddenly, a crippled old man slowly approached the lectern. Hello, everyone, I'm your examiner this time. You can also call me Chen, the president of the sports club. The college has been around for hundreds of years. During this period, we have produced a variety of talents. I hope that you will train as hard as your predecessors. Become a good trainee. Yet his words were not yet finished. Jiang Si in the crowd suddenly asked, President, what if there is a zombie mixed in with the students? Of course, I'll take it apart and cut off the penis in public. Hearing this, Jiang Si felt a chill in his lower body. Next it was time for the test. The first test was a speed contest, with a gunshot from the examiner. In the next second, the cadets rushed out like swords. Just three seconds. 
they actually ran two and a half laps. And Zhang Si, who was still on the track at the moment, was in a daze. Soon we came to the second level. This time the test item was shooting. Xiao Xiao lifted his gun in a handsome manner. Several bullets were fired instantly. In the next second, all the zombie heads on the target are hit on the ground. The zombie who saw this scene was silly. How am I supposed to shoot this? Do you know how strong a serious zombie is? He just threw a javelin and it pierced a hole right through the moon. His name is Zhang Si, a zombie who has lived for 1000 years, but accidentally entered a human academy. In order not to reveal himself as a zombie, Zhang Si can only be careful to keep a low profile. Every time he's tested, he's only just past the passing grade. The passing line for a fast 100 meter run has to be under 8 seconds. He runs 7 hours 95 minutes. The passing line for the shot put throw should be over 80 meters. He'll throw exactly 80.1 meters. But despite that, Zhang Si's actions have caught the examiner's attention. Chen looks at the data in his hand and ponders for a moment. This Zhang Si is on the passing line in all subjects. But the president of the sword club says he's strong. Is this man hiding his strength? Or does he have some dark secret? Soon, the next test arrives. This time it's the javelin throw. A red-haired teenager makes a power shot. In the next second, the javelin shot out like an arrow. It's just a split second. The javelin hits the zombie target in the lower body. Seeing this scene, Jiang Si could only feel a chill down there. Look at the javelin. At this point, three zombie targets have been skewered. But despite that, the javelin is still going strong. And it's finally stuck on a signpost 32 kilometers away. Soon, after the red-haired man's test, it's time for Jiang Si to take the stage. While passing by, Red Hair also looked at Jiang Si with a disdainful look on his face. However, Jiang Si didn't react much. Step forward, pick up the javelin and prepare to throw it in a low-key manner. But then Chen suddenly stopped him. This maneuver instantly attracted a lot of attention. Chen walked up and asked, You're Jiang Si, the one President Blade introduced to me, right? She said you were strong. But you've always scored just above the passing line on every test. You're not hiding anything, are you? Everyone here is trying their best. And you're hiding it. Does that mean you're a zombie? Hear that. Jiang Si hastily shakes his hand to show that he's just a human. At this point Chen added, If you can throw your javelin more than 4 kilometers, I'll give you a pass. But if you can't reach, then I'll have you court-martialed for espionage. At this point, Jiang Si is completely stupid. He's been on the run ever since he became Jiang Si. In order to survive, he has been exercising every day. Because he doesn't want to be captured by humans and turned into a perpetual motion machine. At this point, Jiang Si thought to himself, throw it as far as you can. With that, he raised the javelin in his hand, with a red light in his eyes. Next second, a powerful energy sweeps through the exam room. It's just a moment, the javelin is already flying into space. And with a poof, it's gone right through the satellite. Even so, the javelin is still heading for the moon. The students in the examination room were all sent flying by Jiang Si's javelin. Looked at the ground cracked by Jiang Si's foot. Chen is on the spot with a two-word compliment, holy shit, is this still human power? What he doesn't realize, however, is, above the moon at this time, a hole has appeared through the entire moon. He's the strongest zombie on the planet. Not only can he catch a nuclear bomb with his bare hands, and he can shoot a javelin through the moon, but despite that, he just wanted to be friends with humans. So he hid his identity and came to the human academy, so as not to reveal himself. Jiang Si keeps a low profile all the time, yet the examiner threatened him. If he doesn't show his full strength, he'll be court-martialed. This just made Jiang Si feel a chill down his spine. He then seriously threw the javelin in his hand into the air. I didn't expect to accidentally put a hole in the moon. This maneuver just scared the shit out of the examiner. Xia Xiao ran up to Jiang Si and praised him for his skill. Jiang Si was a bit embarrassed and said, I just threw it in the air. But what they don't realize is, in a galaxy far away in outer space, a large meteorite is creeping toward Earth. And Jiang Si, the culprit, says, I've been accepted, is it time to go home? Xia Xiao sniffed and hastily recommended that he go ahead and build a regiment. You know, as the president of the regiment, that's a lot of power. Not only can you command an army, it's also the ability to use nuclear weapons. And the government will give you a city to run. 
and the mayor is just the president's henchman. But Jiang Si didn't think so. After all, he's got a lot of zombie residents under his thumb. Xiao Xiao then leads him to the biological research center. This is the academy's logistics department. It's a place that specializes in researching new equipment and weapons. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly noticed a photo. It's a picture of a family of four. Xiao Xiao saw this and immediately introduced it. The man with the glasses is Dr. Jiming. He's the former president of the biotech club. But since his wife died, he became obsessed with doing illegal biological research with zombies and humans. He was eventually removed from the academy, and a kill order was issued. That's when a girl came up and asked, Are you the new students? Zhang Si sniffs and looks toward her curiously. Xiao Xiao sees this and rushes to tell him. This girl was an orphan adopted by Dr. Jiming, the current acting president. With that, she described to the girl her intentions for coming here. It turns out that Xiao Xiao wanted a piece of equipment that she could pull out her machine gun anytime, anywhere. The girl sniffs but doesn't look the slightest bit surprised. Instead, she looks at Jiang Si. Jiang Si thought for a moment and said, I'm not short of weapons. But after every battle, his clothes are torn. So I think it would be nice to have a suit that doesn't break. Hearing these two's request, the girl was speechless. Meanwhile, on the other side of the sword house, Xiao Wu, who was fighting earlier, is kneeling down to be criticized. And right in front of him was a long-legged black stocking girl. At this point, Xiao Wu spoke up. The man who defeated me was very strong. At the time I had only just rushed up to the man. And then I blacked out and got hung up on a pole. Hearing this, the girl was instantly interested. With that, she put down the book in her hands, slowly coming up to Xiao Wu's face and asking, Tell me, what's that guy's name? On this day, the teacher was talking about how to set up traps to catch zombies, and Zhang Si is trying to take notes at the bottom of the room. Seeing this scene, Xiao Xiao couldn't help but come up and ask, What are you doing? Zhang Si said without looking back, I'm gonna go back and tell my family about this. Xiao Xiao was dumbfounded when she heard this, but at that moment, the radio suddenly blared, calling all new students to the gym. Zhang Si and Xiao Xiao are confused though, but they arrived at the meeting place very quickly. Just as they were eating their ice cream and puzzling over it, Xiling shows up to tell them to settle down. This is a very important meeting. And meanwhile, on the other side, only saw a tall, blue-haired beauty gazing at Jiang Si. Her name is Lan Chi. She's the president of the Jin Club. And she's always been in competition with Xiling of the Sword Club. So she came, just to see how strong Jiang Si, who was introduced by Xiling, is. Looking at Jiang Si's hangdog look, Lan Chi instructed her men to find a way to test him later. In the meantime, several mysterious figures suddenly appeared at the gates of the gymnasium. The visitor was the leader of all the societies, the president of the Mechanical Life Club. I saw the president walk in. Everyone bends down in honor. Xiao Xiao sees Jiang Si's mute face, hurriedly pressed his head and bowed to the grand president. At that moment, the grand president glanced at Lan Chi next to him and warned her not to mess around. And Lan Chi, hearing this, could only stop. With a wave of her hand, she said she was leaving. But then the men came forward and asked, Are we just going to let that Jiang Si go? Lan Chi laughs with a glance of her eyes, compared to Jiang Si. It's still more important than the great president's business, because I only respect the strong. At this point, the president walked up to Xiling and patted her on the shoulder for her hard work. Seeing this, Jiang Si couldn't help but ask, who is this grand president? Xiao Xiao thought Jiang Si was jealous. She then opened her mouth to introduce the background of the big president. Turns out he was one of the last humans in Dr. Jiming's biological research. Out of tens of thousands of test subjects, only he survived. Since Dr. Jiming has been wanted, he started the Mechanical Life Society. There hasn't been a zombie in his city in 10 years, because all the zombies that touched him turned into a pile of dust. When Jiang Si heard this, he felt a tingle in his head. Just then, the grand president started the meeting. It turns out that the spy we caught last time hasn't said anything yet. After hearing that he secretly pressed the button to launch the nuclear bomb, Jiang Si is furious. So this is the guy who nuked me. Xiao Xiao also said, It's been Dr. Jiming who's been causing the trouble all these years. Actually the zombies haven't had a riot in a long time. Hearing this, Jiang Si can't help but think. The reason why the citizens went berserk. I think Dr. Jiming had something to do with it. 
At this point, the president spoke up again. If anyone can get this spy to reveal Dr. Jimming's hiding place, then I'll make him vice president. Hearing that, the freshmen in the gym got all excited. They raised their hands and said they wanted to try it out. But two hours passed, and the spy never responded. Whether it's torture or not, or whatever it takes, he just won't talk. So much so that later on, the picture got weird and strange. There were drums and gongs. There's even an attempt at chanting. Xiling is a headache at the sight of this scene. At that moment, Xiao Xiao asked Jiang Si curiously, Do you have a way to make him talk? And when Jiang Si learns that he's the one responsible for starting the melee, he volunteered that he could make him talk. This maneuver caused Xiao Xiao to freeze next to him. Hasn't he always kept a low profile? Why the sudden initiative today? It turns out that Jiang Si wanted to find out from him why his men were going crazy. Soon enough, Jiang Si arrives at the room where the spy is being held. He looked at Jiang Si without any fear. Then he looked away and said, Come on, you can use any punishment you want on me. But after a long wait, Jiang Si just stood there and didn't say a word. What's the matter? Is there no one at your school? Can't believe you sent this piece of shit against me. But his words were not yet finished. Jiang Si sliced a small hole in his arm with a swish, looking at the small cut on his wrist. With a disdainful sneer, he says, Is that all you've got? I'm not even afraid of all kinds of torture. Are you tickling me? Jiang Si isn't angry. Instead, he calmly said, Get up. As his words finished, the spy actually stood up. The crowd was shocked to see this. How did he do that? It turns out Jiang Si planted a zombie virus in the spy's wound. As the virus slowly deepens, in less than a moment, the virus has taken over his entire brain. The spy is now a completely obedient zombie. Not only does he begin to give his background and obey Jiang Si's next orders. At this point, Xiao Xiao is completely dumbfounded. She didn't realize that Jiang Si had the special ability to manipulate other people's minds. At this point, Jiang Si asks, the zombies had been very peaceful before. Why are they suddenly out of control? The spy said, because Jiming spread the potion over the city. And these zombies go crazy when they come in contact with the potion. Jiming will then order them to fight against abnormal humans. Thus acquiring the data. Hear this. Jiang Si asked again, why are you doing this? The spy said he didn't know why either. All he knows is that Jiming collects data for a greater good. He then went on to reveal Dr. Jiming's hiding place. It's 500 meters below H city. The crowd that saw the scene can no longer be described as surprised. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly turned his back and said in zombie language, I put a kill yourself virus in your head. You're on your own. As Jiang Si finishes his words, the spy responded with a mumbled reply and then went to get his boxed lunch. It's over. Jiang Si's zombie identity has been discovered. With a tachyon cannon shot from the student council president. Surprisingly, it blows Jiang Si's head off in an instant. Just now, Jiang Si utilizes the power of his zombie virus, succeeded in learning the whereabouts of Dr. Jiming from the spies, and also found out the reason why the zombie citizens went berserk. And then when he walked out of the interrogation room, everyone is looking at him in horror. Even Xiling couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. But Lanchi, the president of the Jin Club, looks at him with interest. At this point, the president on the podium claps his hands and says it's good. The first year class is a real hive of talent. Then he asked Jiang Si to go with him to register for the vice president's information. Lan Chi, who heard this, was stunned. Since when do vice presidents have to register? Looking at Jiang Si, who is slowly walking towards the back of the gym, Lan Chi can't help but follow with his men. Meanwhile, on the other side, 500 meters below the surface of a ruined city, Ming, according to reliable sources, our spy has confessed. Dr. Jiming didn't panic at all when he heard this. Instead, he said, then let them come. Green Hair was shocked at his words. Then he said that those guys are not vegetarians. But Dr. Jiming, unperturbed, walks over to the side of the labware and says, they're here just in time. Anyway, the experiment is almost complete. Let them witness this great moment. The birth of a new species. The scene is once again on the academy side. The chairman is seen leading Jiang Si to an abandoned factory. At this point, Jiang Si looks puzzled. Didn't you say you'd take me to register? Why is it still getting more desolate? At this point, the president suddenly spoke up and asked, 
When did you learn to speak human? Jiang Si is visibly stunned by this statement, but before he could reply, the president suddenly turned around and pointed his gun at him. With a bang, Jiang Si's head was instantly drowned in a pillar of energy. Even Lanchi, who was following them, was almost killed. After she had slowed down, Lanchi is shocked to say that the chairman's tachyon cannon is really scary. At that moment, the chairman looked at Jiang Si, who had his head blown off, and muttered, Though I don't know how you managed to sneak into the academy, but a zombie's weakness is in the head, and you've had the misfortune of meeting me. And just when he's still smug about it, Jiang Si, who was originally motionless, suddenly made an instantaneous flash. In the next instant, he grabbed the chairman by the neck with one hand. With a thud, the president was pushed into the wall by Jiang Si. A few robots suddenly fell from the sky. They're firing a barrage at Jiang Si. And the chairman took advantage of this gap to hastily escape from Jiang Si's hands. But the scene in front of him stunned him again. The headless Jiang Si crushed all the robots in the field with his bare hands. It's coming, Jiang Si's second form has finally arrived. Just now, Jiang Si after taking care of all the bots, the chairman on the sidelines is aghast. What the fuck is this shit? A zombie without a head is still so strong. Lanchi and her men, who are hiding in the shadows, are completely dumbfounded. Just then, Jiang Si suddenly made a power up. In the next second, he's already at the president's side. But the president isn't slow. He can counterattack while dodging Jiang Si's attack. A tachyon cannon is fired. But it doesn't hit Jiang Si. The president is in a state of shock. How can this guy be so flexible without a head? But he can't think about it now. Because Jiang Si's fist was already swinging at him like lightning. Just in the nick of time, the president rushes back and dodges a few dozen meters to distance himself. That's good. You're the first zombie that can make me go all out. Let's hope this fight doesn't end too soon. Hearing that, Lan Chi, next to him, knows that the chairman is getting serious. Jiang Si on the other side. At this moment, he suddenly mutated. His head, which had been shattered, grew back. The two Lanchis were dumbfounded by this scene. What kind of creature is this? At this point Jiang Si spoke up. Let's talk about it. I don't want to hurt you. The president feels the small cut on his neck. Then he slowly took off his clothes and said, Your plan may have failed. I'm a robot. You can't control me at all. As his words finish, several figures flew through the air. Just a few seconds. Those pillars of light converged on the president's body. As the white mist slowly clears, a mech-covered robot is added to the field. Zombie, I hope you can hold out a little longer. Because it's been a long time since I've used my full power. With that, he rushed towards Jiang Si with great speed. In a split second, Jiang Si was hit in the jaw by his kick. Not only that, just before Jiang Si even hits the ground, the president instantly flashed below him again, throws a barrage of punches to the chest. The force of that punch sent Jiang Si flying a hundred meters into the air. At this point, the two men watching from the sidelines are completely stunned. Is this the strength of the chairman? The chairman flew over Jiang Si again, and then there were countless thumps and bangs. Jiang Si was punched so many times in the air by the chairman. When it feels like it's almost time, the chairman came to Jiang Si's body in a flash. And then, he stomped him into the ground. Just as Jiang Si hit the ground, at that moment, a red energy light suddenly illuminates on the president's chest. Next send. A powerful shockwave is seen blasting towards the ground. This horrible energy even shook out the surrounding buildings. The chairman, who had finally stopped, breathed a sigh of relief and said, He's going to die this time, isn't he? But when the smoke clears, Jiang Si came out of it in one piece. The president was in disbelief when he saw this. At that moment, Jiang Si in the center of the arena suddenly yells to the sky. The terrifying power of the roar caused Lanchi, who was several hundred meters away, to almost lose his footing. The president's mech even cracked on the spot. When Jiang Si stopped hissing and slowly turned around, the duo watching the fight are stunned on the spot. Because at that moment, Jiang Si had already changed into his second form. Never mess with a Jiang Si with hair. Because he just casually fucked the mighty chairman into scrap metal with a single blow. Just now, Jiang Si has unlocked his second form. He just appeared on the scene and caused the world to change. At this moment, a fierce wind began to blow with Jiang Si at the center. 
It's even affecting the entire city. Xiao Xiao, who saw the scene from afar, was in disbelief. Lan Qi, who was in the battlefield at the time, was so scared that she didn't dare to utter a word. While everyone was looking puzzled, John C., still in the abandoned warehouse, finally speaks up. I told you from the beginning. I don't really want to go to war with humans. The chairman who heard this was stunned. But when he was about to retort, John C., however, suddenly laughed with a tilt of his head and said, How do you want to die now? This bizarre scene was a shock to the launchy duo next to them. How did he not only change his form, but his personality as well? The two of them then began to run away at breakneck speeds, after all, it's their own lives that matter. However, the chairman, who was still on the field at the time, didn't even think about his current situation. He even arrogantly stated, I've never been scared of a zombie in my entire life. After that, he clamored for Jiang Si to fight him again. At this point Lan Qi, who had already fled a long way away at great speed, was thinking, this distance should be considered safe now, right? Suddenly, a figure passes right by them with a thud. The two people who saw this scene were instantly shocked. Because the chairman was blown to pieces by Jiang Si's punch. However, before they could react, Jiang Si had already flashed in front of them again. The president rushed to call out for his mechs. But the robots were still in mid-air when they were blown to smithereens by the Jiang Si with a bang. Lan Qi, who was still in the air at the moment, was also shaken down by the aftermath of the explosion. When the president saw this, he shouted at them, Help me kill that zombie. But Lan Qi doesn't want to talk to him. He's so strong, who would dare to go on him? There you go. The three of them ran off in different directions. But Jiang Si, who saw the scene, didn't move. Instead, he raised his right hand. And then it plunged into the ground. In the next second, the earth began to shake. And Lan Qi, who was still escaping towards the outside at the moment, froze in her tracks. Because she was suddenly blocked by a concrete road in front of her. Even the chairman was hit by this sudden roadblock. It turns out that Jiang Si has lifted an entire new city under development. The crowd was dumbfounded by the sight. What the hell is this? Is there an earthquake? Xiao Xiao on the other side is also looking at everything in front of her with disbelief. This is an uninhabited city. Unexpectedly, it was lifted. At that moment, Jiang Si in the middle of the battlefield suddenly made a power move. With a thud, he's heading towards the president with great speed. Just for a moment, Jiang Si put one hand on the president's head. He then grinned and said, How was it? Do you feel scared now? Jiang Si's subordinate Aju finally couldn't take it anymore. He actually rallied the citizens to attack the humans. Just now, after Jiang Si changed into his second form, in just a few rounds, he easily took down the unstoppable chairman. At that moment, Jiang Si said with a wicked smile, Although I have no control over the robot, but your brain isn't made of machines, is it? With that he cut the chairman's scalp with his finger. In the next second, Countless Jiang Si viruses took over the chairman's entire brain in an instant. Jiang Si read some memories from his brain. I didn't realize that the seemingly unstoppable chairman was also a poor man. When he was five years old, his parents died in an accident. And then Dr. Jiaming captured him for body modification. From the head down, there's almost no place that's normal. Seeing this, Jiang Si couldn't help but pity him, he said. Living like this, aren't you more of a zombie than us? Then he let go of his hand. Jiang Si just let him go. Lan Qi down below rushes over and catches the dying chairman. She is also in a state of shock. I didn't realize that Jiang Si had the ability to read other people's memories. Waiting for the night time. Jiang Si rushes back to the dormitory and packs his bags while thinking. How did I lose control of my emotions again? I've been exposed. I'd better run away. But as he takes his luggage and prepares to leave. Xiling, however, appeared out of nowhere and stopped him in his tracks. Jiang Si is helpless at the moment. I'm obviously a very kind zombie. Really don't like killing people. But for freedom. Still, with a single turn he lurches towards Xiling. However, at this point, Xiling suddenly showed him a letter of appointment. And it also said, from today you're the vice president of the Academy for Abnormal Humans. When he heard this, Jiang Si was puzzled. But the appointment letter in front of him doesn't look like a fake. And then, he subconsciously asked. Was this stamped by the president himself? Also, didn't he say anything else to you? Xiling indicated with a slight sideways glance. The president just said you're a rare talent. He didn't say much else. 
and meanwhile on the other side. Lanchi is shocked when she learns that the chairman is leaving Jiangxi behind. However, the chairman says, it doesn't matter if he's a zombie or a human. The main thing is that he can help us catch Dr. Jiaming. And then ask Lanchi, how's the arrangement going this time? At this Lanchi says she's ready. We're ready to go anytime. Good. Let's hope we succeed in catching Dr. Jiaming this time. The screen turns. At this point inside some abandoned town, Aju hissed angrily. Our king has been captured by the humans. What should we do? Kill the humans. Rescue the great king. At this moment, Jiang Si's minions are passionate. However, Blackie on the roof is disdainful. How could our king be captured by human? I think it's just that Aju's got too much time on his hands. And so, after a few days of peace, at this time, an aircraft carrier suddenly appeared in the sea. The president stood in the command center and shouted into the microphone. Everyone, listen up. There's only one chance. Dr. Jiaming must be captured at all costs. It wasn't long before they arrived at the ruined city where Dr. Jiaming was hiding. But Jiangxi took Xiao Xiao with him as if he were shopping. Look around. That's it. A group of human armed forces suddenly appeared. As soon as they saw Jiang Si, they all saluted him. Jiang Si was baffled by this maneuver. At that moment, a captain stepped forward and reported that as of today, the 56th Army Group, consisting of 120,000 men, only followed the orders of Mr. Jiang Si, the vice president. It's over. Jiang Si's little brother, Aju, is under human control. Just now, the president is trying to catch Dr. Jiaming. He gave a group of human troops to Jiang Si. Looking at the 120,000 humans at his disposal, Jiang Si asked curiously, Is it true that if I told you to die right now you'd be willing to do it? With his words just falling out of his mouth, the soldier immediately took out his grenade and shouted, This is my honor. This left Jiang Si speechless. What's wrong with this guy? And then, a dissonant voice suddenly interrupted his thoughts. I don't get it. Such a strategically important location is being guarded by a little piece of shit. You guys better be good and hide behind us later. I don't want you to get hurt by mistake. Xiao Xiao suddenly exclaimed. Are you the president and vice president of Stainless Steel Academy? Meanwhile, over at the carrier, a teenager in armor taunts relentlessly. Is there no one left at your academy? I can't believe you're sending a rookie to guard such an important strategic position. Upon hearing this, Lanchi immediately retorted, If you want to help, then help. Don't talk nonsense in front of me. At this point, the chairman also came up and added, Do you believe this new guy can beat the shit out of you? That comment made President Steele's face full of disdain. Then he said he'd sent reinforcements. You're in for a treat. And in a control room a few hundred meters underground. Ming, they've all entered the city. What do we do? Dr. Jiming smiled evilly at this and said, Well, let's play with them first. With that, he pressed a button on the console. Next, countless zombies are coming at Jiang Si and the others from all sides of the city. And that's when it happened. Greenhair suddenly realizes how there's a strange thing mixed in with the zombie horde, so it's Aju trying to get revenge on the humans. So he encouraged the zombies to attack the humans. But the next day, only one of them followed. And after he put the gasoline in Aju's hand, he ran away. As he left, he said that he wouldn't dare disobey the king's orders. Aju was speechless when he heard this. Can't we just keep the king from knowing? These gutless bastards. Isn't it just a few human beings? Let's see how I'm going to cut them down. But just then, the green gas floating down in the air made him sniff it curiously. Green hair was overjoyed at this sight. He didn't realize that this zombie's stats were ridiculously high. At the thought of this, Greenhair couldn't help but laugh out loud. Come on, let's see how strong you really are. Meanwhile, on the ground, the weaker zombies were quickly wiped out. Looking at the zombie corpses in front of us, the Jiangxi is also full of questions. This doesn't seem to be my ethnic group. Xiao Xiao turns her head sharply when she hears this. I don't know anything about this. At that moment, Steel President suddenly stepped forward and taunted him. You're all weaklings. You better go home to your mommy. Don't stay here and get in the way. But he hadn't finished his sentence. There was a sudden roar in the distance. Jiangxi saw this and rushed forward to ask, Aju, what are you doing here? But Aju doesn't answer his question. Instead, he drank the gasoline in his hand. Xiao Xiao is totally shocked by this scene. What the hell is this? 
Suddenly Aju pulls the chainsaw in his hand. The roar of the engine was instantaneous. Then Aju suddenly looked up and roared. Then he charged towards Jiang Si. Do you know how strong Jiang Si's little brother Aju is? Just a random hit. Beat the president of the baseball club so bad he cried out for his mom. Just now, Aju, by mistake, inhaled the green potion. He can't even recognize his own boss, Jiang Si. And then he pulls out his chainsaw and goes to war with the humans. Aju roars up to the sky. In the next second, the buildings around them cracked open. Xiao Xiao, who was directly in front of him, was flown out of the building. Luckily, Jiang Si showed up just in time, helping them block most of the attacks. At this point Xiao Xiao asked with a horrified look on her face. What the hell is this guy? Aju, who is completely out of control at the moment, screams about killing humans. Hearing this, President Bang became interested. That's good. Finally, a decent zombie. But then the Jiang Si pulls Xiao Xiao along for the ride. Xiao Xiao is puzzled and asks, why are we running away? Isn't there a President Bang here? Jiang Si said without looking back. Don't be stupid. That guy can't be killed. Xiao Xiao is shocked to hear this. At this point, Jiang Si reminded. Aju is truly immortal. But their escape was seen by President Bang as Jiang Si's fear. But he wasn't done taunting. Aju punches the vice president right next to him and sends him flying. With a loud thud. It's only now that President Bang reacts. He then hurriedly turned around and asked, What's the situation? What just happened? However at the moment the vice president was completely speechless. By the time he looked back again, Aiju has somehow gotten in front of him. And then there's a series of thumps and thumps. Green hair in the surveillance room exclaims, This is awesome. This guy's combat power is simply off the charts. And the president of the stick in the middle of the field is in deep shit. He's trying to fight back. But in the next second, Aiju slapped him in the face and spun him around. And then he kicked him several hundred meters away. And with a thud, President Bang and the vice president lost their fighting power in an instant. Aiju came at them with another flash. He then raises the chainsaw in his hand and slashes at him. And on the other side, on the roof of a building, Jiang Si and the three of them are relaxing and watching the show. Xiao Xiao shouted, Oh no! It looks like President Bang is about to lose it. President Bang, who was so arrogant just a moment ago, and now Aju's beating him up and making him cry for his mommy. The Xiao Xiao duo are in a state of shock at this scene. Aju is about to take the life of President Bang. The squad leader next to him hurriedly asked, Vice President Zhang, what do we do now? Zhang Si thinks to himself as he observes Aju's movements. If I make a move, I'm probably going to blow my cover. He then turned his head to Xiao Xiao and said, you go down and beat him up. Hearing this, Xiao Xiao hurriedly said, even President Bang is no match for that guy. Wouldn't I be serving him dessert if I went down there? However, Jiang Si doesn't pay any attention to her ranting. Instead, he bites down on her arm. Afterward, Xiao Xiao was confused. Oh no, am I going to turn into a zombie? Then she put her hands on her chest and scolded angrily. You're not trying to have bad thoughts about me, are you? The Jiang Si who heard this was speechless. And then he said, remember to be gentle when you beat him up. It turns out that Xiao Xiao is under the control of a zombie virus. She's already transformed into a fighting lowly. It's over. Jiang Si has bitten someone, but not only did the bitten girl not turn into a zombie. Instead, her fighting power went straight up. It's all because Jiang Si is afraid of revealing her identity. So he used his super zombie virus. And he reorganized and upgraded Xiao Xiao's genes. Just for a moment. Xiao Xiao transforms into a battle lowly. Just as Aju was about to kill President Bang, Xiao Xiao hurriedly smashes a rock on top of his head. Aju turned around in irritation and asked, Who is it? How dare you mess with me? At this time Xiao Xiao walked up without haste and said, The one with the saw. What's the point of bullying a weakling? Come play with me. Aju is stunned when he hears this. Then he said with a hard look in his eyes, What are you? You're not worthy to fight me. What's the matter? Is that all you've got, bragging rights? I'm gonna beat you to a pulp in a minute. With that said, Xiao Xiao immediately pulled out a special gatling from his crotch. Just for a moment. Countless bullets were fired at Aiju. But what she didn't expect was, Aiju dodged the bullets with just a few random movements. But the president of the club behind him is not so lucky. Good thing he's wearing steel armor. Otherwise, even if Aiju hadn't killed him, 
He also died at the hands of Xiao Xiao. Just then, Xiao Xiao suddenly arrives in front of Aju with an instantaneous movement, then another 360 degree leap in the air. A moment before it reaches Aiju's head, Xiao Xiao hastily pulls off two high explosive grenades. Then he slammed them into Aiju's mouth. With a loud boom, Aiju was instantly engulfed in flames. But when the smoke cleared, Aiju walked out again as if nothing had happened. And even mockingly said, I'm immortal, don't waste your breath. But his words were not yet finished. He was hit in the face with a round of buckshot. Xiao Xiao shouted with an evil grin on his face, not bad. I was just warming you up. Meanwhile, on the other side, the squad leader asked with a curious look on his face, Vice President Zheng, what exactly did you just do to her? Nothing. I just modified her genes a little bit. And that's just the beginning. And I can make her stronger. The screen is on Aju's side again, even though he's immortal. But he's still in a lot of pain from all the attacks. At that moment, Xiao Xiao in the middle of the field suddenly laughed wildly to the sky as if her body had been subjected to an evolution. Seeing this scene, President Bang was completely shocked. Now they just want to go home to their moms. Suddenly, Aju takes the lead. A sprint towards Xiao Xiao kills it. But it's a miss. Instead, he was stepped on the ground by Xiao Xiao. With a thud, Xiao Xiao hits Aju in the face with another sweeping kick. The force of the kick sends Aju flying hundreds of meters backwards. At this moment, Xiao Xiao picked up another bazooka and shouted, Aren't you immortal? How about a taste of this? At this moment, a Jew, who's been beaten up, just got up and saw the gasoline next to him. Then he hurriedly picked up a bucket and poured it into his mouth. At the same time, Xiao Xiao's rockets are also coming towards him at this time. But with a flash of cold light, that rocket was split in two. It turns out the Aju's combat power has gone up a notch with the gasoline, and Xiao Xiao was cut in half by Aju's blow. The president and vice president of the club were shocked to see this. It's over. She's going to die this time. At this point, Aju mocks with a haughty look on his face. I told you I was immortal. Be more careful in your next life. And yet, just then, Zhang Si on the rooftop suddenly raised his hand and made a fist. In the next second, Xiao Xiao's originally separated body. It miraculously began to heal again. The change was a shock to Aju's face. He didn't expect Xiao Xiao to be immortal. This is the correct way to use a Gatling machine gun. It's a direct hit. Even Aju would be confused. Just now, Xiao Xiao was transformed by the zombie's super virus. Not only has her combat prowess gone up several notches, she's even got the same immortality as Aju. See this scene. At this moment, the two presidents just want to go home and find their mother. On the other hand, the two of them are now getting more and more energized. Xiao Xiao growled with an evil grin on his face and said, Not bad. I'm happy today, so I'll play with you to the end. Aju, who heard this, was also confused. What's going on? Why does it look like she's more of a zombie? Zhang Si, who was standing on the roof watching, didn't expect. After Xiao Xiao's genetic mutation, she's got so much potential. But at this moment, she's already shattered all over. And the pain of being cut in half just now is real. No, we need to end this fight soon. Aju, since you're not staying home properly, then don't blame me for lending Xiao Xiao a hand to beat you up. With Jiang Si's deliberate manipulation, Xiao Xiao's potential is once again stimulated. Just for a moment. And she's in front of Aiju. And then there's a big bang. Xiao Xiao punches Aiju in the face. That powerful force caused him to fly upside down dozens of meters. But just then, Xiao Xiao comes up behind him with another flash. And then there's the hammer blow. It hits Aju hard on the side of the head, with a loud thud. When the dust clears, Aju just climbed out of the pit. And he saw Xiao Xiao standing in front of him again. Then came a series of beatings. At this point, Aju has no resistance at all. Seeing that Xiao Xiao was about to give him another set of combo attacks, Aju raises his hands in surrender. And he said he's going home right now. He'll never come out again. Zhang Si is embarrassed to hear this. And Green Hair, who was observing from the surveillance room, was also confused. Suddenly, Xiao Xiao drops the machine gun to the ground. Then the tense state of her whole body disappeared in an instant. At that moment Aju, who was hiding in the pit, noticed the change as well. He then jumps out and hits Xiao Xiao in the face with a sneak attack. Zhang Si was so angry when he saw this. Xiao Xiao, what are you doing? 
you believe his bullshit? And as soon as you let your guard down, you'll be back to normal in no time. Xiao Xiao, who heard this, was full of regret. She didn't expect her physical condition to disappear so easily. At this point Aiju mocked with a cocky look on his face. So it was an injection. Now that the drug has worn off, I'll see how you die. Jiang Si who saw the scene was speechless, looks like I still have to do it myself. And at the moment, Green Hair, who was observing from the shadows, was thrilled. This zombie is too strong. Even play sneak attack. Then he excitedly controls the keyboard and tries to get Aiju to destroy them all. As Aiju gets closer and closer. Just as he was about to kill Xiao Xiao and the others. Suddenly, Green Hair notices that there seems to be another person on the street. Looking at the slowly approaching Jiang Si, Aju stops moving at once. Just when the green hair thought he was in for another good show, Aju suddenly trembled and couldn't speak properly. At that moment, Jiang Si shouted with a black face, Aju, didn't I tell you to guard the house? What are you doing here? When these words came out, the few people next to them froze in their tracks. And at this moment, green hair in the surveillance room was also stunned. Because no matter how he manipulated, Aju's not responding at all. It turns out that with the appearance of Jiang Si, Aju's consciousness was instantly pulled back hundreds of years. That was his first meeting with Jiang Si. At the time, he thought Jiang Si was just a little zombie. I didn't realize it had only been a few years. Jiang Si has become the leader of the zombie world. The scene returns to the present. At this moment, Xiao Xiao and the rest of the team are in a state of disbelief. Because Aju, who was so arrogant a moment ago, is now so scared that he pissed his pants. Do you know how scary Jiang Si is in his second form? Aju with his undead body was only looked at by him. He pissed his pants. Seeing this scene, Green Hair was in disbelief. He then pressed the console to continue controlling Aju, but watching Jiang Si approaching him step by step. At this moment, Aju is so scared that he doesn't dare to utter a word. Trance. Aju remembered that summer hundreds of years ago. Back then, he was still the king of the land. But it wasn't until the guy who called himself Jiang Si showed up. At first Aiju thought he was just a normal little zombie. But the next moment he was being choked by Jiang Si. From now on, you're my little brother. Is there anything you don't like? Hearing this Aiju nods his head in agreement. The screen returns to the present again. At this moment, Aiju is afraid to move. Now the green hair is furious. Then he cursed angrily, you are immortal, what are you afraid of? But since Aiju used to disobey Jiang Si and he was broken into pieces and hung on a tree by Jiang Si for hundreds of years as cured meat. So, no matter how green hair manipulates Aju, Aju's body instinctively tries to resist. Just then, the computers controlling the zombies were blown up by the green hair, and Aju runs away from the scene out of fear. Green hair was dumbfounded by this scene, and the trio of spectators next to him were also dumbfounded. As for Jiang Si, he himself looks puzzled. Aju, this kid is really something too. Am I that scary? Seeing his plan spoiled by Jiang Si, Green Hair is furious. But just as he was about to continue, suddenly, a big hand landed on his shoulder. Forget it. These zombies are just an appetizer. The real show is just starting now. With the sound of his voice, several helicopter gunships appeared at 10,000 meters. It's the president of the Abnormal Human Academy. Lanchi turns to the traitor and asks, Speak, is Dr. Jimming down there? Yeah, they're hiding about a thousand meters underground. And the total area is almost 10,000 square meters. Lanchi, who heard this, couldn't help but stare. How are we supposed to find it if it's so wide? But she hasn't even finished her sentence yet. The president of the Stainless Steel Academy next to her drew his sword and said, You'll see what I'm going to do next. That said, he ejected from the helicopter like a sword. Lanchi, who saw the scene, couldn't help but spit it out. You're quite the reckless man, aren't you? But when he heard this, President Steele advanced instead of retreating. He waved his long sword from side to side at will. In the next second, the wind of the blade was already spiraling towards the ground. It's just for a little while. There was a loud bang on the ground. I didn't realize it was only a few breaths away. The president smashed a 100 meter deep hole in the ground. Lanchi was speechless at the moment. He's too impulsive, isn't he? Then she said to the president, making so much noise. What if there's a trap down there? However, the president is not concerned about this. He even said that all traps are useless in the face of absolute power. 
And with that, he jumped out of the helicopter. Can you believe it? This little zombie who hasn't even been weaned. It's a zombie king that can destroy humans. Just now, when all the armed forces enter the dungeon, they searched and found no one suspicious. This confused both the president and the chairman. Did Dr. Jiming escape? Meanwhile, on the ground, Mr. Lanchi couldn't help but spit. Why do we have to stand guard up there while they rush down to arrest people? Xiling, who heard this, couldn't help it. Afterwards, she could only faintly advise. Who made them higher in rank than us? At this point, the scene comes back to a tall building. Ming, all of them are rushing in. What do we do next? When Ming heard that, he rubbed his eyes and said, It's time to show them my great experiment. Execute the plan. Meanwhile in the dungeon, President Steele arrives at a cylindrical incubation chamber, driven by curiosity. He peeled off the note on the incubation pod. The paper reads, Zombie King inside. Open it if you're a man with balls. How could President Steele stand to see such words? He ordered his men to open it. But just then, the chairman next to him suddenly said, Our main purpose is to make arrests. Don't look for trouble, seeing that they didn't fall for it. Greenhair was in a hurry to report back to Ming that they had gone soft. Hearing this, Ming nonchalantly pulls a detonator out of his pocket. With the push of a button, next C-Send, the remote control bomb behind the incubation chamber starts counting down. The chairman heard this sound and felt bad, but it's too late to dodge. Then a violent explosion was heard. The fire engulfed all the soldiers in the room in an instant. However, an explosion of this magnitude seemed to the president. Even tickling him would be easy. But when Ming learned that the things in the incubation bin had come out, he immediately said, ha ha, and laughed furiously. The destruction of mankind begins today. Come, my greatest experiment. Go slaughter all the humans. Even me. The screen came to the dungeon again, as the smoke slowly clears. At this moment, President Steele and the chairman are both baffled. It's because of the zombie king written on the note. It's a baby zombie that hasn't been weaned yet. President Steele and his team are dumbfounded by this sight. This thing is the zombie king? You've got to be kidding me. But just as President Steele was about to step forward to find out what was going on, the president suddenly tapped him on the shoulder and said, Be careful. The more harmless something looks, the more dangerous it can be. Because just a little while ago, the president knows what it's like. But the uninformed President Steele doesn't care. He rushed up and swung his sword. However, the little zombie who was breastfeeding dodged it with an extremely strange movement. The president who saw this scene couldn't help but shout, Holy shit, I knew this would happen. He then yelled at the soldiers behind him with a wave of his hand, Retreat, or we're all dead. As his words fell, all the soldiers then rushed towards the outside. But the unconquerable President Steele looked on with disdain. He doesn't believe that a little zombie can take over the world. And then he struck the zombie again. Looking at the zombie that was cut in half by the slash, President Steele thought that was the end of it. But the next second, the zombie split into two separate entities. President Steele was dumbfounded by the sight. What the fuck is this monster? And that's when it happened. The two separate little zombies suddenly let out a strange burst of speech. And then they fused with each other in a strange way. Here we go. Jung Si's wife is here. Just now. After the president and a few others attacked the dungeon, all they found was a zombie with a pacifier. The real Ming had already escaped to the roof of the building. Ming, before they realize it. Why don't we let the zombies out and just run while they're gone? That's it. Greenhair then released all the zombies in the city. It was only a moment. A large number of zombies rushed towards Lanchi and the others. However, Lanchi didn't panic at all when he saw the scene, just as the subordinate next to her was about to call for backup. Lanchi, however, walked up alone and said, no need, you can step back for now. After saying, she then stepped forward and removed the hairpin that bound her hair from her head. With a swish, the hairpin transformed into a sharp sword. In a flash, Lanchi is holding a sword, as valiant as a heroine. With a swish and a flash, Lanchi had already kicked the zombie in the jaw. Then there were countless thuds and bangs. In the next second, all the zombies on the street were kicked into the air by Lanchi. At this moment, Lanchi is using the bouncing force of a big tree. And with a swoosh, she's off into the air. The vice president was shocked to see this. 
The launchy in the air is whizzing by with a very fast sword. It's only a matter of breaths. Launchy has landed. The zombies in the air are all cut to pieces. The vice president, who was eating his lunch at the moment, was dumbfounded. It's because a top quality zombie sushi was cut out of his plate. Launchy said with her arms wrapped around her. That's all the zombies. Not enough to warm me up. And the green hair on the rooftop is very angry. I didn't realize that the zombies he just released were cleaned up by her. If only that chainsaw zombie from before was still there. I'm gonna make this bitch suffer. He then commanded the other zombies to charge towards Lanchi. But just then, two strange figures suddenly appeared in the alley. It's Dog and Blackie. They're here too. Blackie walked up to one of the zombies and asked. Have you seen this zombie in the picture? With a chainsaw in his hand. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. The notice in his hand was flipped off by the zombie. Blackie is speechless at this scene. This wild zombie has no quality. And then Dog walked up and asked. If we can't find Aju, will the king beat us up too? Hearing this, Blackie couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat as well. He then reassured himself that he would find him. Meanwhile in the dungeon, the zombie with the pacifier reached out and shouted. Let's play. Hearing this, the chairman and the two of them were speechless for a moment. President Steele even drew his sword and slashed at the zombie. But the zombie dodged it. At that moment, President Steele suddenly built up his strength. And with a swish, he cuts the zombie in two. And yet the zombie, cut in two, acted as if nothing had happened. After a few bounces, it's back together again. President Steele was furious. Then he cursed, don't run away. Dare you fight me for real? After hearing that, the zombie suddenly pulled out the pacifier. And then something weird happened. Only to see the little zombie that was originally less than a meter. Now it's a tall, beautiful zombie. Seeing this scene, the two presidents were dumbfounded. What the fuck is this? And yet, just then, the zombie suddenly said to them. This is one sexy, long-legged zombie you don't want to mess with. President Steele just for looking at her one more time. She crippled him with a kick. Just now. When that zombie cub pulled out the pacifier. It turned into a long-legged female zombie. However for the steel president. A beautiful woman only affects how fast he can draw his sword. He then slashes at the female zombie with a double-edged slash. But the next moment he was dumbfounded. It was only because his dominating blow was caught by the female zombie with a flick of her hand. And no matter how hard he tried. The sword could not advance any further. Seeing this, President Steele knew that he was no match for her. Then he turned around and shouted, What are you waiting for? Get over here and help. The chairman who heard this no longer hides. And then there was the boom. Mecha one shines. But he hasn't even had a chance to strike yet. He was sent flying by an inch strike from the female zombie. That horrible force directly pierced through a building. Finally. And coincidentally landed in front of Blackie and Dog. Looking at the human who suddenly appeared, Dog subconsciously asks, he looks like he's dying, should we save him? Next to him, Blackie sniffed and spat in a hurry. Are you stupid? We're zombies. That's it. Suddenly there's another loud bang on the other side of the dungeon. Then we saw President Steele flying out like a cannonball. Xiling and Lanchi rushed forward and asked him, what's going on in the dungeon? Seeing President Steele endure the pain, he raises his hand and points behind them. See for yourselves. The two of them turn around in a hurry when they hear this. But when they saw the visitor clearly, they were shocked. Because that beautiful zombie is now leisurely leaning on the railing and yawning. And then she even threw a wink at Lanchi and the others. Watching this bizarre scene, Xiling instantly feels that this zombie must be something special. Lanchi, who was next to her, also hastily drew the sword in her hand. She says, work together later. Can't let her get away. But facing the pressure of the two presidents, this beautiful zombie is not panicking at all. It even hooked its hand at them in amusement. And meanwhile, on the other side, Jiang Si and the others are relaxing and eating barbecue. At this time, Vice President Steele picked up a glass of wine and said fawningly, President Jiang, please drink. But Jiang Si had just picked up his glass and hadn't even had a chance to drink yet. There was a sudden rumble from the other side of the street. Xiao Xiao next to him couldn't help being stunned by this strange sound. Is something happening over there? When he heard this, Jiang Si then stood up and said, Let's go. Let's go over there and see what's going on. It's over.
Jiang Si is losing his wife. It turns out that the beautiful zombie with a bumpy figure. At this moment, he turned into a mutant bull demon king with eight pack abs. Just now, Lanchi and Xiling are going to join forces against the female zombie. But it turns out that the vampire girl isn't backing down at all. Instead, she came right at them. Lanchi took the lead. She threw the sword in his hand towards her. With a whooshing sound, it only made a small cut on the female zombie's face. See this. Xiling, who was next to him, also rushed forward with his sword drawn. But the next second, she was kicked in the jaw by zombie. The pain is so intense that Xiling almost passes out. At that moment, the female zombie spoke up and said, the speed is not bad. It's just a shame the power is so far off. Xiling can't stand it when he hears this. So she did a 360 degree spin in the air. And then she kicked the zombie in the head. However, such a fierce blow. The female zombie was fine. Xiling feels bad when he sees this. She then hastily retreated to the back with an instantaneous flash. Right in the middle of her retreat. Lanchi, who was next to her, rushed forward, wielding her sword. Only to see countless sword chi surrounding the female zombie's body. Just for a moment. The surrounding buildings were split into countless pieces by the sword energy. But despite that, the female zombie is still unharmed. Meanwhile, on the other side, President Steele endured the pain and came to a secluded area. He took off his pants neatly. He then activated the backup motor on his neck. In the next second, there was a mechanical sound of clicking. A few seconds. President Steele has transformed into a Steel Knight. That's right. This is the Stainless Steel Academy secret card. Heart of Steel number one. The screen comes to Lanchi and his side again. It's a back and forth battle at the moment. But just as Xiling and Lanchi were about to launch a general attack on her, the female zombie in the scene suddenly stuck out a two and a half meter tongue. And then a series of mutation growths occurred. The Lanchi duo who saw the scene were stunned on the spot. What the fuck is this? That's when the female zombie suddenly hit the ground with a slap. The powerful airflow immediately blew them away. And the female zombie who originally had a diminutive figure. She's turned into a mutant cow demon with eight pack abs. But luckily, President Steele, who succeeded in his transformation, has finally arrived. At that moment, the Lanchi duo, who had been severely injured, shouted. Retreat! You're no match for him. However, President Steele's self-confidence is so high that he doesn't even care about their cries. He then arrogantly walked up to the mutated bull demon. Human, I hope you can withstand my blow. Come on, one move to win. At that moment, President Steele and Bull Demon Zombie swung their fists at the same time. As the fists clashed for a moment, the powerful shockwave sent Lanchi and Xiling flying. The loud explosion also caught the attention of Zhang Si who was not far away. Soon, as the smoke slowly cleared, at this point, only half of President Steele's body was left in the field. On the other hand, the Bull Demon Zombie next to him is really fine. Human, you've already lost. Give up your pointless resistance. I am the greatest zombie king this world has ever known. You're all going to die. What he doesn't realize is that Zhang Si, who is not far away, is about to arrive here. Here we go. Zhang Si has unlocked his second form again. With just a casual punch, he sent the new generation of zombie kings flying off the planet. Just now, the new generation of zombie king in order to be able to destroy the world. And he's turned on his third transformation. The little unweaned zombie at the beginning. At this moment, he has become an emotionless ultimate zombie king. But against such a fearsome opponent, Lanchi and the others never gave up. But in the face of absolute power, their efforts are in vain. The zombie king simply raised his hand and flicked it. President Steele's mecha was instantly disintegrated. Lanchi and Xiling were sent flying 100 meters into the air. Luckily, Zhang Si appeared in time to save them. But before they could react, the zombie king ordered go. Eat them. As his words finish, countless zombies rushed towards Lanchi and the others. Zhang Si was furious when he saw this. He then threw Lanchi and the two of them to the ground and yelled. Are you guys blind? Get the fuck out of here. The zombies were confused when they heard that. Just for a moment, all the zombies stopped moving. And at this moment, the zombie king was puzzled and asked, Who are you? Zhang Si slowly walked into the horde of corpses, and then asked rhetorically, You're the zombie king. So what am I? With his words just falling out of his mouth, the countless zombies all kneeled down. A few minutes. All the zombies were trampled under Zhang Si's feet. 
Why are you afraid to talk when you see my face? Hearing this the zombie king grinned, so we're kindred spirits, then he added, since there can only be one zombie king, so let's compare, that's it, he then punched Jiang Si in the face, but such a horrible punch was countered by Jiang Si's taunting words, have you not eaten, the zombie king who heard this was instantly enraged, however, before he could react, Jiang Si's fist had already landed on him, it's just a split second, the force sent the zombie king flying several dozen kilometers, and finally, it flew off the land. It hit the carrier with a bang. Dr. Jimming, who was watching the battle from the roof, was dumbfounded. How did such a horrible thing appear halfway through the battle? On the other hand, the zombie king on the other side laughed and said, Interesting. Finally, I've met someone who can fight. With that, he plunged into the sea. Then he lifted the submarine, which weighed tens of thousands of tons, into the air. With a loud boom, Jiang Si is drowning in dust. Meanwhile, on top of a building, Blackie is giving the chairman emergency treatment. But then Dog suddenly tapped him on the shoulder and said, Look over there, I think I can sense the king's breath. With the sound of his words, a figure instantly emerged from the center of the submarine, only to see Jiang Si fly into the sky after. Then he threw out a rope and wrapped it around the zombie king's neck. Then he pulls it violently to his side. Next, Si send. Jiang Si kicks him in the face. The terrifying force of the kick directly removed all of the zombie king's five senses. The zombie king is now completely enraged. He rushes to the ground and raises his submarine again. Then he swung it towards Jiang Si. With a loud boom, Jiang Si was knocked thousands of kilometers off an aircraft carrier. At that moment, Jiang Si's eyes turned cold and said, Do you like smashing things that much? What's the matter? You can smash it if you can. At the moment, he doesn't realize the gravity of the statement. And meanwhile, on the other side, after seeing how powerful this zombie king is, the president was hastily persuaded, let's evacuate quickly. What Dr. Jimming has researched is not something your king can deal with. But he hadn't even finished his sentence. And Blackett smiled contemptuously and said, Human, take a good look at this. No one in this world is a match for the great king, not even the gods. Because the king is invincible. As his words finished, Jiang Si on the carrier suddenly made a flash. In the next second, he was already in front of the zombie king. Just when the zombie king was still there surprised why Jiang Si's speed suddenly became faster. Jiang Si's fist had already slammed into his face. The terrifying force directly sent the zombie king flying off the planet. But the zombie king didn't even have time to catch his breath. A carrier is speeding toward him again. With a loud boom, the zombie king was smashed into the moon. No way. Jiang Si has turned into a handsome man, facing the onslaught of the new zombie king. He simply raised his hand at random. Next, Si send. The new zombie king is split into a million pieces. Just now. After that zombie king was smashed into the moon. At this moment, Xiao Xiao and the others in the arena have been completely dumbfounded. However, at this moment, the zombie king on the moon has a sudden burst of power. Next, Si send. The carrier is headed straight for Earth again, and with it, the zombie king's rage. Seeing this scene, Jiang Si immediately jumped on the spot. With a thud, he then rushes towards the zombie king. But then the zombie king suddenly entered the carrier's inner sanctum. He was destroying the nuclear reactor. Just as Jiang Si reaches the carrier, a loud boom was heard across the continent. Xiao Xiao who saw the scene was screaming for help. However, as that mushroom cloud slowly dissipated in the air, Jiang Si landed on the battleship in one piece. He then began to say in a mocking manner, That's not even enough damage to tickle me. The zombie king is completely speechless at this point. And then he began to build up his strength again. Next, Si send. His arm quickly lengthens and moves towards Jiang Si. It's just a split second. Jiang Si was sent flying into a tall building. And then the zombie king spoke again. Since neither of us can do anything about the other, why don't we work together to destroy the world? Meanwhile, on the chairman's side, after seeing the zombie king's terrifying strength, he then began to persuade again, we'd better run quickly. I know your king is strong when he transforms, but they can't just keep fighting. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. And then Blackie interrupts him and says, who says our great king can only transform once? The president who heard this was full of shock. He didn't realize that Jiang Si had a third form. The scene is once again on Jiang Si's side. 
He got up from the rubble and said, I'm not interested in destroying the world. Actually, I'd rather live in peace with the humans. Only a weakling would want to destroy the world. The zombie king was speechless when he heard this. He didn't realize that as a zombie, Jiang Si still wanted to make friends with humans. Just when he's wondering what's going on, Jiang Si suddenly transformed again, only to see his original gray skin slowly begin to break apart. With a roar of rage, in the next second, Jiang Si had transformed into a white-skinned young man. Lan Chi and the others who saw this scene had question marks on their faces. What the fuck is this? Is he a human or a zombie? On the other side of the room, Dog slapped the president in the face and said, Check it out. This is the real power of our king. When the chairman saw the white boy on the high floor, he was in a state of disbelief. No way, how did a zombie become a human? Just then the sky suddenly changed. In no time at all, it began to rain. The zombie king was confused when he saw Jung Si's transformation. Am I fighting a human? And then he went back up to find out what was going on. But as his fist was about to hit Jiang Si's face, the space around him suddenly changed. The raindrops that had been falling stopped in midair as if they were standing still. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly raised his hand and waved it. Next, Si send. The zombie king's body was split into countless pieces in an instant. At the same time, the raindrops flew backward. It's not just that. Even Xiling and the others are floating in the air. Even the fish in the ocean are affected. At this point, the zombie king, who was already only halfway through his body, was all fear. He didn't realize that the gap between himself and Jiang Si was so great. Jiang Si slowly walked up and said, You didn't know where to drink milk when I was the zombie king. It's over. The aliens have come to destroy the earth. But the moment the ship descended on earth, and it was blocked by an unimpressive teenager. Just now, Jiang Si, while changing into his third form, with a single casual hand raise, he sliced the zombie king into a million pieces. Even the gravity around it changed. Just then, a giant eye of wind has appeared in the sky. Xiao Xiao was in disbelief when she saw this. At the same time, Xiling and Lanchi fell out of the air. So it's the end of Jiang Si's spell. The gravity around us is back to normal. Xiling is dumbfounded at the moment. Is this still the power of a zombie? Suddenly, a hundred-ton whale falls heavily from the sky onto a tall building. Dr. Jamming was also shocked at the sight. It's the first time he's seen a zombie like this. At this point, the greenhorn next to him said, Ming, this kind of zombie is beyond our comprehension. We'd better run. But the divided zombie king is still not giving up. He leapt up from the ground. Then he shouted, Recovery! Next, cease end. The separated body begins to reorganize. And when it was restored to its original form, it said arrogantly, As the king of zombies, the basic function is undead. There's nothing you can do about it. Jiang Si only gave a soft O when he heard this. And then he raised his hand again. The zombie king was grabbed by Jiang Si's neck again. Looking at the zombie king in his hands like a little chicken, Jiang Si said with a disdainful look on his face, do you have some misconceptions about death? Actually, it's eternal life that's the most painful. The zombie king was clearly stunned when he heard this, then before he could even retort. The next moment, he saw Jiang Si's terrifying eyes. A split second, the zombie king's consciousness arrives in an unfamiliar environment. There were countless giant aircraft carriers in the sky above the earth. And on one of the main ships, a mech-clad alien gave the order. Countless mech warriors began to march toward Earth. This is the sixth time human civilization has been destroyed. But he hasn't had time to be happy. He saw a mysterious man on Earth suddenly transform. Next, cease end. All their carriers were in flames. And the mystery man, I don't know when he's already in outer space. Back in the present, the zombie king is seen to be in pain. Just for a little while, the zombie king has stopped moving in Jiang Si's hands. Let's take a guess. What exactly will Jiang Si do with this zombie king? Here we go. Jiang Si's back to his old, dumb self. But despite this, Xiling and Xia Xia are still afraid to go near him. Jiang Si in his third form just now. Just one look made the zombie king roll his eyes. Xiling, who was watching the battle from afar, didn't know what was going on. All they see is the zombie king being choked by Jiang Si and then instantly stops moving. Just then, Jiang Si suddenly let go of his hand. Next, cease end. The zombie king fell off the roof. With a loud thud, the zombie king is already dead. The president was in disbelief when he saw this. At that moment, 
Blackie explained. He should have been scared by the king's third form and his consciousness dissipated. And Dr. Jiming in the distance is also confused. He didn't expect the zombie king he had worked so hard on to die of fright just like that. At that moment, Greenhair hugged him and shouted, Ming, let's get out of here, or we won't be able to escape later. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. Zhang Si is already at his side. At this moment, Greenhair and the others were instantly dumbfounded. We've never shown our faces before. How did he know we were here? Looking at Jiang Si's displeased face, Green Hair was instantly paralyzed with fear. At this point, Jiang Si spoke up and said, Are you guys just going to fold your hands? Or do you want to follow along and meet the zombie king? When they hear this, they immediately raise their hands in surrender. Behind them, Dr. Jiming, though reluctant. But at this moment he could only bite his teeth and give up resistance. And so, Dr. Jiming, who had done so much harm, was finally captured alive by the Inhuman Academy. And after that, Xiao Xiao and Xiling see Jiang Si crouching there, wondering what he's thinking. So now Jiang Si is back to his cute self again. At this point, Xiling tells Xiao Xiao to go over and ask. She said that if she succeeded, she'd make her vice president. Xiao Xiao was reluctant. But Xiling pushed her from behind. Xiao Xiao has no choice but to walk over there. She says hello to Jiang Si. Just then, Jiang Si suddenly stood up violently. This startled Xiao Xiao, who was next to her. But then Jiang Si simply spoke up and said, I still want a dress that won't break. Xiao Xiao was relieved to hear that. Now Jiang Si seems to be no longer dangerous at all. And with that, she asked as she walked, Do you remember what just happened? Jiang Si rubbed his chin after hearing that. The memory of what happened just now is a little fuzzy. But I've had to beat up a lot of strange guys like this before. The screen comes back to the non-human side of the academy. Only to see the green hair in the escort car was looking at the side with a strange face. It turns out that Dr. Jimming is grinning with an evil look on his face right now. Oh, I didn't realize there was such a powerful species. Jiang Si, right? I must get your genes. And then create a being more powerful than you. Here we go. Jiang Si's wish has finally come true. Not only did he allow his citizens to live in peace and happiness, even human armies lined up to escort them. Just now, ever since Dr. Jiming was captured by Jiang Si, he's been appointed president of the first society by the humans. He was also given the right to run a city. But Jiang Si asked if he could have the city of H, where Dr. Jiming was. The heads of state who heard this questioned, what's so great about that shithole of a place? Yet Jiang Si stands by his choice. He also said that he would definitely manage the city of H. In this way, Jiang Si not only became the president, he also received a letter of appointment from the city of H. But when the non-human academy learned of this, very irritated, Xiling, next to him, also has a headache. This Jiang Si, I really don't understand what he is thinking. It turns out that the reason why Jiang Si wants H City, that's because he's got tons of zombie citizens, to be able to help them move as quickly as possible. Jiang Si also ordered his army to protect the streets. At this point, Jiang Si, high above the building, looks at his citizens with a sense of relief. At that moment, Blackie came up and reported, My lord, as you requested, all the citizens have moved in. Well, that's good. Now they'll finally have a home of their own. Suddenly, the human legions began to drill in the city. The little zombie who saw this immediately asked, They're not going to hit us with a flaming dick, are they? One of the soldiers heard this and then said, You are citizens of President Jiang Si, then you're the ones we'll protect from now on. The little zombie who heard this was speechless. What is wrong with these people? And on the rooftop at this point, Jiang Si's minions are also excited. I didn't realize zombies had their own city. At this point, Jiang Si spoke up, saying, Sometimes the continuation of a race doesn't have to depend on war. With that, he left the rooftop without looking back. Blackie saw the boss leaving. Then he hurriedly asked, A Jew has been hanging for half a month already. Can we put him down now? Jiang Si sniffed and waved his hand to indicate. Just let him hang on. And with that, poor A Jew is left hanging in the municipal building with a look of resignation on his face. Woo woo, King, I was wrong. I won't dare again. I'm getting dried out in the sun. King, please let me down. I promise I won't dare next time. And with that, Mr. Jiang Si's first season comes to an end. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and enjoying. Next up is a preview of the second season. Xiling is attacked by a mysterious creature. That powerful force directly crippled her. 
It was hard for her to recover, but she realized. Her attacker was the always timid Xiao Xiao. We'll see you next time for more exciting episodes. Do you know how scary it is to be bitten by a Jun Si? Not only can her head rotate 360 degrees, and even after being split in half, she can still recover. Just now, Xiao Xiao is trying to get the vice president position. She challenged Xiling, who was the president, and Xiling was not expecting it. After the mutation, Xiao Xiao's combat power is surprisingly high. Just a few simple collisions have left her with some serious internal injuries. At this point, Xiao Xiao also said mockingly, Sister Xiling, I haven't used my full strength yet. Xiling can't hold back when he hears this. And then she instantly moved behind Xiao Xiao. But at that moment, Xiao Xiao's head suddenly does a 360 degree spin. This startles Xiling, who was about to attack. She then does a backward somersault. With her hands on the ground, she asked, Are you still human? However, before she could even finish her sentence, Xiao Xiao has already turned around and raised her machine gun. Xiling rushes to the back when he sees this. The sound of machine gun fire was heard. Ha ha ha, Xiling. Now I think I'm ready for the presidency. Xiling was furious when he heard this. With that, she lent her feet to the ground. And then she rushed towards Xiao Xiao like a sword. With a dominating horizontal slash, Xiao Xiao's machine gun was instantly reduced to scrap metal. But the tough-talking Xiao Xiao is still taunting her. Sister, is that all you've got? But she hasn't even finished her sentence yet. Xiling had already cut her in half with a single slash. Xiling was shocked to see this. Why isn't she hiding? But Xiao Xiao, who was split in half, wasn't afraid. Instead, she laughed out loud. And then the weirdest thing happened. The body that was originally split in half began to recover slowly. In no time at all, Xiao Xiao was like a normal person again. Xiling is in a state of shock. What the hell did this Jiang Si guy do to Xiao Xiao's body? At this point Xiao Xiao opened her mouth again and asked, How's it going? With my current strength, I should have no problem becoming a president, right? With that, she threw a violent punch towards Xiling. With a loud boom, Xiling was instantly knocked off the wall and out of commission. Xiling is losing. Xiao Xiao transformed back into her human form. Xiling, are you okay? Did I just hit you too hard? Tell me the truth. Did you turn into a zombie after being bitten by Jun Si or not? No, I didn't. Wasn't it just checked in the lab yesterday? All the cells in my body are completely normal. And what about this 360 degree turn of the head and the regeneration of your body? Xiao Xiao then explains. I can now control my transformation freely. And when the mood strikes, it can also be enhanced by injections of stimulants. And without any side effects. Xiling was speechless when he heard this. I'd love to have such a powerful transformation effect. She then pulled Xiao Xiao away from her. And then she's ready to go find Zhang Si. Let him bite her, too. It's over. Zhang Si is biting human again. But the girl who was bitten was not angry. Instead, she's enjoying herself. Just now, Xiling, after seeing Xiao Xiao's shape-shifting ability, she immediately took a plane to H-City. And in the city hall, at this time, Jiang Si is assigning jobs to his minions. First up is the financial power of the city of H. Jiang Si's first thought was Blackie. From now on, you're the head of the finance bureau. You're in charge of the family's money. As his words finished, the door to the conference room was kicked in with a bang. Looking at a panting Xiling, Jiang Si asked curiously, Are there any instructions? However, he hadn't even finished his sentence yet. Xiling running towards him in a hurry. Just when Jiang Si was still in a daze, Xiling suddenly opened his mouth. Then she forced Jiang Si to bite her. When it's all over, Xiling left the conference room without looking back, but she had just left the municipal building. The aide rushed up to remind President Xiling that, You're being reckless. Have you forgotten that Jiang Si can control people's minds? What if he controls you to do something unspeakable? And yet Xiling, who heard this, was more than sorry. Instead, she also said, to have such power. Even if he controls me to sing, dance and play basketball, that's fine. But what they don't know is, at this moment, Jiang Si is still in a state of confusion. But with his careful planning, the city of H is finally slowly getting on the right track. Citizens have developed a variety of stores while living and working in peace. Like a barber store for zombies. Or a zombie real estate company. Even a zombie driving school has opened. It's just that getting a driver's license is a little more difficult for zombies. At the moment, 
Jiang Si is looking at his city with a sense of relief. The dream of so many years has finally come true. But what he didn't know was, an even bigger crisis is looming. One-eyed woman studying Jiang Si's data. I don't get it. Why would the Academy of Abnormal Humans want a guy like that for mayor? At this point, the secretary next to her stepped forward and said, Inspector Chen, I heard the Grand President of the Stainless Steel Academy say, That Jiang Si seems to be a zombie. But the one-eyed woman who heard this was unimpressed. It's not like we haven't seen them slandering each other before. Though I don't believe they'd let a zombie become mayor. But this guy named Jiang Si really doesn't sit well with me. Come on, let's go to H City and find out. What's the origin of this Jiang Si? Here we go. Mr. Jiang Si has unlocked a new character again. This woman not only has white skin and long legs, she even seems to have a long history with Jiang Si. Just now, over a glacier in the North Pole. Suddenly a helicopter came through here. Not only that, the humans have sent a giant cruise ship. Soon, the expedition arrived at its current destination. At this point the doctor asked, I heard that ancient corpse are suspected to have been found here. And I've heard from the scouting party. The corpse was buried 500 meters under ice. If we can get it out in one piece this time, that would be a great discovery. And so, with the help of the crane, the body was soon hoisted up. As an archaeologist, it's the first time he's found such a thing, with the crane slowly pulling the ice out of the ground. A looming body also finally emerges in front of the crowd. From the looks of it, it appears to be a young girl. Just as Dr. Chi is shocked by this discovery, the assistant next to him is suddenly covered by a man's mouth. The next thing you know, the man is biting down on his neck. The doctor was shocked at the sight. But before he could react, he was kicked to the ground by another man. It turns out that the one who attacked them was a mysterious organization, and their target was the frozen corpse. The man in the lead is seen smashing the ice away with an ice pick, and then a bizarre scene happened. The body was dry, but now it's alive again. The vampire next to her rushed to drape his coat over her. They then kneeled before the woman and cried out, Greetings, Lord Vampire King. May my king be forever young. The vampire king who heard this did not think much of it. Instead, he just opened his mouth and asked, Is that stupid bastard named Jiang still alive now? What was it that caused Jiang Si to instantly change form? Just now, Jiang Si was still enjoying his afternoon tea in H City. But he was suddenly summoned by Xiling to the academy's headquarters. This is all because of a strange incident at the main academy. A researcher was exploring the North Pole when he suddenly mutated killed the entire team. Xiling and Lanchi were confused when they saw this. This guy doesn't look like a zombie. They had no choice but to find Jiang Si, a professional. Soon enough, Jiang Si arrived in the city of technology. But just as he entered, he was surprised by what he saw. It's because no one here is normal. Just then, a man carrying a stick came to Jiang Si and said, Hello. I'm the hard president of Steel Stick Academy. I heard you are the one who captured Dr. Jiming. Jiang Si immediately went up to him and shook his hand and said, yes, but when they've only just separated, President Hardy thought to himself with a sneer, what a little piece of trash, it's not even worth my time. But just when the other presidents thought Jiang Si was weak, President Steele, however, hid himself in a corner and spat out, should have known he was here, I'm just rotting at home and not coming over. The screen came to Jiang Si's side again, he's now in the lab, and yet, for something like recognizing a species, Jiang Si is obviously confused as well. But when he saw two holes in the man's neck, the long-lost memories suddenly came flooding back. Xiling, who was next to Yi, stepped forward and asked, How's it going? Do you see something? Just then, the researcher suddenly hissed. But when he saw Jiang Si's face, he was good again in an instant. It turns out that Jiang Si has already transformed into his second form. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize it was a blood. After saying that, a terrifying aura began to erupt around him. Just for a moment, Lanchi and others were all boomed and flew out. At this point, Jiang Si spoke again, I remember. Shouldn't this race be long extinct? Meanwhile, on an island in the Arctic, a man knelt on the ground and said, Your Majesty, that Jiang Si is not only alive, he's also living a good life. I remember after he destroyed the last human civilization, and now he's mixing with humans. The vampire king who heard this immediately said angrily, very well, I would be more or less lonely if you were gone, but this time I won't lose to you. 
What is it that makes even Jiang Si frown? Just now, Jiang Si, after realizing the appearance of the bloods, he instantly transformed into his second form. The terrifying aura directly blew many presidents away, especially President Bang. And he almost had internal injuries from the shock. And then, while the crowd was still baffled. At this point, Jiang Si suddenly laughed and said, Interesting. I remember the bloods should have been destroyed by me a thousand years ago. After saying, he then pinched the researcher and asked, Come on, tell me where Zhu Xiaohong, the one who likes to drug me, is now? But how would he know the whereabouts of the Vampire King when he's just turned into a vampire? He didn't get the information he wanted. Zhang Si then returns to his original form. And in the hall, at the moment, President Stick still doesn't think that Zhang Si was responsible for what happened just now. Only President Steele, who was hiding on the sidelines, was thinking with a look of horror. I should have stayed at home and not gone out. Just then, Jiang Si finally came out of the room. Seeing this, Xiling and the others rushed forward and asked, Any special findings? Jiang Si said, It's best if you guys stay out these days. After speaking, he just started frowning there for a second. Xiling and Xiao Xiao felt bad when they saw the scene. But the next moment, Jiang Si rubbed his head and said, I've forgotten what just happened. I can't help it. Jiang Si always forgets something when he switches forms. Meanwhile, on the other side, next to a certain large villa, inside a cobwebbed alley, Xiao Hong, the vampire king, is speechless at the moment. Just then, a coin suddenly landed next to them. Turns out the aborigines thought they were beggars, so they gave them a dollar. Seeing this, Lan Ling immediately picked up the money with glowing eyes. But the vampire king is not happy about it. You're all in such a state. Why did you wake me up? But she hasn't even finished her sentence. The girl next to her cried out, Woo woo, king, do you know how we've spent the last 1000 years? After you lost the battle with Jiang Si, there was no place for us bloods. Lan Ling and I faked our own deaths to avoid him. And from that moment on, and we've been hiding all over the place. Such an alleyway. We don't even know exactly how many years we stayed. The vampire king was instantly enraged. I didn't realize how miserable the bloods are now. But then she sighed and said, it's no use summoning me, because I can't be Jiang Si. At this point, Lan Ling, who was next to me, suddenly interjected. King, the reason we woke you up was because we got an important piece of information. We have discovered a special human being. He may be able to help you defeat Jiang Si. The girl next to her chimed in, yes, that man may give us hope. The vampire king who heard this was instantly interested. With that she asked, who is it? At this point Lan Ling pulls a wanted notice out of his pocket. That's right. It's the same Dr. Jimming who's in the slammer. At this time, a prison hidden 3,000 meters underground. Not only was it equipped with all kinds of high-tech weapons, there's even a president at the entrance to each floor. And yet such a prison was built to hold just one human being. It turns out that after the Blood Queen was awakened a thousand years ago, only to find out that her nemesis from back then is still alive. Good thing her subordinate said. There is a human who can help her defeat Jiang Si, and that human is the same Dr. Jiaming who created a generation of zombie kings. But at the moment, Dr. Jiaming is still locked up in a prison. Seeing this scene, Jiang Si couldn't help but ask, why don't you just kill him? Xiling says he can't kill him yet. Not only does that guy have a lot of undercover agents around us, and there's a lot of research that hasn't been done yet. Hearing this, Jiang Si then asked again, what if that guy runs away? But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. The president next to him laughed and said it was impossible. Then he turned around and said, since you're the one who captured him, then I'll show you. After a while, so they took a helicopter to a valley in the middle of nowhere. President Stick says, Dr. Jimming is being held in this prison 3,000 meters underground. It would take us at least two and a half hours to get down there by elevator. Not to mention security. Not only are there high-tech weapons, and each floor is guarded by a powerful president. It's a prison. Dr. Jimming couldn't escape even if he had three heads and six arms. And, we also strapped a giant detonator to his body. But anyone who comes near him, then the detonator will detonate immediately. Dead or alive. Dr. Jimming will never leave this prison in his lifetime. Jiang Si was in a cold sweat when he heard this. The human race is too cruel. He then turned around and said that he had to leave first. After all, Jiang Si in his original state was infinitely close to normal human thinking. Meanwhile, in an alleyway, 
When the Blood Queen saw their conversation, they felt a chill down their backs. One thousand years have passed. Has mankind evolved to such horrors? The scene returns to the prison side again. The president stick saying in a leisurely manner, Your little boyfriend is about to get in trouble. As far as I can tell, President Steele tipped off Inspector Chen. He said President Jiang Si is a zombie, and that he built a city of zombies. Xiling is flabbergasted when he hears this. She then asked him why he was telling her this. President Steele said, Zombies don't interest him at all, because in his eyes, only the strong can get his attention. However, on the human side of the city, Jiang Si is still shopping happily without any knowledge of it. What is it that even scares Jiang Si? As a zombie he became a human president. He even built a zombie city with honor. A disgruntled President Steele then ratted to his superiors. Upon hearing the news, Inspector Chen immediately decided to investigate. Luckily, Mr. Bang found out about it. He admires Jiang Si as an opponent. He then told Xiling the news. At the same time, Jiang Si, who is still unaware of the situation, is still strolling around. At that moment, his cell phone suddenly rang. Xiling called her as soon as he got the news. She told Jiang Si, due to President Steele's whistle blowing, at this moment, Inspector Chen is on his way to H City. If she finds out that what President Steele said was true, then you're not going to be able to hold on to your job as president. Jiang Si broke out in a cold sweat when he heard this, and then he said, I'm actually a human. But the next moment, Xiling cursed. Don't think I don't know what those things in your city are. And with that, she hung up the phone. Now Jiang Si is completely panicked. It's over. Are we going back to the ruins again? No way. I must not let the citizens down on me. Just when Jiang Si was worried about what to do next, a nearby makeup store suddenly caught his attention. Meanwhile, inside the underground prison, Dr. Jimming is thinking about something at the moment. At this moment, the delivery guy comes in with his cart. At this point, Green Hair cried out in fear, it's over. We're going to die. Yet Dr. Jimming is laughing. Jiang Si. I must get your jeans. Ming, what are you talking about? Aren't we about to be executed? It won't happen. Don't worry. They're not going to kill us until they get my research. And I had it hidden in a place no one knew about before I was captured. At this point, Green Hair said, Jiang Si is too powerful. Even if we get his genes, we can't beat him. Dr. Jiming smiled evilly and said, We need a strong body to serve as a vessel. In time, I will naturally be able to research a more powerful being. Ming, we're stuck here, not to mention research. Even if you want to give a love to the video, it is difficult. Dr. Jimming, who heard this, suddenly went quiet. The staff then arrived with the food delivery robot. Unexpectedly, Dr. Jimming not only didn't resist, but also was also particularly cooperative in eating the food delivered by the robot. The green hair is baffled by this sight. Why is Ming suddenly so obedient? It turns out the delivery guy was actually a gap he planted. And the purpose of this was to put a bug in his mouth. And then when the delivery man walked out of the prison, Dr. Jimming immediately asked, Where is the zombie king's body being held now? Report to the doctor. He's being held in the mountain lab on the 200th floor. And there are two presidents guarding the laboratory. Good. From now on, you can follow my plan. Do you know what a zombie would look like in makeup? When the hollow-eyed blackie puts on contacts, he instantly transforms into a young and handsome guy. The weathered zombie mother became a beautiful young woman after dressing up a bit. And the reason why they did it. It's all because Miss Chen is coming to H for a visit. To avoid the discovery of the zombie's identity. So Jiang Si came up with this makeup solution. At this time, inside the government building in H City, countless trucks are falling from the sky. It turns out that all of these are makeup items that Jiang Si purchased from the next city over. When Jiang Si told Blackie about the seriousness of the situation, Hei immediately asked Dog to notify the heads of the districts. Tell them to come over and collect their makeup props. Just for a moment, the minions in the districts were collecting their trucks for the citizens to never return to the city of ruins. This time, they'll have to do their best. Inside the city hall, Dog asked suspiciously, Will this makeup really work? Blackie says he's not sure. But if the king arranged it, then there must be a reason for it. That's it. Zombies in various areas have begun to act. At this point, a baby mama came with her son to pick up the makeup items. For someone who loved beauty before she was born, it's too easy to put on makeup. 
The son is curious about his mom's strange behavior and says he wants to do the same. But when his mom turned her head, she almost scared him. That's not makeup. It's a head transplant. Soon all the citizens have completed their makeovers. Afterwards, when Ameo and Alung went back to the office to report, suddenly, they were startled by Blackie and Dog, who were wearing makeup. FK. You guys are going too fast. And, Dog. Are you sure you're gonna be useful with all that makeup on? They then stated what if they don't even have a face? There's no way. Hey could only make them temporarily disguised as pets. But the strange thing is, they've been waiting at the airport for half a day, but there's no sign of Miss Chen. It turns out Miss Chen knew her whereabouts would be compromised, so she took her subordinates to H-City by train. At that moment, one of her subordinates asked in a low voice, Why doesn't Miss Chen like Jiang Si? The companion said, Miss Chen despises the weak and cowardly. And except for the minister, Chen Touch doesn't like anyone. When he heard that, Miss Chen immediately turned around and said, No need to sneak around and talk behind my back. What's wrong with me just liking the minister? Ever since the minister liberalized his power, anyone can be the president. In my heart, only a being like the minister Sama can lead us humans to a more prosperous future. But what she doesn't realize is, isn't the minister she misses the one she hates most at this time, Jiang Si? Just now, Miss Chen is trying to oust Jiang Si from power. They secretly took the train to H City. And Blackie, who had no idea, was still waiting at the airport. They wondered, didn't they say that Inspector Chen would be inspecting today? Why isn't he here yet? On the other side, two of Chen's men have begun investigating the citizens of the street. They first came to a convenience store. But they found that all the food sold inside was egg-based food. When he asked the owner if he could give the video a red heart, the boss shakes his head nervously. At this moment the investigator is confused. The author made such a nice video you don't even support it? Then they found a passerby and prepared to interview him. But just then, the man's arm suddenly fell to the ground with a thud. The investigators were dumbfounded by the sight. What's wrong with this guy? But he hasn't even had time to think about it. The man picks up the arm on the ground and runs off in a huff. Before leaving, he explained. It's just his prosthetic limb. This maneuver is what made the crowd stupefied. Is there not a single normal person in the city of H? Next to him, Inspector Chen is also angry. This Jiang Si isn't building a city of psychopaths, is he? Then she shouted at her subordinates. Record them all. This is all material for the removal of President Jiang Si. The scene is once again inside the municipal office, only to see Jiang Si crouching there muttering about something. Seeing this, Dog rushes forward and asks, What's going on? How did the king get like this? The soldier rushed to say that he didn't know. President Jiang Si seems to have been talking nonsense since he ate breakfast. He's still shaking. Dog was shocked when he heard this. Then he picked him up and asked, Tell me what you gave the king to eat. The soldier was shocked by Dog's maneuver. He then rushed to say that he was just making a plate of scrambled eggs with chili for President Jiang Si. At this, Dog is in a cold sweat. Zombie can't eat chili peppers. It's just that chili peppers turn him on. And it lasts for a month. The other side. At this moment, Blackie, who was still waiting at the airport, suddenly received a call from Dog. He was also horrified when he learned that the king had eaten the chili pepper by mistake. At this point, Aegon, who was next to him, asked, Wait, the great king isn't going to slaughter the inspectors, is he? Blackie sniffed and frowned. If something like this really happened, I don't think we're gonna be able to stay in this city much longer. The scene comes to Chen again. They're still searching for evidence. But just then, a heavy truck just dropped out of the sky. With a loud boom. The truck smashed right in front of them. Before they could react, Jiang Si suddenly fell from the sky again and trampled the truck into scrap metal with a bang. Miss Chen was dumbfounded at the sight. What just happened? At this point, Jiang Si suddenly smiles playfully. Chen, right? Next, let me show you around. At this point, the two assistants in the field are dumbfounded. What just happened? After regaining consciousness, the three people looked at Jiang Si in front of them with confused expressions on their faces. At this point, Ms. Chen asked with a trembling voice. You, who are you? Jiang Si said with an evil smile, What? Have you forgotten me so soon? 
I'm the Jiang Si you're looking for. The people who heard this were dumbfounded on the spot. Jiang Si doesn't look like this on his profile. At this point, Jiang Si jumps down and says he's just taking off his mask. And then he snapped his fingers and said, Shen, you've come a long way. I've prepared some gifts for you. With his words, citizens then offered up their best scrambled eggs. Don't worry, we're all law-abiding citizens. We never eat people. With that, Jiang Si lifted Chen in his hands. Now that we're done with the gifts, I'll give Chen a tour of the city. With a bang, Jiang Si had already taken off from where he was and flew into the air. In just a moment, they were 10,000 meters in the air. The two assistants were dumbfounded by the sight. When they got their wits about them, they hurriedly stopped a cab and chased after him. At this point, Jiang Si, who had been flying around for two and a half laps, got tired of the game. Then he landed with a thud on top of the tallest building in the city center. Look at this. This is the H city I built. Tens of millions of people live here. They all love this city. We have more than just a public company here. It also solved many people's employment problems. We pay hundreds of billions of dollars a year in taxes alone. Next I'll take you to policing. John C. was dragging Inspector Chen into the middle of the street while he was talking. A truck was already in the middle of the road, and it was too late to hit the brakes. We're about to hit Jiang Si. There's a thud. We see Jiang Si kick the bumper of the van. The next second. And the van plunged right into that tall building. On the other side, Blackie, who was waiting at the airport, also noticed the movement over here. Then he hurriedly rushed forward and rescued the driver. However, the two assistants, who had only just arrived at that moment, were dumbfounded. Everyone in this city is mentally unbalanced, right? As for Chen himself, he was so shocked by Jiang Si's behavior that his jaw dropped to the ground. At this point, Jiang Si spoke up again and said, Don't worry. The driver won't die. I've got a lot of guys with a lot of skills. I will not let any citizen die in vain. And with that, he threw Chen forward. The two assistants rushed to her aid. At this time Jiang Si turned around and continued. I know what you're here for. This time I will let you go back safely. No matter what happens next, I just want to tell you one thing. I'm going to run this city, and no one is going to stop me. Just now. Jiang Si, after warning Chen and the three of them. This aura instantly scares them to the point of silence. For a moment, the entire street was terrifyingly quiet. At that moment, one of the assistants whispered, Why don't we just go back? Yeah, yeah. Let's get out of here. This guy doesn't look like he's going to be easy. For a moment there I almost thought he was the minister. And, which one of the BTs actually said that Jiang Si was cowardly and weak? I'll kill him when I get back. That's it. Jiang Si reminds them as he walks back, go back before I change my mind. But Jiang Si had only just finished speaking. And Chen stopped him. I recognize your ability to run the city, but that doesn't make you qualified to be president. Because as a president, you need to be able to fight in addition to your management skills. And right now all I see is your ability to manage a city, but doesn't see that you have the power to protect the city. As soon as these words came out, Blackie and the rest of them changed their faces. Just as Chen wanted to continue, they were rushing up and covering her mouth. But their actions were ultimately in vain. At this point Jiang Si turned back and asked, Are you trying to see my true strength? Hearing this, Xiao Hei and the others were stunned on the spot. It's over. This woman is a scourge. It didn't take long for them to arrive at a nearby stretch of sea. At this point Dog whispered. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Zhang Si is looking at the sea without saying a word. At this moment, Miss Chen asked curiously. What did you bring us here for? But before she could finish her sentence, she saw the horrible reflection of Zhang Si on the surface of the sea. And Dog, who was next to her, stepped forward and warned, You'll be responsible for anything that happens. Chen was puzzled by this. At that moment, the assistant next to him suddenly noticed the rocks floating around him. Immediately after that more and more gravel begins to rise around Zhang Si. In the next second, Zhang Si's third form was fully revealed to the crowd. The trio of inspectors were completely stunned by this scene. What's going on here? And why does this back look a bit like the minister? Do you know how strong Jiang Si's third form is? He just made a random bounce and instantly arrived on Saturn 1.3 billion kilometers away. Just now. 
Miss Chin questioned Jiang Si's inability to protect the citizens. So Jiang Si took them to the beach. And then he turned on his third form. In an instant, the originally choppy waves are instantly frozen in place. Even the surrounding sand and rocks began to float up into the air. The few people who saw the scene were instantly surprised. But before they could think about it, Jiang Si suddenly jumps in place. The force was so strong that it lifted Chen directly off the ground. But when they came to their senses, Jiang Si had already disappeared. At that moment, Dog takes out an astronomical telescope and puts it in front of them. Inspector Chin curiously steps forward to take a look. She was instantly shocked and her face went white. Just because far above Saturn, 1.3 billion kilometers away from Earth. And there's Jiang Si looking up at her right now. This is outrageous. Is your president still human or not? Just as a few people are surprised. At this time, Jiang Si and Saturn continued to accumulate strength. He clenches his right hand into a fist. With a steely gaze toward Earth. Next, Si send. Jiang Si swings his fist violently into the air. Seeing this scene, Dog and the others were suddenly changed in color. It was because Jiang Si's punch had punched a hole through the ocean. A split second. Thousands of meters of tsunamis come crashing down on the city. And Dog, on the beach, rushes to get in front of the crowd. At this time, Xiao Xiao who was far away from the headquarters, they also felt the fluctuation of this time. When they saw the tsunami outside the city, they had a look of disbelief on their faces. Then they rushed to activate the first level of protection. But the tsunami was still too strong to be stopped. At this time, suddenly there's another loud bang on the beach. That's right. It was Jiang Si who jumped back from Saturn. How's that? See what I'm capable of now? Am I qualified enough to protect the citizens? Just now. Jiang Si jumped back from Saturn after punching through an ocean. Chen is now completely stunned. After that, she was sent to a cab by Blackie and the others for some reason. It took them a while to get over it. This Jiang Si is not human. Watching the cab as it slowly leaves, and then Dog suddenly asks. They're not going to take the city back, are they? Hey thinks for a moment. Then he said awkwardly, I don't think they will take it back. As expected, Mr. Chen has been in a state of insanity ever since he returned. Jiang Si's administration of H-City was also naturally preserved. Meanwhile on the other side, inside the Skink prison. At this point, several people are in the lab discussing a corpse. The person they were discussing was the new zombie king who was scared to death by Jiang Si. But what they didn't notice was, one of the researchers next to them is secretly mixing something there. It turns out that this researcher is Dr. Jiming's mole in the prison. He is now mixing the potion as Dr. Jiming told him to. Dr. Jiming knows that the new zombie king's flesh is still there. So, now, if inject this potion into his body, it will definitely awaken him. And then just as the guards were about to go out on patrol, the mole suddenly stabbed the new zombie king with the syringe in his hand. The guards were enraged at the sight. Then with a thud he pinned the traitor to the wall. What did you just do to that body? But he hadn't even finished his sentence. And then the new zombie king's eyes suddenly snapped open. This is followed by a loud explosion. The sound immediately caught President Bang's attention. What's the situation? What just happened? That's when. And the alarms started going off throughout the prison. That's right. It's the new zombie king. And now he's come back to life. At this point Dr. Jimming suddenly shouted at him. Kill all the guards and get me out of here. I will make you stronger than Zhang Si. Here we go. The Queen of the Bloods has come to rob the prison. Just now, someone on a civilian airliner in the sky suddenly kicked the door off the airliner. The next thing you know, there's a man on board with a gun shouting, Nobody move. I won't hurt anyone as long as you do what I say. And with that, the airliner headed towards the skink prison at the bandit's direction. At this time, the Blood Queen suddenly appeared at the hatch. Honorable King. They've rigged Dr. Jimming's body with a self-destruct program. Should we work out a detailed plan? The Queen said, no, without looking back. This is just human scheme. Can't trouble me. And with that, she took her men and leapt from 10,000 meters in the air. But just as they were about to approach the cave entrance, the new zombie king in the prison has just woken up. And the guards in the face of this are horrified. It's a good thing the president of the steel rod reacted in time. He quickly organizes a defense. 
But these ordinary weapons have no effect on the Strigoi. At that moment, one of the guards shouted, Don't panic. We still have 30 presidents left. They can't get in. Sure enough, as the commotion on the top floor gets louder and louder. At that moment, President Steele and President Day reacted from the 500th floor. But they're not good enough to take on the Queen of the Bloods. And 3,000 floors below, a guard was smashed into the wall. Turns out it's the awakened new zombie king who's trying to get out of here. But that's when Dr. Jiming told him on his communicator, get me out of here. I can help you defeat Jiang Si. The new zombie king who heard this was disdainful. He also said, I want to kill both you and Jiang Si. Then Dr. Jiming smiled and said, I created you. You can live if I want you to. But if I want you to die, you will never survive. The new zombie king is in a panic. After all, it was Dr. Jiming who brought him back to life. At this point Dr. Jiming continued, Don't worry. I won't let you die. As long as you help me fulfill my dream. I'm gonna get my ass kicked right in front of you. Oh, yeah. You humans are crazier than us zombies. Go ahead. What can I do for you? It's simple. Get me out of here. I promise to make you as powerful as Jung Si. Do you know how strong the Queen of the Blood is? In just one look, the three presidents were instantly knocked to the ground. Just now, the Queen of the Bloods went so far as to bring her men down to the Skink prison in order to get Dr. Jiming's help. A split second. The entire underground prison begins to rumble with a loud bang. At this moment, the three presidents who happened to be in the prison rushed up. When they saw that the intruder was a woman, they were stunned. What the hell? What does this woman do? Why can't I feel any of her energy fluctuations? At this point, the Blood Queen walked up and said to them, I'll give you two choices. Either you hand over Dr. Jiming and I'll let you go unharmed. Or I will. And yet she hasn't even finished her sentence. At this point, President Bang can't help but rush up. And then behind him, President Day and President Gang also took the opportunity to attack from the side. But with a loud boom, President Bang was left with only one arm. The president was lying on the ground in a daze. What just happened? Just then the guards finally arrived. But against the humans' hot weapons, the Queen of the Bloods didn't even try to dodge it. And then there was the sound of machine guns going off. But the bullets couldn't do any damage to the Queen of the Bloods. Even when the bullet hit her eyeball, there was no reaction at all. At this point the subordinate next to her suddenly raised a hand at the guards. With a loud boom after. All of the guards were instantly drowned in flames. Meanwhile, 3,000 floors below ground. Dr. Jiming has been rescued. At this point, Greenhair asked curiously. Didn't it say it would explode if you touched it? How are we okay? Oh, there's a two-second window when the power goes out. You think you can trap me with this piece of shit? This is ridiculous. And then. And they were escorted out of the prison by the new zombie king. Ming, he's already so strong do we need to keep making him stronger? I'm afraid something might go wrong then. There's no way. There is no better vessel in the world. But just as they were about to evacuate, the new zombie king, however, suddenly freezes. Because at this moment, the guards outside have all been killed at some point. Greenhair, who saw this scene, was also in disbelief. Who the hell did this? At this time, the Blood Queen suddenly fell from the sky. Greetings, Dr. Jiming. This loser who can't even beat Jiang Si's second form doesn't deserve to be your vessel. Hearing this the new zombie king is stuttering, wanting to step forward and teach her a lesson. At this point the Blood Queen continued. Instead of wasting your energy on that piece of shit, why don't you study my body? It's over. The new zombie king is scared to death again. Just now. The new zombie king has just rescued Dr. Jiming when he encounters the Blood Queen, who has come to rob the prison. And she's screaming that he's a piece of shit. This is the kind of thing that makes the new zombie king angry. Then he asked, so you are better than me? You're a piece of trash and you still want to compete with me? You're not even qualified. If you don't believe me, you can come here and try. With the Blood Queen's words, the new zombie king rushes towards her with great speed. But the next second, the new zombie king was punched in the face by the Blood Queen before he even had a chance to strike. The people who saw this scene had unbelievable expressions on their faces. They know the strength of the new zombie king. But he didn't expect that he wouldn't even have room to fight back in front of this woman. Then I heard a loud boom. The new zombie king was sent flying hundreds of meters. 
When the new zombie king recovered, he muttered, damn it. It's the same force as Zhang Si's earlier attack. At this moment, he suddenly notices the explosive device next to him. He rushes towards it. If you're so arrogant, then you can all die. After saying, the new zombie king then slammed his fist into the nuclear detonation device. But just as the device was about to explode, the blood queen suddenly raised her hand at him. In the next instant, the nuclear device that was supposed to destroy everything was magically restored to its original state. The people who saw this scene were completely dumbfounded. What's going on here? Time reversal? That's it. The Blood Queen suddenly flicked her hand again. The big nuclear device came crashing down towards the ground in an instant. With a poof, the new zombie king was instantly crushed into a meatloaf. The few people watching the battle at this moment could no longer be described as shocked. This woman is also too strong, right? At this point, the Queen of Blood spoke again, how dare you challenge Jiang Si with such a small amount of strength? Who gave you the courage? And then the Blood Queen raised her hand again. And the next second, the new zombie king is in her hands. What did Jiang Si do to you before? The new zombie king is stunned when he hears this. But then he gave a look of fear. It was only because he was experiencing the same horror that Jiang Si had before. Then he cried out in horror. You, you and Jiang Si are both products of a previous civilization. And then he was scared to death in the dark. The Blood Queen's eyes returned to their original state. Then she threw the new zombie king in her hands like a dead pig on the ground. The poor new zombie king is scared to death again. Here we go. Jiang Si is finally ready for a date. Just now. The Blood Queen scared the new zombie king, who had just regained his senses for less than two and a half minutes, to death with just one look. The President and President Bang were stunned when they saw the scene. Why is there another character as perverted as Jiang Si? On the other side of the room, Dr. Jemming and Greenhair are also speechless. This woman is not as easy to control as the new zombie king. At this point, the Blood Queen spoke up and asked, Dear Dr. Jemming, am I now qualified to be your vessel? Dr. Jemming who hears this is first stunned. Then he grimaced and said, Of course. And added, I will make you the most powerful being in the world. Meanwhile, in the city of H, Xiling rushed into the city hall. Seeing this, Dog hurriedly stopped in front of her and said, that, you can't go in yet. Our king is in a special time. What special time? Is there anything more important than my business? After saying that Xiling then pushed the door open while shouting out loud, Zhang Si, I have bad news. However, before she could finish her sentence, she was startled by the sight of Zhang Si in front of her. When did you become like this? I still think your initial state was more adorable. Is that right? Sometimes it's fun to live life differently. What were you going to say? Xiling hurriedly told the news that Dr. Jiming had escaped. But then Jiang Si interrupted her. He said he knew. How could you bunch of trash stop Zhu Xiaohong? Xiling was stunned when he heard this. How did you know that? It's been less than 10 minutes since this happened. Because Zhu Xiaohong used his bloodline power. I knew it as soon as she struck. Xiling is baffled by this statement. What is the power of the bloodline? She was then ready to rush to report this matter to the headquarters. But then, Jiang Si suddenly put his arm around her and said, Now that you're here, don't be in such a hurry to leave. Why don't we have dinner first? I'll show you the night view of our city. How's it going? That's the kind of thing that makes Xiling's hair stand on end. What enjoying the night view? Don't think I don't know what you did to Chen that day. And you're not as cute as a bald. I don't have time to play with you right now. With that, Xiling turned around and was ready to leave the conference room. But as soon as she reached the door, Jiang Si spoke up again. Aren't you curious about how to use the power of blood? What? Those words sent a jolt through Xiling's frame. Then it turned back and asked, so you can use that bloodline power of whatever it is as well? That's right. What kind of garbage is Zhu Xiaohong? Big deal. I'll go seal her up for another few thousand years. Xiling is instantly dumbfounded by this. But in order to get useful information, she finally agreed to the date reluctantly. The scene comes back to the grand president's side. He's being taken to the emergency room for resuscitation. But just then, the grand president suddenly opened his mouth and said to the nurse, Quickly, go get the minister. Or the world will change. Do you know what it's like to date Jiang Si? Xiling is trying to get the secret of the bloodline power. 
finally agrees to Jiang Si's invitation for a candlelight dinner. But just after Xiling learned how to use the power of the bloodline, Jiang Si suddenly sat still. Seeing this, Xiling asks in a hurry, What if I use it and it doesn't come back? And yet she hadn't even finished her sentence. At this point, Jiang Si had already transformed back into his first form. Xiling is instantly enraged. Then she grabbed Jiang Si and shouted, Bro, can you finish your sentence? I gave up something so important to date you, but you're only telling me half the thing. Tell me quickly. No, I didn't say you had to stay with me. You volunteered to go out with me. Jiang Si's comment is what completely enraged Xiling. Then she asked the chef at the side of the room, Where are your chili peppers? Give me two pounds of them. And yet the chef says, Since the last time the king ate scrambled eggs with green peppers, Minister Blackie just centralized and destroyed all the peppers in the city. The scene is once again on the Blood Queen's side. At this moment she is finally dressing herself in a modern outfit. At this point Dr. Jamming took them to a lab and said, I've never seen such a strong body before. That's not even science. You're not doing this blindly, are you? Is that Jiang Si's gene really working? Don't mess up our king's body by then. Don't worry, you have to trust Dr. Jimming's research. He's the smartest man in the world. And that's when Dr. Jimming chimed in. We've done similar experiments before. Although your king is not human, but it should be fine with me. The only thing missing now is Jiang Si's gene. A few people who heard this were stunned. This was followed by, You don't think you want us to go in front of Jiang Si and pull his hair out, do you? Don't worry, I'm not stupid enough to let you guys get yourselves killed. So what do we do? Jiang Si will not take the initiative to send it to your door. As soon as these words came out, the seated blood queen also looks curiously at Dr. Jiming. However, Dr. Jiming did not say anything. Instead, his assistant, Green Hair, pulled a jar of green liquid out of his shirt. We can still handle this little thing. The bottle contains Jiang Si's jeans. The people who saw this scene were shocked. Hurriedly asked Green Hair how he got his hands on it. It turns out that not too long ago, a girl got the gene from Jiang Si. So he had a spy secretly draw a tube of blood from her. So sometimes the spy thing works. So now we can start experimenting. And so after a few months of peace and quiet, this is the second time Lanchi has come to the hospital to see the president. At this time, the grand president opened his mouth and asked, I asked you to send out the message before I passed out. Did you do it? Don't worry. I sent the SATCOM as soon as I got the message. And it's a red emergency. But then again, there's a sound bomb there, and a prison with thousands of floors. How is it that in the end it was saved by a woman? Hearing this, the president hastened to say, This time, it's different. That woman can't be explained by science. The bombs are going off. But it was forced down by that woman. As soon as these words came out, Lanchi's face turned serious. Okay, looks like this is out of our hands. I'm sure the minister has gotten the message by now. At the same time, there were some transgenerational artifacts in the underground ruins. The expedition couldn't help but let out a gasp at the sight. But just then, a team member received an urgent message. He then immediately stepped forward and reported, Mr. Minister, there is an urgent situation that requires your personal attention. Just now, humans have discovered an ancient underground city with advanced technology. Just as the Lord Minister was about to continue exploration, a body sitting in front of the gate suddenly caught their attention. The people who saw the scene had expressions of disbelief on their faces. Could this be the remains of an ancient man? How come it doesn't look any different from us now? That's when the minister spoke. This man has 134 comminuted fractures throughout his body. Looks like he was crushed by some monster. The scariest thing is, all the human tissue was incinerated. That's why it's been around for thousands of years. Now it's an empty shell at best. It's no longer worth studying. The subordinate next to him also said, This place looks like it's been in a war. I didn't expect that a civilization with such advanced technology would be destroyed. He then went on to report to the minister. Some time ago, the Academy of Unusual Humanity recruited a president who was a good fighter. He's the one who captured Dr. Jimming. But recently, for some reason, Dr. Jimming has been rescued again. And the big president was seriously injured. When he heard that, the minister immediately turned around and said that he would go back now. But then one of the researchers suddenly discovered something strange. Then he curiously touched it with his hand. In the next second, the machine, which had been quiet, suddenly began to vibrate. The next moment, 
Countless blue lasers began to converge in the direction of the gate. Finally, a human form was formed. The crowd was shocked at this sight. The machine has been damaged for thousands of years, but it's still working. At that moment the 3D projected human suddenly spoke. I never thought I'd see a human with such a powerful body. The subordinate who heard this immediately shouted, Be careful, Mr. Minister. But the minister said calmly, It's fine. It's just a projection. At this point, the projection speaks again. I can make you stronger. If you promise to defend human civilization to the death. But the minister cut him off before he could finish his sentence. He said it was always his responsibility to protect the human race. Now I just want to know why you're headed for extinction. Yet the projection that heard this did not speak. Instead, it mapped a strange face above its head. As early as more than 1,000 years ago, the earth did not have only two continents as it does now. At that time, the earth was divided into seven continents and eight oceans, and there were hundreds of countries. The people combined all their resources to become more powerful. Technology was at its peak. Spaceships were just a gadget, especially with the advances in armed mechs. The aliens are nothing more than ants to us. They're no match for us. Not to mention all those underground monsters and such. We can kill them with a single mech warrior. But even such a technologically advanced civilization was eventually destroyed. And at the hands of a zombie, the people who heard this were shocked. They didn't think that the one who destroyed the civilization of the last century was this cute zombie in front of them. This is a golden right arm built by the last civilization. If you wear it, you'll have more power than ever before. But this man collects arm like it's an antique. Just now, the projection in the old city tell the modern ministers, this cute-looking zombie is actually the culprit responsible for destroying the entire civilization. The subordinate who saw the scene couldn't help but come forward and say, Mr. Minister, this guy's not fooling us, is he? And yet the minister says, I don't think the ancients would joke about such things. And did you guys notice? Zombies have been in the world since we were born. Another subordinate chimed in. Didn't we create all these academies just to fight those zombies? Though we've always kept the zombies at bay, we've never been able to solve the problem completely. Is it possible that it's because of the zombie in front of us? At this point the minister asked the projection again. If this zombie is so scary then how are we going to deal with him? Upon hearing this, projection hurriedly expressed that he didn't have much time left. We were too focused on technology in the last civilization. Your generation has taken a completely different route than ours. It's possible to reach such heights by practicing the physical body. As his words finished, the door behind him suddenly swings around, and then a golden arm appeared in front of everyone's eyes. The projection said, this arm was the pinnacle of all technology at that time. As soon as he said that, his body began to sway. Apparently time is running out. At the very last moment he was about to disappear, he said again. No matter what kind of ethnic group appears in the world, only zombies are the worst enemy of our species. Looking at this golden glove with unknown function in front of him, the minister had his subordinates collect it in a hurry. Then he saluted the projection that had disappeared. Don't worry, elder. The world is ours to protect from now on. After doing so he said to the crowd, let's go. There's not much use for the equipment here anymore. The subordinate asked, are we going after the guy in the video now? The minister replied as he evacuated towards the outside. Let's get rid of Dr. Jiming first. After all, the world is a big place and there are so many zombies. Finding that guy is like looking for a needle in a haystack. And on the other side of H City, Xiling has also received news of the minister's return. With that, she said to Jiang Si, Lord Minister is coming back. Notify all the cadres of the meeting. You're going too. Jiang Si is stunned when he hears this. Who is the minister? Why let me to go to a meeting? And so another week has passed. Inside one of the laboratories at the moment, Dr. Jemming muttered to himself in front of a petri dish, ha ha ha, it's finally working. The greatest study of all time is finally coming to life. Yet just as Dr. Jemming was still basking in the joy, the vampire butler who was hiding aside looked at a coin in his hand and couldn't help complaining. The day-to-day -day life of hiding is not to mention. I'm almost hungry now and can't even afford to eat. Just thinking about this Lonling couldn't help but shed two lines of sad tears. However, at that moment, the subordinate next to him suddenly came to his ear and said, Brother Lonling, don't be upset. We're noble bloods, aren't we? 
Why don't you take up a side hustle and make some extra money? Hearing this, Mr. Lonling said with a look of disgust, I'm not going to sell out, neither will you. However, the subordinate said, where's the money in selling sex that's not in robbing a bank? I noticed a bank on my way over here earlier. The staff there are extremely slow in their work efficiency, and they move very slowly. I think we should be able to finish the fight in about 10 seconds. If we're fast enough, there's no way they can catch us. When we get rich, we won't have to live like this anymore. The more Lon Ling thought about it, the more excited he was. Then he said with a stern look in his eyes, ha ha, good, then let's go to H City and do something big. That's not good. Jiang Si's bank was robbed, and as the treasurer of the city of H, he's so angry he's about to transform. Just now, because of the return of the minister. So all the presidents were summoned to a meeting at the headquarters. Soon a subordinate came into the office and reported, Mr. Minister, the presidents are all in place. We can now proceed with the meeting. Hearing this the minister is hastily putting his helmet back on. Then he followed the convoy to the headquarters. However, just as Jiang Si arrived in Guangzhou for the meeting. But his hometown, H City, was targeted by some mysterious guys. At this time, Lan Ling squatted on the street and asked, why hasn't it started after so long? But he had only just finished his sentence. And that's when a van pulled up right in front of him. Lan Ling rushes to get his men into the van. He then picks up his weapon in the car and asks, how's it all going? We have to make sure everything is in order. Then a chicken head came over and said, don't worry. I've been there before. This time is the least crowded. You know we're pros at robbing banks. With that, they grabbed their weapons and headed for the Jiang Si Bank. Of course, I wonder how they'd feel if they knew the bank they robbed was owned by Jiang Si. Then there were gunshots in the lobby of the bank. Lan Ling is overjoyed at this moment. It was the first time he had ever seen so much money. Meanwhile, in the finance department, He asked with a cup of coffee in his hand, Have the financial statements for the past two months come out yet? The subordinate who heard this was in a hurry to report. City H's total revenue for the past two months is $435.6 billion. Are you guys sure? Better get another count. As the king's best man, I can't let the city's finances slip through the cracks. But he had only just finished speaking. And that's when the smoke billowed up over the Jiang Si Bank. It turns out that Lan Ling has already finished the robbery. He's driving away in his van right now. And He is stunned when he learns the news. What kind of person would dare to rob in each city? At this moment, in front of a five-star hotel. Lan Ling is laughing in the car. Ah, we're finally rich. But just then, an angry voice suddenly sounded from behind him. Lan Ling hastily looks out the window toward the back. However, the moment he sees Hei, he winces in fear. Oh, my god, no, how could it be him? Then he got back in the car and asked, You big dummy. What bank did you rob, anyway? I don't know. I can't read. And then the other partner, with the dictionary in hand, said, I think we robbed the Jiang Si Bank. When Lan Ling heard those words, he wanted to die. Then he quietly went to the window and looked back. That's a good look. Lan Ling was so scared that his features were suddenly distorted. It turns out that Hei was already so angry that he was about to transform. Do you know how scary Hei is when she's angry? Just one swing at the ground sent cars flying in a hundred mile radius. Just now. John C has just arrived at headquarters for a meeting. He didn't realize that his H city had been stolen by a couple of idiots. And Hei, as the chief financial officer of H city, naturally couldn't let them go. Soon he was following the scent. Lan Ling is startled when he sees that it's Hei coming after him. Then he urged his companion to drive. That guy was the most mysterious little brother Jiang Si acquired in 800 AD. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. Hei is already in the air with a leap. Hei's fist smashed into a building with a thud. The next second, all the cars surrounding hundreds of kilometers began to float. Lan Ling and the others were dumbfounded at the sight. This is too much. But before they could think about it, Hei's eyes were already locked on them. Lan Ling knows he can't hide this time. Then he rolled over onto the roof of the car and said, Go back and report to the king. I'll take care of this one. So many years have passed. It just so happens that you and I are both butlers. I don't believe you're that much better than me. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. Hey had already thrown a punch. You want to compete with me? You don't have what it takes. After saying, Hey then punched him out. 
The other two partners who saw this were dumbfounded. How is it that even the John's henchmen are so strong? Meanwhile, on the other side, just see the lobby of the headquarters. The presidents of all the cities have gathered. At this time, the minister has finally arrived. Hello, everyone. I already know everything about Dr. Jimming's escape. But before I do, I'd like to show you something. With that said he had his subordinates bring out the golden right arm that was brought out of the ancient city. The people who saw it had a puzzled look on their faces. And then the minister explained. I found this arm by chance in the old city. It represents the crystallization of ancient technology. When this statement was made, the crowd was stunned. This ordinary looking arm is the crystallization of ancient technology. At that moment, President Bang shouted with excitement with ancient technology. So Dr. Jamming and that strange woman aren't at liberty? But then the minister spoke up. We don't need ancient technology to deal with them. There's someone else I need to deal with. According to the ancients, there is a terrible monster on our planet. Ancient civilizations were wiped out by this monster. The chief president was stunned when he heard this. Then a certain person appeared in his mind. Xiling, on the other hand, was surprised and asked, Mr. Minister, you're not kidding are you? What kind of monster could have exterminated the technologically advanced ancients? Just as the minister Sama was rightfully stating that this monster was extremely dangerous, Zhang Si suddenly came up to him and looked at the arm in contemplation for a moment. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. It's over. Zhang Si's identity was finally discovered by the minister. But just as he was about to take a shot at Zhang Si, a mysterious figure swished through the air. Just now, the minister shared what he saw in this ancient city at the meeting. When Xiling and the others heard that it was a monster that destroyed the last civilization, they were puzzled. So where could this monster be? The minister says he's not sure. The ancients only shared one image of the creature before disappearing completely. And that's when the... Zhang Si suddenly looked up at him and asked. So how should we use this golden glove? The minister was quick to say that it's very simple. Just put it on your hand. And press the center button. So we need to find this monster as soon as possible. And then we're gonna get rid of him. When Jiang Si heard this, he immediately agreed that he would help. But then the minister suddenly felt like he was missing something. Then he hurriedly took a closer look at Jiang Si next to him. This naked look made Jiang Si feel a little embarrassed for a moment. While he was still puzzled. And then the minister suddenly shouted at him. You. Immediately afterward, he rushes towards the golden gloves. The people who saw the scene had a puzzled look on their faces, but before they could think about it. At that moment, a figure suddenly swished over in the distance. With a loud boom, the figure was instantly pierced through the building. Not only that, he's crashing into the conference hall. It was only after the dust cleared that they realized it was Lan Ling who was knocked out by Hay's punch. Xiling and Lanchi were both confused when they saw this. However, at that moment, another figure flew through the air in the distance. With a thud it falls. It was Hei who gave chase. He looked at Lan Ling who was knocked into the building by him. Hei still doesn't feel much relief at the moment. At this point, Lan Ling, who is confused, shouts out in a broken voice, Give me a red heart. At this point Xiling also notices Hei outside. Then she said with disbelief, Isn't this Jiang Si's little brother? Why are he here all of a sudden? Jiang Si, who heard this, was also stunned. Hey, why is this guy so unstable all of a sudden? At this moment, one of the minister's men suddenly reported, Dear Presidents, please pay attention to this guy outside. He's not human. He's a zombie. How dare this zombie come here? As the ceiling of human combat power, the presidents couldn't stand it. Zombie, do you know what this place is? You're too arrogant. But Mr. Bang hasn't even finished his speech yet. Then Hei kicked him in the mouth. This was followed by a punch to the side of the president, who hadn't even recovered from his injuries yet. In an instant, both of them were sent flying by Hei. Xiao Xiao and Xiling were both dumbfounded by this scene. Why do we keep running into characters of this caliber? This makes us humans look like losers. And at the moment, President Big and President Bang, who were smashed into the wall, were speechless. Why is it always us who get hurt? At this time, the airborne Hay suddenly emits a large amount of black particulate matter. How dare you stand in my way? Then you can all go to hell. Seeing this, Xiao Xiao asks in a hurry. What the hell is this thing? Xiling behind him also cries out in horror at the sight of the situation. 
don't touch the black stuff. And yet, just when the crowd didn't know what to do anymore, Jiang Si flashed in front of Hei. With a thud, Hei takes a solid punch from Jiang Si. With his punch thrown, Hei is instantly knocked out of the fight. Not only that, the wind from that powerful punch sends Xiling and the others flying back. The subordinates were dumbfounded by this scene. Mr. Minister, this president is too strong, isn't he? However, the minister who heard this was nervous and put on his golden gloves. I didn't realize this guy's strength was so terrifying. Looks like the ancients really didn't lie. At this time, John C. drags Hay to the roof again. Reacting, Hay asks, King, why are you here too? John C. says you can't kill these humans yet. After all, they gave us our city. But before he could finish his sentence, a black dot suddenly appeared in the sky. The next second, the black spot turns into the legendary total solar eclipse. The people who saw the scene were all in disbelief. In less than two and a half seconds, the world has gone black. This bizarre phenomenon is a cause for horror. And then another figure appeared in the air. That's right, it's the Blood Queen who has completed evolution. At this moment, the minister, who had his golden gloves on, also noticed something strange in the air. On the other hand, the Grand President on the other side cried out in horror. It's that woman. She's the one who took Dr. Jiming. The Queen of the Bloods in the air just smiled and said, Jiang Si, get out of there. I'm invincible. With her words, a few more figures appeared beside her with a brush. Seeing them, Lan Ling shouts out in aggravation. Come and help me. But the Blood Queen's men had barely made it to the conference hall when they were suddenly knocked out of the room by the minister. With a loud boom, the two men were killed on the spot. The Queen of the Blood Race, seeing this scene, said angrily, Humans, I advise you to mind your own business. However, the minister instructed his subordinates that there would be a big battle here later on. Take the citizens and evacuate them. He immediately swings a punch towards the Blood Queen, but the punch misses. How dare a tiny mole cricket strike at me? At this moment, the Queen of the Blood Clan is completely enraged. With that, she kicked the minister in the jaw with her two and a half meter long leg. Xiling and the others who saw the scene were completely stunned. This woman is so powerful. I don't think the minister is even a match for her. On the other side of the room, Hei is staring at the battle in the air and says, King, they seem to be fighting. But Jiang Si put his hand out and said, It's none of our business if they're playing their game. The moment the two of them fought, the Blood Queen kicked him away with one kick. And then there was a loud boom all around. But as the smoke slowly cleared, the minister who took the kick from the Blood Queen was unharmed. The solar eclipse in the sky is now clearing. The minister shouted at the Blood Queen. I'll take care of you first, then I'll deal with Jiang Si. What a big mouth. You want to take on Jiang Si with just one human? Xiling and the others froze when they heard this. Why are we suddenly talking about Jiang Si again? Jiang Si himself is still on the roof of the building, watching the action. And that's when it happened. The minister suddenly activates the golden glove in his hand with a single click. In an instant, countless amounts of energy converged towards the center of the glove. Seeing this scene, the Queen of the Blood Clan didn't panic at all. Instead, she swiped at him. Soon, the two figures flew towards each other like arrows. The moment they were close to their target, the Blood Queen clenches her fists in a hurry. Instead, the minister gathered all of his strength into his golden arm. This was followed by a loud boom. The terrifying energy immediately lifted the crowd watching the show off the ground. And at this moment the center of the explosion with a click. The golden glove that coalesced the ancient times was instantly cracked. Immediately after that, the minister was sent flying into a tall building by the Queen of Blood. But with a coughing fit. The minister wasn't too badly hurt. The Blood Queen frowns at this sight. The minister took off the golden gloves in his hands and said. What kind of rubbish ancient technology is this? I might as well fight myself. At that moment, the Queen of the Bloods in the distance also spoke up. In the past thousand years, you are the most physically powerful person I have ever seen among humans. If you were born a thousand years ago, there's a chance I might not be able to beat you. It's just a shame you're no match for me now. With that, the Blood Queen dashed in front of the minister. But just as she was about to kill the minister, Xiling suddenly swishes over. As she swings her red blade slash, the Blood Queen dodges the attack in a hurry. This horrible slash made the Queen of the Blood Clan look incredulous. At that moment, Xiling slung his long sword over his shoulder and taunted. 
that's a good response. I can't believe you dodged my attack in a split second, but next time you won't be so lucky. Lanchi, who saw this, was shocked. Oh my god, how did Xiling suddenly become like this? Xiao Xiao on the other side also immediately started to transform. With a brush, she grabbed the Blood Queen's henchman and shouted, What are you looking at? Hurry up and give me a like. So can Xiling really defeat a fully evolved Blood Queen? This scene left the minister in disbelief. He didn't expect Xiling's strength to suddenly become so strong. On the other hand, Lanchi and the others on the other side were completely dumbfounded. Why does Xiling feel like a different person? At that moment, the blood sister who was restrained by Xiao Xiao suddenly shouted, Damn it! Don't underestimate us! With that, she broke free of Xiao Xiao's wrist. Then she escaped her grasp in a few bounces. This maneuver is what makes Xiao Xiao freeze in her tracks. I didn't expect her to run away from my own hands. At this point the little blood sister continued to taunt. You think you can trap me? Do you really think I'm a vegetarian? Oh, is that right? Well, I'd like to see what you're made of. With her words just falling out of her mouth, the little blood sister swished towards her. But before she had a chance to strike, Xiao Xiao kicked her in the jaw with a bang. Xiao Xiao then stooped down again to build up her strength. With a swish, Xiao Xiao charges towards the blood sister in the air. Just as it was about to approach her, Xiao Xiao throws another thumping punch. Lan Qi and the others were dumbfounded by the sight. How come even Xiao Xiao's strength is so exaggerated? At this point, after landing on the ground, the little blood sister hurriedly rolled over, with the blood slipping out of her hand. In a flash, her countless doppelgangers appeared in the air all of a sudden. But she didn't even have time to do it before she was kicked in the face by Xiao Xiao. At this point, the little blood sister is speechless. Is this guy still human? Why can't I do anything about her? Meanwhile, on the other side, the blood queen swipes forward. Seeing this, Xiling hastily drew his sword. In the next second, the city of technology behind her was instantly split in two. Seeing this scene, the grand president and the others said, very strong. Is this really Xiling's power? How does this one feel a little different? At this point, the Queen of the Bloods also said with a contemptuous smile, So you've been strengthened, too, but I don't have time to waste on you. Go and call Jiang Si out for me. With that she turned on her bloodline power. In an instant, a burst of terrifying energy erupted from her body. However, Xiling, who felt threatened, didn't want to retreat at all. I know I'm no match for you. But if that's the best you can do to challenge Jiang Si, then I'd advise you to forget it. Hearing this, the Queen of the Blood Clan was stunned. But before she could think about it, at that moment, Xiling suddenly covered her face and laughed. Come on, I'll show you my second form. After saying, the skin on Xiling's face then begins to wither away in bursts. Lan Qi and the President are dumbfounded by this sight. What is she going to do? But before they can even think about it. And then Xiling suddenly yells at the sky. Next, countless purple energies began to spread out with her at the center. This terrifying energy almost blew away the Grand President and the others, and the Queen of the Blood Clan was in disbelief. It was because Xiling had already changed into another form. Not only did she have a pair of sharp horns growing out of her forehead, even her facial features have taken on the appearance of a demon. At that moment, the President shouted in horror. Is she even human? How did it turn into this horror? At this moment, the Queen of the Blood Clan also asked in disbelief, You even mastered the power of the bloodline? At this point, Jiang Si, who was watching from downstairs, was dumbfounded. Did I teach him to use his bloodline power? Why don't I remember that? Xiao Xiao on the other side froze too. Also bitten by Jiang Si. Why is she able to activate her second form? That's it. The Blood Queen suddenly shouted in a cold voice. Are you in such a hurry to die? What's going on? Are you trying to scare me to death with your voice? If you want to kill me, it depends on whether you have the ability. With Xiling's words, at that moment, the Queen of the Bloods was already swishing above her head. However, Xiling didn't panic at all in the face of her sudden attack. The Blood Queen was about to bring her weapon down on her. Xiling is in a hurry to pull out the sword in her hand. Right at the moment the knife is sheathed, Xiling even used his own blood to open the blade. With the upgraded red blade slash, the Blood Queen is instantly sliced in half. Xiling followed up with an instant acceleration. In the next second, countless slashes appeared on the Blood Queen's body. The dense blade winds actually sliced her cells into pieces. 
and then there was a poof. The Queen of the Bloods was cut to ribbons by Xiling. This maneuver caused the crowd in the room to look incredulous. When the scouts reported that Xiling had cut out all of the man's cells, the Grand President was the one who instantly cried out in horror, impossible. This is so unnatural. Lanchi, on the other hand, has a frown on her face as she hears this, and doesn't know what she's thinking. Maybe she wants Jiang Si to bite her, too. As for Lord Minister, who is the ceiling of human combat power, he is speechless at the moment. I've only been out for a few months and there are so many experts in the academy. But despite this, Xiling doesn't have the slightest intention of relaxing. She looked back into the air and said, you're not that weak, are you? Or are you planning to hide and play sneak attack? With her words. At that moment, the blood clots in the air began to gather again. At this time, the blood clots in the air begin to coagulate again. Under the constant recombination of flesh and blood, soon the blood queen appeared intact once again. The grand president and president Bang were both dumbfounded at this sight. Are they both still human? At that moment, Jiang Si, who was watching the scene, suddenly shushed him. Xu Xiaohong is getting serious. With that, he jumps in the other direction with Hei. Xiling, who was in the middle of the field at the moment, was still breezing along. That heartless guy told me you're a thousand-year-old demon. I can't describe you as a normal person. When he heard this, the minister was stunned. But just as he was about to make a move, the golden glove in his hand, which was already deformed, suddenly reacted. On the other side, Jiang Si has brought Hei to the best position to watch the battle. The blood queen in the center of the field suddenly raised her hand. The next second, what was once a clear sky is now a dark cloud. However, Xiling, who saw this scene, didn't panic at all. She even put on an attacking stance and said, Come on, let's see what you're really made of. With that, she flew up 10,000 meters with a swish. Seeing this scene, the blood queen hurriedly slashed the long sword in her hand. In the next second, a building hundreds of meters high was sliced into a dozen pieces. With a loud boom. The chunks of the building went towards Xiling in the air. But against the rush of buildings, Xiling just raised his hand and slashed. The tens of meters thick concrete wall was sliced in half. But just then, the Blood Queen suddenly swiped in front of her. Before Xiling can react, she throws a punch with a thud. Under the pain, Xiling no longer hides his strength. With all her strength, she swung at the Blood Queen. In the next second, the huge blade energy actually cut H-City in half. The two Lanchis who saw this scene were so shocked that they changed their drawing style. Even Jiang Si couldn't help but let out a wow. This woman is really scary when she's violent. But despite this, the Queen of the Bloods is still not even a little bit hurt. Lanchi, seeing this scene, exclaims, This is too strong. He's still alive even after being sliced up like that. They're even stronger than the minister. And yet, the minister she spoke of is in a lot of trouble right now. It's because he can't get his golden gloves off. At this time, Xiling swipes again and flies into the glass of a building. But she hasn't even gotten her footing yet. And that's when the blood queen came charging in. And then there was a thud. Xiling has been kicked in the jaw again. The blood queen raises her hand again. A surge of energy gathered. Next, Xiling crashes into a skyscraper. Don't think just because you're in your second form, you're not a big deal. You're nothing to me. Lanchi and the others are more than shocked to hear this. This is just like a fight between the gods. But just as the two of them are fighting back and forth. At this moment, something happened to the minister on the other side. What's going on? Why is this glove suddenly attacking my right hand? Just when the minister was still in a daze, suddenly there was more golden energy in his blood. Immediately after that a voice sounded in his head. Ha ha ha. Your body will be my vessel for now. That's right. This voice is the same one that was in the ancient ruins. The other side. The knocked out Xiling is finally slowing down again. She pulled out the long knife that was stuck in her chest and said, I can't beat you, but what can you do to me? Seeing how strong Xiling's combat power is, Mr. Lanchi also grabbed Jiang Si's shirt and said, I want to be like them. But Jiang Si said, No, the transformed woman is too violent. And yet just then, there was a sudden loud boom in the distance. The sound made everyone in the room freeze. What's going on? Why suddenly feeling a terrifying pressure? The grand president next to him was even looking at the sky with a look of horror on his face. It turns out there's a huge monster in the sky right now. It was accompanied by a horrible laugh. Ha ah, I've finally managed to resurrect myself. Just heard a boom. 
The machine collapsed a city with a single stomp. The people of the city are now dumbfounded. What kind of monster is this? That's when there was another loud boom. The building that Zhang Si was in was shattered in an instant. Zhang Si bounces back and forth between the rubble. It turns out he's trying to save the president who couldn't get out in time, but right after he threw everyone out, the mech in the air suddenly reached out and grabbed him. After grabbing Zhang Si, the mech was hastily clenching his fists in his hands. However, at that moment, the Blood Queen, however, suddenly dodged with a brush. Xiling rushes after her. I didn't expect the two of them to arrive at the top of the mech's head like that. This time, the sober minister is shouting in a rush of rage. What the hell are you doing? I'm sorry. For a better future for mankind, I have no choice but to sacrifice you. With his words, a brand new mecha robe covered his body. The grand president couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat at this sight. Next to him, Mr. Steele was so scared that he couldn't even speak. At that moment, Xiling overhead suddenly notices what looks like something in that mech's hand. So it's Jung Si. He's in the hands of the mech right now. Seeing this, the Blood Queen and Xiling rush towards the Ancient. But with a thud, the combined attack of the two of them was easily neutralized by the Ancient One. With a swish, they were both even more bound by the Ancients. We have studied Jiang Si's genes for centuries. You two women are using it as a stimulant? It's so shallow. At this point, Zhang Si in the distance finally opens his second form under the pressure of the mech, with a 360 degree spin in place. In the next second, the mech's fingers began to spin along with him, and then it affected his entire arm. And the Zhang Si takes this opportunity to leap up and try to blow his head off. But then there's a loud boom. The mech's other arm snapped and slammed down. At that moment, the ancient man in the distance opened his arm and shouted, 1000 years. Do you know how I've spent the last 1,000 years? Looking at Zhang Si, who is struggling to hold on to his life. The Ancient One excitedly shouted again, Come on, what are you waiting for? Reveal your final form. With his words, Zhang Si slowly opened his harmless-looking eyes again. Can you believe it? Zhang Si has a fourth form. Just now. Zhang Si opened his third form under the pressure of the mech, with a loud boom. The mechanical arm was instantly lifted off by Zhang Si. The Blood Queen's eyes widened when she saw this scene. But the ancient mech at the moment wasn't the least bit afraid. And he even said in a hollering voice, Are you looking down on me? You monster. The Zhang Si's who heard this froze in their tracks. You seem to look more like a monster than me. Lan Chi, who was watching the battle from the ground, has been dumbfounded. What the hell is this? Zhang Si accelerates towards the mech's head. The ancient one who saw the scene was instantly grunted coldly. The next second, the mech's hatch clicks open slowly, then saw a line of robots coming out of it. Is this ancient technology? At this time, the chief president and President Bang were so frightened that they did not dare to speak out. But these robots are as strong as they look, but in front of Zhang Si, they are just like a piece of paper. With a tearing sound, the robot was instantly torn in half by Zhang Si. The robots are growing in number. The zombie then clenches his fist and builds up his strength. And then there was a loud boom. The robots were instantly destroyed by Zhang Si. At this time, the ancient people bumped their fists and said, Still can't let you use your full strength? Then let's see what you can do with the rest of these. With his words just falling from his lips, several more giant mechs appeared in the void. The Grand President was enraged at this sight. If we keep fighting like this, we'll be finished before Jiang Si dies. The Ancient One then shouted, I saw it on the last night before dawn. This is not your true form. This is what makes Jiang Si freeze in his tracks. But before he could think about it, the Ancient One's giant mecha blasted toward him. With a loud thud, the powerful wind of the fist directly destroyed half of the city. Jiang Si was smashed into the moon in outer space. Jiang Si was stunned by this blow though it didn't do any damage to him. At this point the minister inside the ancient suddenly roared in anger. Look what you've done, is this what you wanted? But before he could finish his sentence, the ancient one yelled again, shut up, I have to kill him this time. With that, he teleported the mega mech to the moon. Lanchi and the others on the ground at this moment cannot be described as shocked, just because that giant mecha planned to destroy the moon as well. Just now, after Jiang Si was punched to the moon, and then the mechs of the ancient civilization came after him. But then Jiang Si suddenly dodged his attack from the side. He then jumped in front of the mech. The chief president who saw this scene on earth said it was amazing. At this moment, 
Jiang Si suddenly bends down in the air and builds up his strength. Next moment, he then slammed his fist into the mech's eye. With a thumping sound, the ancient mech fell to the moon in a heap. At this time, the ancient people on earth were also shocked. At this time, the minister inside him suddenly shouted, I've read about Jiang Si. Not only did he manage H City very well, but he also generated hundreds of billions of dollars in tax revenue for us. He's even helped us humans more than once in his time. I wonder why we can't coexist with him. The ancient people who heard this immediately yelled, shut up. Then he looked at the moon in the sky and sighed. I also want to coexist peacefully. But look at him now. Does he look like he can coexist peacefully? Zombies are supposed to be a weak group. But then, out of nowhere, there's this guy. And the survival of the human race is in his hands. Do you think such a creature? Can we allow him to live? That's why those who are not of our kind must be killed. As he finishes his words, the mechs in space begin to reorganize again. After two and a half minutes, not only has the ancient mech returned to its original state, in its hand, it has a long, sharp sword. The ancient one suddenly cried out, divine punishment. Next, sea send. All the mechs in space start moving. With the sound of plopping, the poor moon just got stabbed through them. And yet, despite all of this, Jiang Si is fine at this moment, and then he taunts him with disdain. Sometimes it's not that the bigger the size, the stronger the strength. The ancient ones who heard this immediately felt a great crisis, but before he could react, Jiang Si suddenly raised his hand in a shooting gesture. In the next second, all the ancient mechs shattered. Even the entire moon couldn't help but tremble. Such a horrible feeling of oppression is making Lanchi feel very bad. He then shouted to the surrounding presidents. It's not safe here anymore. Evacuate the neighborhood and get out of here. As soon as the words left his mouth. At that moment, Jiang Si arrived in front of the ancients. And then he hit the ancient one in the face with a huge punch. The force of the punch instantly sent him into the deep sea. But it's not too late. Jiang Si has thrust his hands into the ground again. So guess what? What is he planning on doing here? Just now, Jiang Si, in a fit of rage, smashed the ancient one into the ocean. Faced with a sudden attack, at this moment, the ancient one was also in a state of shock, and the presidents of the city were going around evacuating people from all over the place. But just as Lanchi was about to evacuate with a baby in her arms, that's when the pavement suddenly trembled beneath her feet. It was Jiang Si pulling at the earth with both hands. The people who saw this scene were showing fear. With a click, the area where the Jiang Si was was instantly cracked open. And then everyone felt a tremor like an earthquake. At this point, Jiang Si is once again making a power move. Next, the ground around him just rips hard and fast. In an instant, a tens of thousands of meters of cracks appeared in the center of the city. The chief president was dumbfounded at the sight. Lanchi fell into the crack by accident. But even so, the crack is still growing. A few moments later, even the sea has been split in two. On the other side, President Bang rushes in to save Lanchi. And yet, Lanchi then saw the unthinkable. Only see the ancient one, who had been smashed into the sea, suddenly emerge. The next second Jiang Si punched the man in the body. The powerful force was directly smashing the ancient man into the peak of the mountain. Damn, this guy's strength is too scary. See? This is the destructive power of the Jiang Si. And yet, he hasn't even finished his sentence. And then there's a sudden tsunami in the ocean. That's right, it was Jiang Si who unleashed his ultimate form. The minister was shocked to see this. What kind of creature is this guy? Xiling is also confused. Why is Jiang Si able to change form again? The blood queen next to him is even more dumbfounded. I've never seen that before. And yet, the ancient one at this time, however, shouted with an excited look on his face. Ha, ah, that's right. That's the face I saw before the dawn disappeared. And with that, he took off into the sky, looking at Jiang Si in his ultimate form at this moment. He shouted in horror. It's over, the ancient one is dead. With that, he rushed outside with a thud. And at this moment the ancient man in the air let out a loud laugh and drank. Come on. I have waited 1000 years for this battle. But he hadn't even finished his sentence. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly raised his hand and waved it. The next second. The ancient man's armor shatters in an instant. At this point, Jiang Si clenched his fists again. The ancient man was crushed into a ball. And that's when it happened. A bolt of energy suddenly shot straight up into the sky. 
It suddenly blasted the ancient man into scrap metal. After losing control of the ancient one, the minister was finally freed from his chains. But he's not going to live much longer. The presidents who saw the scene couldn't help crying. It's over. The minister is dying. But just then, Jiang Si suddenly snapped his fingers at the minister. In the next second, the cells in his body began to reorganize once more. The chief president was dumbfounded at the sight. The blood queen next to him was even more disbelieving. Xiling also shouted with wide eyes. How can this even be possible? That's when the minister suddenly came out of his coma. When he looked aside to Jiang Si, who had stepped in to save his life. At this moment the minister is finally realizing. Why the ancients would stop at nothing to kill him. It's just because Jiang Si is so powerful. And it's the kind of power that makes people feel deeply afraid. There is such a thing as him. I'm afraid there aren't any humans who wouldn't be terrified. With that, the battle of the ancients finally came to an end when Jiang Si killed him in seconds. The crowd watching the battle on the ground at the moment could no longer be described as shocked. At this very moment, Xiling suddenly swished in front of Jiang Si. Xiling, how's it going? Is the bloodline power good? At that moment, Xiling, who had been freed from his transformed state, burst into a rage. It's not working, my ass. Look what you've done. We've lost our home. It turns out that Jiang Si's unarmed tearing of the earth opened up a hole in the earth in an instant. Even because of this incident, the southern continent was shifted by more than 100 kilometers. And just like that, two months soon passed. Since the humans had evacuated before the Great War, there wasn't much damage. Only the subsequent rebuilding of homes. It's all in the hands of the citizens of Jiang Si. Inside the office at the moment, the minister looked at the data in front of him and pondered. The data showed Jiang Si's complete data from his first form to his fourth form. So against such a terrifying Jiang Si, what will our minister choose? Suddenly Inspector Chan walks in with a cup of coffee and asks, Mr. Minister, did you call me for something? I heard you went to H City last time. Well, you go and buy some eggs later. Let's pay another visit to the newly appointed chief president of the city of H. Meanwhile, on the other side, the vampire's new city is gradually being built. And Lonling is in charge of the project. And that's when the vampire girl came up and said, Lonling, where did you get this money? But Lan Ling, who heard this, was in a cold sweat. Turns out all his money was loaned to him by Hay. The king said, instead of letting them rob banks and mess with them, why don't we just loan them money? Converting based on 20 points of interest, they'll have to work for us for at least 300 years to pay it off. When she heard that, Ada couldn't help but think, evil capitalist. As for the blood queen, at the moment, she's already autistic from Jiang Si. She didn't realize that Jiang Si had a fourth form. It's probably impossible to defeat him in this lifetime. Damn it, I don't believe this. Is there no one in this world who is a match for Jiang Si? That's it. Jiang Si's wish for zombies to coexist with humans has finally come true. But what he doesn't know is, inside some dungeon left over from an ancient civilization, a man suddenly came to the remains of that ancient people. The man was Dr. Jiming, who had been missing for a long time. Jiang Si, just wait for me. As long as I'm alive, I'll never give up. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly realized a very serious problem, because he was too powerful in his own right. As a result, humans are now very afraid of him. Suddenly there's a ding-dong ringing at the door. Jiang Si hurriedly opened the door and asked, Who is it? It's Xiling who came over early in the morning to rush him to work. Soon enough, Jiang Si arrived at the Academy of Irregular Humans after washing himself up. Inside the gym at the moment, Lanchi is at the podium giving a rousing opening speech. It's almost time. Lanchi then waved his hand and shouted. Next we have our new chief president Jiang Si coming up to say a few words. As she speaks, the trainees in the arena were shouting at Jiang Si, chief president. He looked at the neatly arranged freshman in front of him. Jiang Si is also a bit confused at this moment. Then he touched his bald head and said awkwardly, Good morning everyone. Don't forget to like the video. At that moment, the teacher on the stage whispered, President, your place has been changed. Hearing this the ex-chief president was in a hurry to interrupt him. There's no way. I can't beat him. Meanwhile in the minister's office, only C. Inspector Chan suddenly rushed in. Sorry, things seem to be getting a little bigger. With that, she handed a cell phone to the minister. This is a call from the leader. The minister was shocked to hear this. It seems there's no escaping it after all. No way? 
Zhang Si also started to degenerate. Not only does Xiling play the animal-eared maid, but there's also the tall launchy bunny girl who serves you well. Even the arrogant President Steele has become his personal chef. Just to be able to cut a plate of premium sushi for Jiang Si. Just now, the minister was just about to deliver a gift to Jiang Si when he got a call from the head. I didn't realize that the resurrection of the Ancient One was already known all over the world. Inspector Chan was surprised to hear this. We didn't tell anyone. And yet, the minister said, it's impossible to hide something as big as this. Now the exchange is about to begin. It's a real headache to think about. By the way, where are the eggs I asked you to buy? How's your preparation going? When Inspector Chan hears this, he hastily lifts up two bags and says, here they are. With that, the minister himself brought the gifts to Jiang Si's doorstep. Now that he has become chief president. So as the president, it shouldn't be a problem for him to fulfill his duties, right? The minister rang Jiang Si's doorbell with trepidation. But when he opened the door, it was Xiling. The most surprising thing was that Xiling was wearing a beautiful maid's outfit. The minister was stunned at the sight. Xiling, what's going on here? Xiling is shocked to see it's the minister too. She hurriedly explained, it's not what you think it is. But she hadn't even finished her sentence. Lanchi in the room then cries out in surprise. If it isn't the minister. The minister is completely speechless at this moment. Okay, okay. You guys are playing like this, right? Although Jiang Si got promoted. But this is too bold for you guys, isn't it? At this time. Reacting, Lan Chi is instantly horrified and cries out. Mr. Minister. You're mistaken. Yet the minister doesn't even want to hear their explanations. Then he turned around and was ready to leave. There's no way out. Lan Chi and Xiling are rushing to get in front of him to say. We're just here to celebrate Jiang Si's promotion. Why are you celebrating dressed like this? I've never seen you guys wear them like this. But he hadn't even finished his sentence. At this time, he discovered that Xiao Xiao was also in the room. Next to him is the chief president playing a card game with Jiang Si. Suddenly there was a bang. Only Si President Bang pulled up a banner and started congratulating him. The minister was speechless at the moment. These people are outrageous. At this time. All kinds of fruits and vegetables were suddenly thrown in the air. With a swish, it's President Steele performing his sword play. Only see he's carrying two plates of cut sushi and he's ready to deliver them to Jiang Si. Suddenly he noticed a familiar figure standing in the doorway. Then he immediately panicked and said that Jiang Si had forced him to do all of this. It's a good thing that the minister is completely numb at this point. Only see he announced with a dry cough. Now that we're all here, I'll save you the trouble of calling a meeting. I have something very important to discuss with you all. At this point, Jiang Si asked curiously, Aren't you the boss of the humans? Hearing this, the minister hastened to say that he was not. Then he took off his mask and said, Actually, I just run this one province. Upon seeing the minister preparing to unmask, at this moment Jiang Si and the others are in a state of anticipation. But the minister only showed half of his face before continuing. There are many other provinces like this in our country. And the provinces are at least thousands of kilometers apart. And then there's. There are only two countries on this planet. One is country A. One is country B. Although there are only two countries. But there's a lot of fighting going on. So a competition came into being. Jiang Si was stunned when he heard this. What is this competition? Xiling, next to him, hastily explains. It's the equivalent of a school field day. It can also be interpreted as a military maneuver. But every time, it's them, country B, that wins. Now Jiang Si is bored. What's the point of having a tournament in the first place? It's so boring. But then Lan Chi suddenly speaks up. There was a zombie killing program in the last session. They killed 80 million zombies in one week. That's many times our strength. Those words sent a chill down Jiang Si's back. How can there be such an asshole program? At this time Lan Chi continued, as our chief president. We're counting on you for this tournament. Jiang Si is completely speechless at this moment. You guys don't really think I'm human, do you? Luckily, the minister was able to save the day by saying, don't worry about it. This competition is set by us. There won't be a program to kill zombie anymore. And at the same time, on the other side of the globe. Only see two tall, beautiful women walk into an office. At that moment, the head of country B threw a pile of information on the table and said, 
See for yourselves. This is a photo sent from country A. Hearing this, the two girls hurriedly picked up the photo on the table and scrutinized it. When they saw that the moon was penetrated by the Mecca, they were shocked. And then the leader of the group continued. According to intelligence, it's very likely that the A's have mastered the technology of the ancients. Next month, the head of country A will come to our country for a visit. You two are my best men. So I called you here this time because I want you to investigate for yourself. As for your sister's participation in the anti-government forces, the king's side has a lot to say about it. Of course, I'll plead for you as long as you get the job done. The two men who heard this were in a hurry to say, my lord, don't worry about it. We'll get to the bottom of this. It's over. The ancients have come back to life. But the original handsome mech warrior is now a balding, greasy man. Ever since the ancients were killed off by Jung Si, Dr. Jiming, who was hiding in the dark, came to the ancient ruins. Soon a few days have passed. Inside some mysterious laboratory, Dr. Jiming is looking at the experiment in front of him with a serious look on his face. At that moment, the green hair shouts, device one is powered up. With his words, the rest of the staff has indicated that they are ready. And the reason they're so serious, it's all because they're actually trying to resurrect the ancient one. When all the work was done, the green hairs shouted out to Dr. Jiming, Ming, it's time to start. But the ancient one has been dead for 1000 years. He's already a specimen. Can we really bring him back? Don't worry. There's nothing in biology I can't do. Prepare to begin. After getting Dr. Jemming's orders, the subordinate immediately closed the electric switch on the experiment. With a loud boom, the entire lab is instantly enveloped in a powerful light. Seeing this, Green Hair was instantly shocked. If we can really bring that ancient man back to life, then wouldn't we be invincible from now on? Only see the strong electric current that continues to zing through the body of the ancient one. After a while, a thick white smoke immediately rises from the laboratory. Everyone was on edge at this moment. After all, it was the first time they had ever done something like resurrecting a human being. At this time, the ancient in the lab suddenly let out a cough. The green hair who saw this scene was instantly overjoyed. Great. We did it. But as the white smoke slowly clears, a greasy, balding man appeared. The green hair is instantly enraged. No way. Did our program make a mistake? Where are the ancients? Where's the super cool mech warrior? How did it get to be like this? And then, the green hair took one swift step into the lab. Tell me where the ancients went. And who the hell are you? Why are the ancient people missing? The uncle who heard this said hesitantly that he was that ancient person. You fart. The ancient people we saw before were so handsome. See how you resemble it? I really am the ancient one. But I'm an engineer. I'm not much of a fighter myself. So I designed myself a mech. What's going on? Is it wrong for me to make myself look good? Dr. Jimming was speechless when he heard this. I didn't realize it was just an engineer. But just as he was about to turn around and leave, the engineer inside suddenly spoke up. You and I are in the same category. How about it? Aren't you going to talk to me? Tell me, what are you going to talk to me about? Don't waste my time. I know we're coming from different places, but the goal is the same. So we can work together. Collaborate on what? You've already been defeated by Jung Si. I thought you were a more powerful vessel than a vampire. But this is a pure waste of my time. You might as well give up that idea of yours. Jung Si's genes have been studied for thousands of years. Your method doesn't work. You know, the reason why Jiang Si is so powerful is because he has the mysterious power to raise his rank indefinitely. Nowadays in this world, two of the smartest people in the world have joined forces. You have your formidable biology and mastery of the Jiang Si gene, and I have unrivaled technology, plus how to use Jiang Si genes. So why don't we create a new Jiang Si out of it? When this statement is made, Dr. Jiming and others were taken aback. At this point the engineer continued, how about that? I don't suppose you'll turn down my offer, will you? Dr. Jiming sniffs and pushes up his glasses before stepping forward and saying, Very well. Welcome to create God number one. I hope we can work well together. And meanwhile on the other side, Xiling is shouting in horror. What? How dare you ask him to work as a bodyguard for the head? No way. Jiang Si has been assigned as a bodyguard. And the person he's protecting is the head of country A. The head of country A is going to visit country B next month. 
The minister decided to ask Zhang Si to be the bodyguard for the head of state. When Xiling heard this, he immediately stood up. Mr. Minister, are you crazy? I can't believe you let this guy be a bodyguard. Zhang Si also points to himself with an embarrassed look on his face and says, I'm afraid I'll accidentally kill the head. As long as you don't start the transformation casually, that's fine. I can't help it. It's not safe in B. Besides, they know about the ancients. That's why I'm afraid they'll take the plunge. When this is said, Xiling and Lanchi were at a loss for words. After all, Zhang Si is probably the only one who can keep his head safe. At this point the minister stood up again and said, If you have no objections, then it's decided. Zhang Si, haven't you always wanted to enter the upper echelons of humanity? As long as you can get the head to order, then no one will dare question your identity. But you can't reveal your identity now. After all, having a zombie as an official, it's also quite a blast from the past. And the last thing I'd like to say is, from now on, all the presidents of Guangzhou are at your disposal. Just in case, you can also bring two of your cronies. Don't lose face in Guangzhou this time. And so, after Jiang Si's meeting, he returned to H City. Inside the city hall at the moment, He and a bunch of other minions have rushed over. At that moment, Jiang Si spoke to them and said, The governor ordered me to be a bodyguard for the head of the country. Which one of you is willing to go with me? He said that there's too much work on the finance side. Ada also stammers that he has to keep the peace. No time at all. Only Alung and Ameo are excited to say it's okay. It's just that they're tired of being in H City. But what they didn't expect was, this time, the boss tied them up again. Ameo and Alung are speechless at the moment. They wouldn't have come if they'd known. At this time, Xiling and Lanchi are coming over. When they saw Ameo and Alung on the ground, Lanchi's eyes immediately light up and he shouts, What a cute puppy! Then she squatted down in front of Ameo, intending to pet him. But then Ameo suddenly roared. If you touch me with your hands, I'll bite you to death. Lanchi is startled by this sudden change of heart. At that moment, Xiling rushed forward to explain. They're Jiang Si's boys, not puppies. Then she said to Jiang Si, who was on the sidelines, follow me. Head said he wants to see you. A moment later, Jiang Si is then led by Xiling into a conference hall. Inside was a gathering of masters from every province. When they saw Jiang Si and the others coming in, one of the masked men immediately came up to him and taunted him. Is there no one left in the province of Guangzhou? I can't believe they sent a nobody. Where's the previous chief president? Just a little piece of shit like you. I can fight ten of them by myself. And yet he hasn't even finished his sentence. This moment, Zhang Si's fist has landed on his face. With a booming sound, the man was smashed into the wall on the spot. At this point, Zhang Si said with an innocent look on his face. There was a fly in front of me just now. It's quieter now. The people in the hall are now looking incredulous. This newcomer from Guangzhou is too powerful. Soon Zhang Si was called into the office by the head of the organization. And Zhang Si is nervous as hell. After all, it's his first time to be a bodyguard. At that moment, the head suddenly spoke up. The minister of Guangzhou says you're very strong. Completely capable of the bodyguard's will. But I still want to ask. How are you going to protect me in case of danger? Hearing this, Jiang Si scratched his head and said, Danger is something that doesn't exist for me. Ah, that's good. Not bad for a man elected by Minister Guangzhou. I believe you. Meanwhile, in a ruined city on the outskirts of Country B, only see an extremely beautiful woman looks at you and says, like the video, Here we go, Mr. Zombie unlocking a new character again. This girl who looks so weak didn't realize she's the big sister of all the zombies in B, and they're planning to assassinate the head of country A. However, Jiang Si, the bodyguard, is still enjoying himself on the plane. Just now. Inside a ruined city in country B. Only see a tall, beautiful woman waiting for something there. At this time, a two meter tall masked zombie suddenly approached Xi. Big sister, here's the equipment you wanted. And the zombie army is ready. Very good, Ashi. You've worked hard this time. And then the woman came out of the rubble. At this time, several zombie subordinates saw this and hurriedly followed them. Soon the woman arrived in front of the zombie's army and shouted, Brothers, do you know why mankind has to fight all the time? I think humans are selfish creatures. They don't want to live simply like we do. I'm sure you've heard. The head of country A is coming here for a visit. 
and it's our job to kill him. A lot of people ask me why I'm doing this. The truth is, mankind is to blame. Although the zombie outbreak did wreak some havoc on the human race in the early days. But most of the zombies are nothing compared to human technology, and yet they're still developing weapons. At one point, they even tried to wipe out all the zombies. But it's really just an excuse for infighting between country A and country B. And they've been hiding the fact that the zombies are also sentient. Because of the war, many good human beings have been separated from their families by their fire. And our sentient zombies are the ones they say are to blame. Why can't zombies live in peace with humans? That's why we have to overthrow the humans. Let the zombies live as equals. Hearing this, the zombies raised their hands in excitement and shouted, Sister, you are powerful. However, at this moment, on top of a certain airplane, Zhang Si is still enjoying his afternoon tea. The picture comes to the empire again. Inside the airport at the moment, reporters are already broadcasting live around the world. Because this exchange between the two countries has become the talk of the world. Soon there was a jet flying over the city. And on the ground at that moment, the secret agent sisters just went out and said, let's do security first. Don't let something happen to the head of country just as he lands. Hearing this the younger sister is instantly asked, you mean to say sister she will do it now? I'm just guessing. But with our sister's character, I think she'd like to blow up an airplane. And right now on the streets, people are coming and going. Jonfin said softly, it's all set. Make sure the head of country gets his head on a plate. But he hasn't even finished his sentence yet. The masked zombie next to him suddenly goes into convulsions. And then it involuntarily fell to its knees in a paralyzed heap. The centerfold next to him rushed forward and asked, Ashi, what's wrong with you? This is no time for jokes. Ashi sniffs but doesn't say anything. Instead, he suddenly looks up at the airplane in the sky. Only because he seems to sense something both familiar and frightening on the plane. Just now, as the plane escorting the head of country A was about to land, Ashi on the ground had a strange feeling all of a sudden, but he couldn't tell what was wrong, and then he told his men to continue as planned. At this time, the plane of the head of country A has finally arrived at the airport, and now the reporters and officials from country B are rushing to the airport. Suddenly the door to the plane opened slowly, but it wasn't the head of country A who came out. It's Jiang Si, who wears a suit and tie for the first time. Seeing this, Ashi rushes to his walkie-talkie and yells, Danger! Stop! The yellow-haired zombie who heard this was stunned. What's going on? Why is there a sudden surge of fear in my own heart? Even Big Sister, who was far above the building, couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. She then rushed to the zombie army and ordered them to say, This guy's not the head. Everyone stand down. And at this point, the footage of Jiang Si's appearance is being broadcast live around the world. When the humans saw the strange appearance of Jiang Si, all of them had a look of surprise on their faces. However, Jiang Si himself was thinking at the moment. The suit still doesn't fit well on. The other side. The twin sisters look at the screen in front of them as well. Who is this guy? At this point, the sister next to her explains. He seems to be a bodyguard in the head's entourage. At this point, the minister on the plane is talking to Jiang Si. Good job. You need to remember your mission. That's taking a bullet for the leader. Jiang Si was speechless when he heard this. I can catch any of your rockets. Do I have to take a bullet with my body? Then he started looking around. After making sure there was no danger around him. At this point, the head of country A is also finally coming out of the cabin. The head of the embassy rushed to meet him and said, this is the governor of Hardy. He'll be hosting the entire event. It's getting late today. His Excellency can go to the hotel to rest. We'll start the visit tomorrow, just as everyone is getting ready to go to the hotel. At that moment, Jiang Si suddenly sensed something. At the same time, Big Sister also suddenly froze. Why did I just seem to get the feeling that I was being watched? And it seems that this person is in the country A's delegation. Just now, the moment Jiang Si stepped off the plane, Big Sister, who was hiding in the shadows, immediately gave the order to retreat. And at this moment, the sisters in the monitoring room were also in disbelief. Strange, why didn't the older sister make a move? At this point, the younger sister walked up and said, Since eldest sister has given up on the assassination, I think it's time for us to make our move. I've planted bugs in the pickups and drop-offs. Soon we'll have definitive information about the ancients. 
but what they didn't expect was, the head of country A refused their convoy. He then took Zhang Si next to him in the car he had prepared. At the same time, the minister on the plane also cuts off the communication in a hurry. However, the unknowing sisters are still discussing who will protect the head of country A. After all, Lanchi and Xiling are still too weak. Eldest sister can destroy them with a single finger. At this point, the staff suddenly shouted at them. The leader did not take the convoy we prepared but boarded another special car. Hearing this, sister asked in a hurry, which one are they on? What's the location? But the staff says the signal's been jammed. They can't be traced. That was a comment that made my sister slap the table right in the face. It's over. The head of country A is in danger. What they don't know, however, is that accompanying the leader is the invincible Jiang Si. This time, they're going in two directions at once. Xiling and Lanchi will follow the original route to attract attention. On the other side, Jiang Si is secretly escorting the leader to the hotel. Meanwhile, on a rooftop, the yellow-haired zombie took the walkie and asked, Big Sister, do we still need to continue the assassination? Hearing this, Big Sister gave the order in a hurry. There's a strange guy next to the target this time. We are temporarily. But she hasn't even finished her sentence. And that's when the signal went out. This caused the yellow-haired zombie to freeze as well. Should I kill it or not? After thinking about it, the yellow-haired zombie threw away his 98k and said, Why hesitate to kill a human being? Why don't I just go ahead and do it? Don't worry, big sister. When I've killed them all, I'll come back with the head's head and ask you for credit. And in the car. Just as Zhang Si is contemplating whether or not to give the video a like, the head of the backseat suddenly asked Zhang Si. I heard Minister Chen say, You're a zombie, right? These words made Zhang Si stunned. But he didn't even have time to answer. At this time, the leader behind him continued. You're so powerful. Will you suddenly want to rule the world one day? Don't worry, I'm not interested. Jiang Si is answering off the cuff. And yet, these words, however, caused the driver to break out in a cold sweat. Oh my god, leader has a zombie as his bodyguard. The other side. Big sister also received a report from her men. They can't seem to reach A Jiao. At this time Zhang Fen said again, they should have installed jamming equipment on their fleet. And that guy Ajiao is probably going to hijack a car right now. I'm sure. With the escorted convoy just about to reach the hotel, Xiling and Lanchi in the car suddenly have a sense of what's going on. That's right, it was the yellow-haired zombie who brought up a watermelon knife and charged. With a loud boom, the caravan they were in was immediately smashed out of a huge crater. Do you know how strong the zombies are abroad? It killed Lanchi instantly with just one random blow. It then transformed into a ghost rider wrapped in flames. Just now, the yellow-haired zombie didn't hear the order to retreat. So he lifts up a watermelon blade and charges towards the welcoming party alone. With a loud boom, the crowd in the center of the field was immediately lifted off the ground. Lanchi and Xiling are both confused at this point. What's going on here? Why is someone attacking us? Just as they were thinking, a figure slowly emerged from the smoke. After seeing the figure clearly, Lanchi looks incredulous, and at that moment two more figures flew over the building in the distance. Immediately afterward, the sisters were heard shouting, Xiling, Lanchi, run away, this guy's dangerous. As their words finish, a handsome landing for the yellow-haired zombie. Then he took out his watermelon blade and arrogantly shouted, foreigners on the other side of the world, you guys watch this. This is the strength of our zombie army of B. The sister who saw this said, no good. This guy is big sister's zombie boss. But before she can warn Lanchi, a black substance rises from the yellow-haired zombie's hand. So this is the corpse oil that only a zombie can produce. As the yellow-haired zombie pulls out a lighter. Next, countless flames burn towards Lanchi and the others. In less than a moment, the surrounding area has been turned into a sea of fire. Seeing this, Xiao Xiuwe hurriedly shouted, Get out of the way. These flames won't go out. Xiling is shocked to hear this. Yao Xiao Xiuwe and Yao Xiaoyu. What are you guys doing here? Lanchi, however, doesn't believe a word of it. It's just a zombie. What's all the fuss about? Meanwhile, on the other side, Big Sister rushes to give the order. She tells her men to hurry and get Ajiao back. Masked Zombie says, Big Sister, don't worry about it. I'll get that guy back for you. After saying, and again to Zhang Fen, no need to hold me up. I'm feeling much better already. But then, a car suddenly drives slowly past them. 
That's right. It's the same car that Jiang Si used to escort the head of state. The masked zombie seems to be sensing something. Then it looks toward the car. Saw Jiang Si sitting in the passenger seat. And the moment they locked eyes. He had just recovered from that. And now he was shaking uncontrollably. We're back on the yellow-haired zombie side of the screen. Lanchi comes at him with her sword in hand. But the yellow-haired zombie suddenly threw a smoke bomb at her. With a thud. A large amount of white smoke immediately rose up around the area. Before Lanchi can react. And then suddenly, a sword slashed through her head. The people who saw the scene had a look of disbelief on their faces. The yellow-haired zombie punched Lanchi and then said. This foreigner is too weak. Next. Looking at Lanchi, lying dead or alive. At this moment, Xiling was at a loss for words. Luckily, the sisters arrived just in time. They controlled their weapons and blocked the yellow zombie's path. And then shouted to Xiling behind them. Take her to rescue quickly. Maybe she'll live. As for this yellow-haired zombie, he's more than you two can handle. Then she drew her sword and told the yellow-haired zombie to get out of there. Or I'll have to kill you. However, the yellow-haired zombie who heard this said angrily, If it wasn't for Big Sister's sake, I would have dismantled both of you. If you don't get out of the way, I'm going to help Big Sister teach you two a lesson today. With that, he slashed his wrist with his long blade. Next, a large amount of necrotic oil then flowed out of his wrists. As the crowd looks on in amazement, a fire burns around him. For just a moment, his entire body is wrapped in flames. I didn't realize this guy had become a ghost rider. The sisters were stunned on the spot when they saw this. This guy is so strong. At this point, the yellow-haired zombie said in a hollering voice, How's it going? You've never seen me transform, have you? I used to let you guys go for big sister's sake. But you really think you can beat me? Hearing this Xiaoxu is hastily turning back to Xiling and shouting, This guy is out of our league. Get out of here. But instead of being scared, Xiling was ready to transform. However, just as she was about to go up and beat the crap out of yellow hair, instead, Lanchi's voice suddenly comes from beside her. You were already in the limelight last time. This time it's my turn. As she finished speaking, Lanchi, who had been dying, miraculously stood up again. The crowd was shocked to see this. Lanchi's transformation has been activated. The sisters were dumbfounded on the spot. What the hell is this? This time, Lanchi said excitedly, after enduring it for so long. I finally have a chance to experience the genes of our chief president. But Xiling next to him is impatient. Let's make this quick. Don't waste time. Seeing them both become like this. At this moment, the sisters couldn't help but ask, Are you still human beings now? The yellow-haired zombie behind him did freeze. What the hell? Why do I get zombie vibes from them? Before he could think about it, however. At this point, Lanchi screamed again. Weren't you so arrogant just now? Why are you scared now? Hearing this, the yellow-haired zombie couldn't stand it any longer. Then he suddenly opened his hands. With a loud boom, a terrifying flame burst into flames in the center of the field. The flames then rushed towards Lanchi with great speed. But in the face of such terrifying flames, Lanchi simply opened his mouth and sucked it in. In the next second, the flames were all swallowed by Lanchi. Xiao Xuev who saw the scene was dumbfounded. This is too much. And yet, the yellow-haired zombie, however, shouted with excitement, interesting, but he hadn't even finished his sentence. Lanchi's foot was already in his face. The yellow-haired zombie who was kicked out was in disbelief. How is this possible? How did she suddenly become so fast? And with so much force, just as he was about to strike back again. Instead, Big Sister's growl suddenly came through the headphones. Ajiao did you hear that? Get your ass back here. Do you hear me, you fool? Yet how could he retreat when he was so angry? Then he said with a serious expression, I'm busy. Meanwhile, in a hotel, Zhang Si had just gotten off the bus when he got a call from the minister. The minister said, there's a problem with Xiling, check it out. That's what made Zhang Si blink, so I don't have to protect the head now? The minister says, we'll be safe when we get to the hotel. It's all our own people over there now. It can't be helped, since the minister has spoken. Then Jiang Si can only go to Xiling's side first. As for security on the head side, I think with a Mayo and a Lung, there shouldn't be any problems. The screen is on Lanchi's side again. Using Jiang Si's gene for the first time, she's still more or less uncomfortable. Just a few days ago, Xiao Xiao had just come out of the lab when she saw Lanchi taking Jiang Si's blood and preparing to inject it into her own body. 
Just because Lunchy thinks that we are all presidents, what makes Xiling better than her now? You know, they've always been rivals. But ever since Xiling got Jung Si's genes, her strength has directly changed. And yet, at this point, Xiao Xiao, however, warns. We haven't studied this thing thoroughly yet. What if there's something bad that happens when you use it? But Lanchi wouldn't listen to her. In order not to lose out to Xiling in terms of power, she injected Jiang Si's blood without hesitation. The scene returns to the present. At this moment, after completing her transformation, she is feeling very good. Xiling, however, reminded her that, Lanchi, don't get too excited, you must control your emotions. But she hadn't even finished her sentence. The yellow-haired zombie on the other side of the room was roaring with excitement. That was a good kick just now. Come on, play with me again. The sisters who heard this were dumbfounded. This is the first time they've seen Ajiao so excited. But even more surprising was the fact that Lanchi suddenly opens his mouth. Next, countless flames shot out of her mouth. This scene caused everyone in the room to look incredulous. The yellow-haired zombie was burned by the flames. And then, Lanchi flew above his head again. And then she smashed the yellow-haired zombie into the ground with a fierce kick. After that, Lanchi couldn't help but laugh. Ha! Ah, this feels great too. On the other hand, the yellow zombie is depressed. What the hell is this guy? Why is she suddenly so strong? But just then, Xiling, however, suddenly shouted at Lanchi to stop. You'll lose your mind if you keep this up. But Lanchi's not listening at the moment. Because all she could think about was how to eat that yellow-haired zombie. Just now, Lanchi for secretly injecting Jiang Si's blood. She also managed to master the ability to transform. But in her fight with the yellow-haired zombie, due to being too intense, she lost her mind and tried to kill everyone in the room. The sisters were dumbfounded by the sight. Why is Lanchi like this? That's it. Lanchi suddenly drools and says he's going to eat the yellow zombie. Ah Jiao is stunned when she hears this. What? Why does she look more like a zombie? With that he is complaining loudly. I mean who the hell are you? Why do you have our zombies sent on you? Yet he hasn't even finished his sentence. And that's when, Big Sister's growl comes back into the headset. Ah Jiao, you idiot, get your ass back here. There's something terrible headed your way. With her words just falling out of her mouth, a figure suddenly appeared in the air. Yes, it was Jiang Si. Only to see that with a thumping explosion ringing out. The field was immediately smashed into a huge crater by Jiang Si. Ah Jiao, however, was still not convinced. I'm not leaving. I haven't even won yet. But at this Tim, a female zombie suddenly appeared behind him. And then she took him out of there whether he wanted to or not. Lanchi was furious when he saw this. None of you will leave here alive today. Ah Jiao in the air is also depressed. Ague, I haven't played enough yet. Yet Ague says, keep playing and you'll die here. As they speak, at that moment, the Lanchi underneath suddenly opened his mouth and spat out a green-colored energy blast. In less than two and a half seconds, a pillar of green light covers the entire sky. Ague, however, raised his hand and waved it in an unhurried manner. In the next second, all of those pillars of energy were transferred to the building next to her. At this moment, the sisters who were watching the show in the center of the room were completely confused. Is this still a human fight? Just as they were wondering, the aftermath of the battle suddenly knocked them both to the ground. Even worse, the building that was shattered by the pillar of energy collapsed in their direction. The two girls were about to die. Suddenly there's a bang. The building had a hole punched through it. Reacting, my sister hurriedly looked towards the front of her body. A figure appeared in front of them at some point, and the building was shattered by his punch. The sisters who saw the scene were in disbelief. The strength of this person in front of me is too strong, right? But when Jiang Si slowly turned his head, what was revealed was a handsome face. The twins were shocked when they saw this scene, but before they can think about it, Lanchi is out of control again. The situation was about to get out of hand. Jiang Si suddenly raised his hand and grabbed at the void. The next second, the mask Lanchi wore on her face was shattered in response to the sound. Immediately afterward, she resumed her transformed state. This scene was one that made the twin sisters dumbfounded. What is this man in front of us? Surprisingly, he solved the crisis casually. At that moment, Xiling, who was at the side of the room, hastily deactivated her transformation. Lanchi was stunned when she came to her senses. What just happened? Why am I so tired? Xiling rushes forward to help her and says, Didn't I tell you to control your emotions? 
Just as the crowd watched Lanchi and the others, Zhang Si had already changed back to his original cute self again. The twins were stunned by this change. That's strange. I clearly saw a handsome guy just now. Her sister also said that she did see him. But why is that handsome guy suddenly gone? Did we all just blink? By the way, who's the guy in the hat? Xiao Yu, have you seen him? Follow their gaze. It turns out to be Zhang Si explaining something to Xiling and the others. After a while, Zhang Si took Lan Qi and the others out by car. And yet, Xiao Yu, who was still in place at the moment, was furious. They must have mastered the power of ancient technology. Oh, shit. They were no match for us before. And now they've become so powerful. Just when Xiao Yu was still babbling on, Sister suddenly received a call from her subordinate. It said that the head of Country A has arrived at the hotel. You were fooled. Xiao Xue wasn't annoyed to hear this news either. Instead, she asked her subordinates to look up Jiang Si's information. Meanwhile on the other side, with a thud. With that, Agui dragged the yellow-haired zombie to the top of the building. What are you doing? I haven't even finished my fight yet. Just shut the fuck up. You'd be dead if I hadn't saved you. And on the way here, I suddenly felt two unfamiliar scents. There should be two powerful zombie bosses invading our land. The yellow-haired zombie who heard this was instantly stunned. There's a zombie king we don't know about? Just now, with an airplane landing. Inside some steel cage that says pet check-in, Ameo and Alung are speechless. I'm a zombie lord and I'm being kept in a cage as a pet. It's over. Zhang Si's identity in Country B is about to be exposed. Ever since the twins saw Zhang Si's third form, they can't stop thinking about it. They even invited a mysterious man to help them find out who Zhang Si is. At this time, in the airport, a Mayo and Alung, who are treated as pets, are about to explode. But then Lan Qi suddenly came forward and said to them, Keep your heads down. If you're exposed, I'll tell your boss. Hearing this, Ameo remembered Aju, who was still hanging on the municipal building. I'm afraid I'll end up the same way if I piss off the boss by accident. The thought of this. Ameo is barking at the air in a hurry. Geez, you guys have some pretty cool looking pets. The twin sisters who came over couldn't help but joke. Oh, it's really quite chic. But don't mess with them. We can't control them if they go crazy. The twins were stunned when they heard this. But when she thought about the special change they had just made she didn't know what to say at once. But then Xiling stepped forward and took her hand in his. The visit starts in two days. I hope we'll have a good time together. And with that, after explaining some simple matters, Lanchi and the others left the airport with Ameo and Alung. But it wasn't long after they left that Xiaoxue started complaining. They were certainly not going to reveal the source of that power. Then she turned back to Xiaoyu and asked, How's it going? Has the professional I asked you to find arrived yet? Don't worry, it'll be here in a couple days. As long as he's around, sooner or later, we'll learn the secret of Lanchi and the others. And so, the next few days will be the day of the visit between the two heads of state. Not only did the head of country a discuss country B's business model, and even visited some cutting-edge research programs. And finally, towards the end of the trip, an audience with the Black Queen of B. And somewhere in the surveillance room, the twins are lost in thought as they look at Jung C on the screen. Obviously what I saw before was a handsome guy. How did it suddenly become like this? Just as they were wondering, a man walks through the door. Seeing this, Shoshua shouted in joy. You're finally here. That's right, the visitor is the foreign aide they invited. Minister Chui has special powers. At this point, Yellow Hair spoke up and said, The Prime Minister has asked me to cooperate with you. Speak, whose memories do you need me to extract? Xiaoyu points to Zhang Si on the screen and says, That's him. This guy's a mystery, but he's the personal bodyguard of the head of Country A, and we never had any intel on him before. Now the time for access is almost over. We must find out the secrets of the ancients from him as soon as possible. Oh, don't worry, you guys. There's nothing I can't handle. Then Yellow Hair pulled a bottle of something strange out of his pocket, followed by a thud. There was an explosion of white smoke all around him. After the smoke cleared, the original Yellow Hair has now become the head of Country A. The twins were overjoyed to see this. That's good. Now it's up to you. And on the other side, Zhang Si and the others were resting in the corridor after finishing their protection mission for the day. Xiling bought a drink and handed it to Zhang Si. I'm really curious. Even the ancients knew of your existence. So how many years have you lived? Zhang Si is speechless at the sound of his voice. That, 
I forgot about it myself. She couldn't find anything to ask. Xiling turns around and says, forget it. In your state, I guess it's useless to ask. I'm going to bed. Not long after Xiling left, but then two sneaky figures appeared in the hallway. Are you sure we have to come here? Well, I was just checking to see who I saw the other day. Why does it give me a strange feeling of oppression? After saying that, the masked zombie quietly moved over to the wall and started peeking in. But he only took one look at Zhang Si's back and instantly felt as if he was going to run out of breath. Because it was an absolute suppression from the bloodline. A terrifying aura that cannot be shaken. The very thought of it. The masked zombie is in a hurry to pull Zhang Fen and flee in the opposite direction. While running, he said in fear, What the hell is this guy? I can't believe I don't even have the courage to go near him. Zhang Fen is speechless when he hears this. You're the one who said you'd come. Why did you back out when you got to the place? Wait until they've left. Zhang Si's cell phone suddenly rang. Xiling's voice came from inside, and it said that the head wanted to talk to him. Tell him to come to room 14. But the person who actually called Zhang Si wasn't the real Xiling. It was Xiao Xue using her powers to pretend to be Xiling. Soon Zhang Si arrives at the room Xiao Xue called room 14. Inside was the head of the group, pretending to be yellow hair. On the other hand, Lan Chi suddenly came to Xiling's room and said, Don't sleep yet. Head wants to talk to us. We'd better get over there. The two then contacted Zhang Si on the way to the headroom. But strangely, they couldn't get through to him. It turns out the building's communication signal was cut off by Xiao Xue and the others. So, Lan Chi and the others had no choice but to go to the head's room first. At this point, Xiling walks up and asks, Is there a reason why the head called us here? Uh, that. Actually, I just need to use the restroom. But Zhang Si is nowhere to be found. I can't reach him again. The two Lanchis are speechless when they hear this. But there's no way. The two of them sent the head to the toilet. But when they look at the men's room on the left, they're stumped again. We're on our own turf now. It shouldn't be a problem, should it? What they don't realize, however, is. Masked Zombie and Junfen are in there right now. Junfen said with a displeased look on his face, Ashi, if you've brought me here why are you running away? Ashi was embarrassed to hear this. Actually, I just wanted to see if there was a chance to take out the head of country A. As they speak, at this time, the leader came up and started to work hard to go to the toilet. In an instant, the entire restroom went a little awfully quiet. But the unknowing head still snickered and said, Yo bro, looking good. And yet he hasn't even finished his sentence. And then there's a big bang on the building. And then Ashi was seen running outside with the head on his shoulders. Ha, huh, what a good luck. I didn't expect such a good thing to happen. Xiling and Lanchi, who are still waiting outside the restroom, have no idea. But the loud noise just now caught their attention. But when they looked curiously into the men's room, they were startled. It's over. Why is the head suddenly gone? Now Xiling and Lanchi are in a complete panic. Then they rushed to tell the escort to notify the people in B country. And now the head of state is in trouble on their turf. Tell their people to get their asses over here and help. But they couldn't reach Jiang Si at such a critical time. Damn it, where the hell is Jiang Si? I just can't find him at this time. At this point Lan Chi is roaring. Why don't I just transform? But Xiling stops her and says, don't forget. A few days ago, you almost didn't make it back. Without Jiang Si, you'll kill everyone here. His power is too great for even me to attempt. If you don't come back, we'll really be the country's sinners. Just when they didn't know what to do, Xiling suddenly notices the cage. Yes, it was a Mayo and a Lung, who were kept in the cage as pets. Xiling then took the head's personal belongings and asked, Can you guys help find the head? Looking at these two goofy guys Lanchi can't help but complain. Can these two really help? But she hasn't even finished her sentence yet. And that's when Alung snaps a mayo's collar. Then he threw a mayo out of the room as Xiling and Lanchi looked on in amazement. With a loud bang, the building just smashed a hole in it. Xiling and Lanchi couldn't open their eyes due to the powerful wave of air. At that moment, Alung also roared with excitement. Huh? We can finally get out of the house. With that he starts a bend to build up his strength. Next, see send. He ejected with a thud like a cannonball. At the moment the guards in the hallway were dumbfounded. Is this an earthquake? Lanchi and Xiling in the room are even more confused. What's the difference between this and our transformation? On the other side, with a swish sound, the masked zombie running in front of him has instantly sensed it. What the hell? 
Why do I feel a very powerful force approaching? Just as they were wondering, Ameo's voice came out of nowhere. Bro, if you don't want to die, leave the man behind. The masked zombie was stunned when he heard this. Oh my god, these guys in country A are raising zombie king. Then they rushed towards the headquarters. They had to get back as fast as they could. But Ameo and Alung are right behind him. Very good. I am worried that I have no place to vent. Now we can finally kill something. The scene returns to Lanchi and Xiling. They're looking at each other in disbelief. What do we do? We seem to have released two incredible guys. To keep them from causing more trouble. Lanchi and Xiling rush after them. That's it. Six figures are chasing each other through the night. Soon the masked zombie returned to his home base with the head. The yellow-haired zombie who saw the scene was suddenly stunned. Ashi. What the hell are you doing in the middle of the night? At that moment, the female zombie next to us suddenly notices the head on Ashi's shoulder. But before she even had a chance to speak Ashi yelled eagerly, Don't stand around here. Someone's coming up behind us. The word is out. Ameo and Alung fall from the sky. After feeling the powerful aura on the other side, the zombies in Country B were all stunned in place. Ameo and Alung were also confused when they landed on the ground. It's because below them, there's a dense mass of ordinary zombies. But for the sake of the mission, Alung still paused and said, I advise you to hand him over. After all, we're all zombies. Don't make me kill you. Oh, I didn't realize that we zombies would have to fight first before the two human countries fought. Why did you, as the leader of the zombies, choose to help the humans? Hearing the female zombies question Alung says, Who are you to talk about me? Look at you. You're still hanging out with the humans. And yet the female zombie says she's doing it all for the zombie community. All I'm doing is making the world a better place for zombies to live in. Alung sniffs without retort. Instead, he slowly told the story of his life. It turns out that Alung's body is actually a crow. As a winged bird he, his daily task is to help the humans clean up the corpses and garbage. Although a virus has turned him into a zombie bird. But he hasn't harmed a single human being. But he don't know why. He did nothing but become the embodiment of horror and evil in the mouths of men. But despite this, he still didn't hate humans. Instead, he complained about God's cruelty. Why can't he himself walk like a human? To become a higher being with consciousness and intelligence. But reality is always cruel. As a zombie bird, he died a horrible death at the hands of a human. Just as he was dying, suddenly a strange guy shows up. That's right. It's none other than Zhang Si. He rescued Alung from the rubble and said, I can't believe you're still alive after losing your body and wings. Then he held him in his hands and said, From now on, your name will be Alung. You'll be working for me from now on. Alung, remember that. Hate and destruction won't solve anything. We must learn to live in peace with mankind. The scene returns to the present again. Alung is continuing to persuade, as it turns out. Our plan is the greater one. Give up your stupid ideas. But the female zombie smiled at that. Looks like we're not going to get anywhere. The words have just left my mouth. Xiling and Lanchi are finally catching up. The yellow-haired zombie is getting impatient. Ague, what's the point of talking to them so much? This isn't country A. Do you really think that the Jiang Si of country B are vegetarians? Just as the battle is about to be fought. At that moment, a lung suddenly began to vaporize. He then slowly transformed into a handsome man as Xiling and Lanchi looked on in shock. It turns out that ever since Jiang Si learned about Alung's dream of becoming a human, he used the power of his bloodline to force Alung to turn on his transformation as well. At this point, Alung, who had completed her transformation, turned to them and said, Since you're so stubborn, there's nothing more to say. Let's go to war. It's over. Ameo has turned into a monster thousands of meters tall. He reduced half the city to rubble with a single, casual swipe. Just now, Alung transforms into a handsome man after. Lanchi and Xiling are surprised. Aren't you a dog? What happened? Yet the grumpy yellow hair doesn't give a damn about him. A bird with no wings tries to disguise himself as a human. It's a disgrace to us zombies. Oh, you're full of crap. If you have any skills, just use them. Or you won't have a chance when I do. Damned. It's just a new look isn't it? What's your problem? With that yellow hair begins to build up his power with both hands. With a loud boom, a pillar of fire rushes straight towards Alung. Lanchi, who saw the scene, hurriedly shouted, be careful. Don't take this guy's flames hard. The words just fell out of my mouth. 
A lung is seen blowing into the air in front of him. In the next second, the hot flames were blown into the sky by him, seeing that she couldn't do much to help him. Xiling is in a hurry to shout at Lanchi. I'll leave it to them. Let's go find the head. As they speak, the yellow-haired zombie is flying in front of Alung again. But before he could do anything, Alung punched him in the stomach. The people who saw this scene were in disbelief. It's because Alung's speed is too fast. It's amazing they didn't even see how he did it. The yellow-haired zombie who took the punch immediately felt his stomach turn. Immediately after that, the powerful force sent him flying hundreds of meters away. Now Ague is completely flustered. How are the zombies in be so powerful? However before he could think about it, Alung is suddenly sucking on the air. And then he sliced the building in front of him into a million pieces as the crowd stared in amazement. The remaining wind lifted all the zombies around them out of the sky. Ague was stunned when he saw this. Just because the yellow-haired zombie didn't even resist a single move, he fell to the ground and lost his strength. Damn, this guy's strength is too terrifying. Can we really beat him? That's it. Alung makes a sudden move. The flames around them dissipate in an instant. Seeing this, Ague immediately said, All the zombies in Country B, listen up. Come with me and drive these two foreign zombies out. With that, he flung numerous daggers at Alung. But as the sound of ding 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 rang out, Alung didn't even break a hair. Ague is bending over in a hurry. With a buildup, he attacks Alung with a dagger in his hand. But there was a loud boom. Ague's dagger breaks instantly. Damn it, I can't even break his defense. The other side. Lanchi and Xiling have finally found the head. The masked zombie senses someone chasing behind him and rushes towards the outside. Ague orders the zombie army to hurry up. Stop them. The words are just coming out. Countless zombies surrounded them from all sides. However, at that moment, Ameo was suddenly in their midst. After a low roar, Ameo's arm extends out hundreds of meters. With a loud boom, countless buildings were instantly reduced to rubble. And then Ameo grew into a horrible monster with wings. Xilinx's jaw dropped in amazement at the sight. Oh my god, what is this? That's horrible, too. It turns out that Ameo has transformed into a terrifying beast thousands of meters tall. Crazy. Ameo and Alung are getting madder by the minute. One of them transformation into a handsome, beautiful man. With just a raise of his hand, three cracks were cut into the earth. The other one turned into a thousand meter tall ancient aberration. Half the city was reduced to rubble in a single, random blow. Xiling and Lanchi were both dumbfounded at the sight. If I had known you guys would play like this, I would have chosen to transform myself. But Ameo didn't seem to hear them, and with a thud, he stomped a building into oblivion. Ague was completely flustered. Oh my god, this is an ancient deformed species. Are all the zombies in Country A this strong? The masked zombie and Junfen, who are running away, are also stunned. It's a legendary deformed species. We're just kidnapping individuals. Are you guys gonna play this big? And then turned to Zhongfen and said, Take this one to Big Sister now. I'll have to stay and hold them off. And, uh, go activate the consciousness enhancing device. After all, I'm not sure I can win against such a monster. Maybe all the zombies in B will die here. Ague on the other side of the room can't help but be furious. Oh, shit. I can't believe there are still monsters from the past in this day and age. Is this really the best we can do? That's it. Alungus swish and jumps on top of Ameo's body. Facing such a zombie combo, the zombies in Country B are on the verge of an attack. The other side. Jonathan rushed to the headquarters and shouted, Big Sister, it's not good. However, before he could even finish his sentence Big Sister said, I saw it all. Then Jonathan continued, So, what to do with the head of Country A? What about what? Why don't you just kill him? Why did you bring him here? But Jonathan said, Ague and the others are in danger. I have to go help them first. With that, he made his way to an instrument and prepared to turn on the consciousness enhancement device. But if you turn it on too much, they'll become mindless corpses. After some thought, Jonathan maxes out the power of the consciousness enhancer. In an instant, all the zombies in the room instantly went berserk. Oh, is this your killer weapon? Combined with human technology, it's just a bunch of clowns. As Alung's voice trails off, a male was swish and swung at them. With a loud boom, Country B's zombie army was killed in an instant. The strong wind blew the zombies out of the sky. This exaggerated scene left Lanchi and Xiling speechless with shock. Jungfen, who is in the command center, is in disbelief. 
I didn't think they would destroy our years of hard work with just one hit. Ague was furious at the sight. With a swish, she rushes to Walung's face. But he caught her easily. And before she could react, she was smashed into the ground. It's over. Are our zombies in country B about to perish like this? It's over, the zombies in country B have turned on their transformations as well. And it's the same ancient monstrosity as Ameo's. But in less than two and a half seconds he's got Ameo by the neck. Just now. Ameo destroyed half of B's zombie army with a single punch. Ague, the head, is furious. But when he rushes up to Walung to get revenge, he gets punched into the ground by Alung. On the other hand, Ashi also rushes towards Ameo. Seeing this, Zhongfen rushes to maximize his power. As the energy continues to stimulate Ashi's brain. In the next moment, Ashi transformed into a monster hundreds of meters tall. From the looks of it, he doesn't seem any worse than Ameo. Ameo was stunned at the sudden transformation of the zombie in front of him. Then he spoke to him, are you of the same race as me? But before he could finish his sentence, Ashi charged towards him, the other side. Alung is also fascinated by this sudden scene. But just then, Ague clenches his fists and shouts, Why do you choose to help humans when you're so powerful? Shouldn't you be on the same side as us? Hearing this Alung similarly clenches his fists and replies, I'm sorry, we only follow the boss's orders. Then he punched Ague in the face. Ague, who was knocked out, couldn't figure it out. We just want to keep the race alive. What is wrong with us? The screen comes to Ameo and Ashi again. There's a loud crash. Ashi is roaring in anger. You are not welcome here. Get the hell out of here now. But Ameo spoke with a bemused look on his face. If you don't hand over head, I'm going to have to kill all of you. With that, Ameo grabbed him by the neck. Lanchi and Xiling, who were watching the fight from a distance, were dumbfounded. That's terrible. I didn't realize the zombies in B were so powerful. And yet, right then and there, Ameo's hand suddenly began to coalesce with a blood-colored energy. With a loud boom. The energy just sent Ashi flying. The Zhongfen who saw the scene was in disbelief. Ashi's final form is no match for them. Ameo lifts Ashi up again, listen, I'm running out of patience. I don't want to repeat myself a second time. I didn't realize you had such power, but you're willing to be human lackeys. Why don't you just wipe out the humans and create a planet of zombies? Ameo did not refute after hearing this. Instead, he slowly told the story of his life. A long, long time ago. There were a lot of deformed species back then. As aliens, they not only had their own territory, they live in isolation. Despite their ugliness, they've never tried to harm humans. But then one day, countless mecha warriors fell from the sky. They brought with them powerful, high-tech weapons. Just because we're not the same race, they wiped out all the alien races. Ameo's mother hid the infant Ameo in a cave to escape the humans. Ameo was terrified. He didn't understand why the humans wanted to kill everyone. Until he saw his parents die at the hands of the humans. At that moment, he vowed to avenge his parents' deaths. I'll kill all the robots. But just then, the droid suddenly spotted him behind the cave. Seeing that young Ameo is about to die here. Suddenly there was a bang. The droid was a pile of scrap metal in no time. That's right. It was Jiang Si who rescued Ameo. Ameo was stunned at the sight. He didn't expect the zombie in front of him to be so powerful. In less than two and a half seconds, he's wiped out all the robots. And that's when it happened. The commander of the ship gave a hasty order. Open all weapons. With his words. Countless missiles were fired at Jiang Si. But the missile is only halfway there. At this time Jiang Si came to the battleship. The next second, all the missiles were annihilated by the huge waves set off by Jiang Si. As for the warships, they're even more vulnerable to the huge waves. It's the moment of truth. The main ship on the other side of the planet rushes to launch an electromagnetic orbital ray. With a loud boom. A golden pillar of light shot towards Jiang Si in a hurry. In less than a moment, that horrible ray punched a huge hole in the earth. But when the dust cleared, Jiang Si was fine. The humans were dumbfounded by this sight. What kind of creature is this? He's too scary. Seeing as how normal weapons have no effect on Jiang Si, so they sent in their most advanced technology available. It was the same mech that had fought in outer space, the Red Saber. But he was only just introduced when Jiang Si punched him into oblivion. Even the command ship in outer space was destroyed by Jiang Si at this moment. Ameo never imagined that the power of his kind would be so terrifying. He destroyed a human civilization all by himself. Including, of course, all life on earth. The war even split the continent in two, making it country A and country B. But after all this, Jiang Si suddenly felt empty. Looking at the dead world, he began to regret it. Suddenly Ameo crawled out of the rubble. But what he saw was the loneliest side of Jiang Si. Jiang Si then puts his clothes back on. Just as he was about to leave, he suddenly saw Alung under the rubble. And he's doing it all in front of Ameo's eyes. And so, when Jiang Si took Alung as his little brother, Ameo also rushed to catch up with his bare ass. And that's when it started. Jiang Si decided. 
Instead of destroying civilization, we should try to live in peace with humanity. Here we go. Jiang Si has finally struck in B. He simply raised his hand in a single swing. Ameo's annihilation move disappeared in an instant. Just now. After Ameo recounted his past, he pinched Ashi's neck and asked him, I said this, did you understand me or not? After saying that, he threw Ashi away. Lanchi and Xiling were both dumbfounded at the sight. It feels like the situation is getting out of hand. Ashi hissed angrily as he fell to the ground. What you just said was bullshit. How can there be zombies that powerful in this world? Yet just as they were arguing, Jiang Si is still in the office of the fake head. But when the false head uses his powers to steal Jiang Si's memories, he instantly breaks out in a cold sweat. Especially when he saw that Jiang Si had destroyed the last civilization by himself, he couldn't help but spit out a mouthful of blood. This sudden action made the twins next door look incredulous. Then they asked loudly, what did you see? Why are you so scared? But yellow hair is in a near coma at the moment. Only heard him say something in a broken voice. He killed all our old ancestors. And then he passed out completely. The twins were stunned when they heard this. What does that mean? You've got to be more specific. After that they rushed over from next door. After all, it's better to save people first. After they've all left the room, Jiang Si has finally come to his senses. Looking at the empty room in front of him, Jiang Si was instantly puzzled. Where is the head? Did I fall asleep just now? He didn't know that the false head was already stunned by his memories. The twins next to him are speechless. Why don't you finish your sentence before you faint? No more signal interference. Jiang Si finally got a call from the minister. I've finally gotten through to you. Something's wrong. The head's been taken. Jiang Si was puzzled when he heard this. Wasn't the head just here? Bullshit. The head was taken half an hour ago. Why don't you go after him? Jiang Si Wen Yenshir hurriedly felt it with his bloodline power. When he sensed that both Ameo and Alung had turned on their transformations, he immediately flew in their direction. On the other hand, Yellow Hair was taken to the emergency room and never came out. At this point Xiao Yu walked up and asked eagerly, Can you hurry up? We're still waiting for him to reply. Sorry about that. He may not be able to speak for the rest of his life. Because he's become a vegetable. The twins were dumbfounded to hear this. No way. We've lost the plot. The screen comes to Ashi again. At this point he is unable to hold back his anger. If there really are zombies in this world that powerful, why is it so hard for us to survive now? Ameo saw that this guy was like a stinky stone, and immediately said, The opportunity has been given to you. Don't blame me for being merciless next. Oh, you think we're afraid of you? Come on, want us to hand over the head. Unless you step over my dead body. The words have fallen. All the zombies in country B have gone berserk. Lanchi, who was watching from the sidelines, was dumbfounded. It's over. We're really not going to be able to finish this now. Ameo doesn't want to stop when they don't listen to him. He then formed a blood red ball of light in the air. In an instant, the surrounding area was filled with wind. Ameo is like a messenger from hell. Ague was stunned when he felt that horrible aura. Lanchi and Xiling shouted, Stop! Stop it! Stop fighting! Just when Ashi thought he was on the ropes, suddenly a hand appeared in the void. In the next second, the ball of light that was coalescing was just frozen in place. Ague, who saw the scene, was in disbelief. What is this? He interrupted his spell casting with a lift of his hand. That's right. It's Jiang Si. And Ashi was shocked when he saw the person in front of him clearly, simply because he again felt a terrifying pressure from the bottom of his heart. At this point, Jiang Si slowly raised his hand and said, as you can see here, then give me a like. But the unsuspecting regular zombies have gone berserk and are charging towards Ameo. However, just as they were approaching Ashi, they were suddenly struck by an aura that made their entire body tremble. Ashi can't stop sweating. It was because he felt a terrifying pressure from Jiang Si's body. Just then, Jiang Si is suddenly looking back down at the group of normal zombies below him. I didn't realize that just one look would make all the zombies kneel down. Then they shouted at Jiang Si in unison. Meet my king. This operation made Lanchi next to him confused. Why is it quiet all of a sudden? This is too much. At this point Ameo suddenly speaks up. How's it going? Now you should believe what I'm saying, right? Ashi at this moment can no longer be described as shocked. He never expected that the person in front of him turned out to be his own kind. And it seems to be their ancestor. Jiang Si doesn't even bother to talk to them. With that, he asked directly, where is the head of the humans? Ah, uh, that is in the basement level. I'll take you there. Ashi is stuttering. When Jiang Si leaves, Ague sits down with a sense of relief. It's horrible. Those two zombie lords combined don't put as much pressure on me as he does. What the hell is this guy? Why does he give me a sense of submission? The screen comes to the basement. The big sister is seen holding a pistol and then says to the head, rest in peace. No one will come to save you. But just then, the head, however, suddenly shouted, wait a minute. You must be the head of the B-reactionary organization. From the sound of your voice, you are still a girl. 
Well, that's quite a surprise. Huh, do you think I will let you go if you just say a few nice words? Go to hell. Wait a minute. I've got tech stuff from the ancients here. Don't you want it? The big sister's headdress who heard this froze in her tracks. Then she lifted off the head's hood and said, If you have something to say, you'd better say it. If you don't satisfy me, I'll make your death even worse. Oh, actually, the reason I came to be this time. It's all because your head of state wants to get information from me about the technology of the ancients. If such information were to fall into your hands, wouldn't that be a better deal than starting a war? With this kind of technology, you'll be the king of the world. Hearing this the big sister suddenly realizes that this guy is stalling for time. She then immediately raised her gun and yelled, Do you think I'm stupid? So much nonsense. Still trying to stall. Now go to hell. But just as she was about to pull the trigger. But then a couple of zombies came in and pinned her down. What are you doing? I'm your head. Do you want to rebel? But she hadn't even finished her sentence yet. But then Jiang Si suddenly appeared in front of her. She's the head of all the zombies in Country B. But now she's being held down by her own men. Especially with this guy in front of her who's making her feel very uneasy. With that, the big sister roared angrily, Tell me, who are you? Why are you trying to stop me? Oh, I didn't realize that the head of the zombies in the B region would actually be a human girl. That's interesting. But now that you've met me, so that's it for the rest of the day. The big sister's headdress who heard this froze in surprise. She didn't realize that the guy in front of her was a zombie as well. At that moment, the head suddenly spoke up, President Jiang, you're here at last. If you'd come a little later, you might not have seen me. The older sister immediately yelled, let go of me. If we can't kill him now, we won't have a chance later. But the two zombies that heard this didn't react at all. They didn't even bother to look at her. The big sister who saw the scene was dumbfounded. Did the consciousness enhancing device not work? At this point the Jiang Si suddenly turned back to the two zombies and said, let her go when we leave. Let's be civilized zombies. Don't kill any more than you have to. In this way, the assassination plan of Country B's zombie army completely failed. Soon Lanchi and Xiling came forward. Mr. Head. Are you alright? You scared the shit out of both of us. Ha ha ha. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. I didn't expect that this happened when I just went to the toilet. Think of it as a trip. Lanchi and Xiling were speechless when they heard this. You have a sense of humor, Head. We can't afford to let anything happen to you. Zhang Si then took the Head and Lanchi back to the hotel. After they all left Alung said to the remaining zombies. You're lucky you got your lives back. Remember what our master said. Be a civilized zombie. That's the way to go for the long haul. Ague sniffs in embarrassment. She hadn't realized that the zombie's army she had worked so hard to create had become like this overnight. Especially this ancient monstrosity in front of us. Now think. If it wasn't for their master, I would have been killed. And so after this little incident, the last day of the head's visit is finally coming to an end. Because of this accident. At this moment, Jiang Si doesn't dare to slack off at all. He even brought out a mayo and a lung. The little boy pointed at them and shouted, What a cute dog. I wish I could give one to each of my fans. Meanwhile on the other side, because of the failure of the mission, the twins 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 are in a state of shock at the moment. There's no telling what kind of punishment they're going to face next. Soon a month had passed before we knew it. Inside a special training ground, Lanchi is ready to transform, sword in hand. Opposite her is Xiling, who also possesses the power of the bloodline. Under Xiling's guidance, Lanchi quickly masters the art of transformation. After sensing the change in his opponent Xiling is in a hurry to take an attacking stance, Xiao Xiao, who was watching the battle from the side, was speechless. These two are fighting too much. In less than two and a half seconds, the training room, made of special materials, is already full of holes from the two of them. However, Lanchi was still excitedly shouting. This feeling is just too good to be true. The word is out. Lanchi and Xiling run into each other again. The two of them were evenly matched for a while. But at that moment, Xiling suddenly kicked upward with her 6 foot 8 long leg. The kick sent Lanchi flying out of the room. Do you guys know how scary it is when two women fight? Just a simple collision brings down two 100 meter tall buildings. Just now, in order to test the limits of his strength, Xiling asked Lanchi to turn on her transformation and fight herself. At first, they're just testing each other. The fight is back and forth. But just then, Xiling suddenly lifted her 5 feet 8 inches long leg and kicked Lanchi out of the air. However, just when Xiling thought that she had won the fight, Lanchi suddenly countered with an inversion. A thumping kick lands on top of her chin. Seeing this scene, Xiao Xiao was in a hurry to shout, Don't fight. Your data has been collected. But at this moment, the two of them have completely lost their minds. And then there was a thud and they hit each other again. And it's still a punch to the gut. After a few more punches, the two of them are finally separated for a short time. At this moment, both of them realize that. There's no way to tell the difference between victory and defeat in a simple close fight. And so the two began to take up their respective weapons. 
preparing to unleash a big move to end this fight. With a loud boom, the two skyscrapers outside were shaking. The situation is about to get out of hand. Xiao Xiao is shouting, release the sedative. Otherwise the lab will collapse if both of you keep doing this. As her words fall, a large amount of white mist began to be released around the training ground at once. But at this moment, Xiling and Lanchi are already killing each other. These ordinary tranquilizers have no effect on them at all. Suddenly they both charged at each other with their blades in hand. When Xiao Xiao saw this, he said no. They're not going to die together, are they? But after the bang, they both suddenly deactivated their transformations. So it's because they're running out of energy. Both of them can't maintain their transformations anymore. Xiao Xiao walks up and says, You two should be about 20 times as strong as you normally are when you're transformed. Although everyone can transform. But I can't even beat you guys. Looks like it's about base strength. The two who heard this were stunned. I didn't realize that their strength would rise so high after the transformation. At this point Xiao Xiao continued, You just pierced each other's hearts with your weapons. But now you two like nothing has happened. It seems that the body has changed. As soon as these words came out, Lanchi can't help but ask curiously, So are we humans or monsters now? Of course we're human. We have a consciousness and a body. We're not just mindless zombies. Okay, let's not talk about that. Xiao Xiao, you better hurry up and work on a device that can control our emotions. Now the exchange meeting is coming. I don't want to lose my mind and kill everyone present. Just like that, since the visit to Country B ended, Jiang Si is having a few days of leisure. But on this day, Jiang Si was about to eat a feast of eggs. Xiling suddenly came to his door and said, The head wants to see you urgently. Come with me now. Somewhere in a subterranean research chamber at this time, Dr. Jiaming is looking at the results of his research with great joy. Next to him, the Ancient One is silently modulating a special metal. Seeing this scene, Green Hair was curious and came forward to ask, Aren't you a mecha designer? Why did you start biological research? You don't know shit. It's liquid metal. A state-of-the-art nanotechnology. How can I possibly make the mecha I want out of that junk metal on Earth? Not only can this liquid metal flow through any space, but it can also take on any shape you want it to. The Green Hair was dumbfounded by this. This thing is too much. It's no wonder you ancient people were able to develop your technology so quickly. But the bald man who heard this side and stated, It's because technology is so advanced. The AI is handling everything. So much so that my generation lived like a giant baby. And yet, even with all our tech trees, we couldn't beat it. What, is Jiang Si really that scary? How the hell did you guys make it grow? The bald man who heard this was first stunned. Then he stated, Jiang Si was not a product of our time. According to our research at the time, Jiang Si may have been transformed from the first generation of humans. You can also read it this way. Jiang Si has been on Earth for a lot longer than we think. At this statement, Greenhair continued to ask, Are you saying that there have been other civilizations above you? That's for sure. Seeing is how you know nothing. Let me enlighten you on our history. In fact, in ancient times, we all started out as agricultural civilizations. But then one day, a wave of corpses broke out. A farmer turned into a zombie. Over time, we're fighting the zombies with the same common weapons as you. But then we went down a different path. You chose to develop your own force limit. We, on the other hand, are constantly researching technological innovations. After thousands of years of development, our technology has finally taken a quantum leap. But in the midst of this rapid technological advancement, we suddenly discovered a shocking secret. The reason why people are turning into zombies is because the virus has been in our genes all along. So it's not like there's a virus that turns people into zombies. It's that zombies have been around since time immemorial. And most importantly, that zombie named Jiang Si has survived for countless civilizations. According to our guesses at the time, Jiang Si may be the original human being transformed. That's why he's so ridiculously strong. And then we find out later on in the human genes that human civilization has been going through at least six generations. And it's possible that all of these civilizations were destroyed by the Jiang Si. Suddenly Dr. Jiaming walked up and asked, So what era is Jiang Si a product of? Is there no possibility of defeating him? Actually, we thought the same as you at the time. For fear that the Jiang Si would destroy civilization. So we went crazy with technology. But even as we pushed the technology to its limits, we were ultimately destroyed by him. And so in the last seconds of civilization, we buried human fertilization cells in the ground. I hope that humans in the future will be able to kill him. 